the Pat McAfee Show. There'll be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope, nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Good afternoon, beautiful people. It is Monday, August 9th, 2021, and NFL football is in the air. It's a great day to have a great day. Shout out to whoever invented that first and also Coach JB who made it famous on Last Chance You on Netflix. I hope you had a fantastic Hall of Fame weekend. I got into some stuff this weekend. We will talk about that in the second hour with the host of the stuff that I got into, which is, ladies and gentlemen, AJ Hawk. He'll be joining us. Today's show is loaded not just with guests, but with massive stories being told by each one of them. Darius Leonard will be joining us in about an hour and 27 minutes to talk about the massive conversation contract that he has earned and signed to remain with the Indianapolis Colts, I think for another five years or something like that. $52 million guaranteed. Congrats yeah. to him. Yeah. Shout out to the maniac, Darius Leonard. His birthday was like a week ago when they checked into training camp. Nobody knew what was going to happen long term, but we all knew he was going to be a rich man. Fred Warner, inside linebacker for the San Francisco 49ers, who has a similar career, but worse stats in basically every category than Darius Leonard. He got broken off because he earned it, and he deserved it, and he's a stud. But Darius and his people had to watch Fred Warner's deal and go, pooh, this is what we're going to do. $52 million bucks for him to remain a Colt, all of Indianapolis. Annapolis is happy. This dude is a fucking beast on the field. We'll yeah. talk to him. 1.30, an hour and 26 minutes from now. Congrats to the new wealthiest man in Indianapolis. Well, a new wealthy man in Indianapolis because the wealthiest man in Indianapolis, Jim Irsay, I believe, mm-hmm. he was a big part of this past weekend's entire celebrations in Canton, Ohio. We'll talk about that with Jay Glazer in the third Whoa. hour today. Hey. 2.30 Eastern Daylight Time. Can't wait to talk to hashtag Jay New Jay Glazer. He was at everybody's parties this past weekend at Hall of Fame weekend. I had a couple interactions with Jay over the weekend telling me stories about things that were happening. He's been around all these guys for so long. Can't wait to hear his thoughts on the weekend. And in between Jay and Darius Leonard on this particular show, Ryan Krauser, Olympic gold medal shot putter. We'll be joining us. Let's go. Hey, listen, we, we talked about shot put the day before shot put uh, finals happened on our televisions. We said, I don't fully understand what shot put is. I don't know why it's still happening. It seems a bit archaic. I'm not 100% sure why people still do it. But then I got to watch it live. And not only Krauser, but also Kovacs and everything. Mm-hmm. The amount of explosion that radiates through these humans' bodies as they're chucking a 16-pound bowling ball. Record distances than any human in the past. And this sport has been around since, like, anytime there was a 16-pound rock, I assume that's when it started. Oh, yeah. Yep. And that was probably at a point in time way, 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 way back. He said he won for his grandpa, but the shot putting tradition is so long. Can't wait to talk to this massive cowboy who throws rocks further than everybody. Yeah, that should be a lot of fun. So big show today. The Toxic Tables here at Boston Connor, Ty Schmidt, all the boys in the back. The Hammer Down boys will be in in about an hour or so. Massive Hall of Fame weekend, boys. Huge. Yeah, it was awesome. Hey, Loved it. It was absolutely awesome. It, it was I didn't get to see all of the speeches, but I saw a majority of them. I didn't get the chance to celebrate all of Hall of Fame weekend. I think I missed a couple maybe things that happened, but I feel like I got a chance to kind of feel what it was again, which is the Hall of Fame is a uh, welcome back to NFL football for everybody, you know, and Mm -hmm. there's like... Halloween leads into, you know, Thanksgiving, Christmas and everything that's right. going on and Hanukkah and every other holiday that happens around that time that I don't know the ins and outs of of all of them. I wish I did. I apologize, but you get it. Hall- Halloween is like, hey, we're here. Hall of Fame weekend is, hey, we're here. We yeah. did it. it. It was. And then getting a chance to go back and relive so many memories and plays and then listen to the greats of the greats speak about why they were great and how they were great and who helped them along the way. I absolutely loved Hall of Fame weekend. Two nights back to back. A lot of speeches, a lot of talking, a lot of learning. I think a lot of insightful. But I assume for everybody in Canton, a lot of booze. I bet you they were fucking getting after it for three, four days straight. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm not sure how everybody feels. I got a couple of texts from some people that were over there. They said it was an 
incredible weekend that they probably will pay for for about a week or so. <laughs> I loved Hall of Fame weekend. Your big takeaways. I'll, I'll start with you, uh, Boston Connor. Tom Brady being a guest of honor for Tom Brady sitting uh, at, back out there in the section, and then whenever uh, you know Peyton even gave him a little shout out to the crowd, and and they turn and show they booed him. What were they do? Why was Thomas Edward Patrick? Brady the third booed for in Canton. Do they not know that? Guess what? Hey, huh. Huh, you're sitting at his house. That's some bitch going to live there forever. Yeah, <laughs> he hasn't moved in yet, but he's going to be there for a long, long, long haul. But then you start thinking about who's there. Okay, yeah. so not only are the Colts fans there, Peyton was talking. Mm -hmm. A lot of Colts fans were there. Uh, Edron James as well. Incredible speech. We'll talk about that. They, but Peyton and Edge, by the way, represented for the Indianapolis Colts and crushed for the weekend. But also Steelers fans are there. Oh, they hate the Patriots. Uh huh. Yeah. Steelers hate the Patriots. Uh, there were some Jets folks there, obviously, but then let's go ahead and remember the there was who, who's the last speaker of the whole weekend? A uh, uh, Raider, uh, okay, Ooh. Charles. Woods. The Raiders fans were there in abundance, and I'm not sure anybody hates Tom Brady more than them with that whole tuck thing that started the entire th this entire run. Well, I don't know. I might put myself right next to him, but uh, oh no, <laughs> come on! Yeah, hey, look, hey, look. Uh, I no, love this way happened. As soon as he retires, I love him forever. Don't nah, worry. Nah, you were pulling for Tom last year in the Super Bowl. Oh uh, well. I was pulling for him because you had money on him. You're not not going to root for your money. You got to uh, root for so your money. Because what you were betting on Who am I? Are you scared? He's scared to get lumped in with yeah. Matt Damon. That's uh, oh, right. No, don't get, you yeah. dare lump in right. with that Matt Damon character. That guy's dead Who to else? me, too. Mark Wahlberg. He, Wahlberg. Yeah. You're scared. To, and Bill Burr, what, what Bill Burr said. No, he's no, no. I said Berg as well. Wahlberg. Bill Burr is, I mean, he's the pinnacle. He is the Patriots nation now. I mean, everyone's looking at Bill Burr for our, for where we're standing. Yeah, but how about all these New England Patriots fans that are saying, like, you know, Matt Damon, who said a lot of things, I yeah. guess, but then also said that he would be pulling for Tom Brady in a Super Bowl matchup against the New England Patriots. Yeah. A lot of New England Patriots fans are like, you son of a bitch, you stabbed us right in the heart. You're our guy. We saw you as a janitor. You, I mean, you did your whole yeah, thing in our town. I mean, basically, what's going on here? And then Mark Wahlberg, it's like... Hey, Mark comes out and says, I'm pulling for Tom Brady there. Yeah. You're a New England Patriots fan. like, well, they're dead forever. I think some of these New England Patriots fans should maybe check some receipts on this guy. Uh, I think you're probably uh, right. Yeah. yeah. From when? Well, oh, I don't no. think you ever said that you were pulling for Tom Brady over New England. But last year during that playoff run, <laughs> oh, my God. when it looked like the Patriots were never going to be in the playoffs Give ever again. Talk talking about ordering a Brady Buckster. Oh, yeah. yeah. He really did yeah. for the playoffs. Because, you know, normally I have a team. He said, this is normally when our season starts this year a little bit different. I'm I remember there was an entire thing. Get out and, of here. Yeah. You yeah. two are spinning a bullshit yard right now, <laughs> no. and I won't stand for no. it. I bet on the Washington football team in the first round against the Bucks. Heineke. How could you not? I took True Breeze, even though I knew he had a noodle arm, against the Bucks, and obviously I took the Packers because I wanted them to win. I didn't want the Bucks to win. Damn it. But when he gets to the Super Bowl, yeah, sure. I'll watch the guy win a seventh Super Bowl and, you know, rejoice in the fact that history lives on forever. You two have <laughs> got to be kidding me right now talking about this bullshit. So you did enjoy watching him. Yeah. yeah, I enjoyed watching oh, this. I enjoy, oh. I enjoy when we get to see what will never happen again I, I, for the rest I, I, of eternity. It's very early in this yeah. show. Yeah. You're going to be this heated. And now I'm pissed. <laughs> this is four more hours, and I'm going to be pissed the whole entire time. You lumped me in with Matt Damon. Matt Damon is dead to me. Yo. No. God damn it. <laughs> what the hell? Once again, these are all oh. things that somebody who potentially does have bad receipts would say. Yeah, that's right. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Someone that's go right. through the archives then, because this is horseshit. I'm joking. I think it is. <laughs> I think it is fascinating though that I thought we we're all in a hey, we love Tom Brady now thing, and then whenever they showed him, and everybody's like, no, we yeah. do mm -hmm. not. You think we forgot about that talk rule? We'd be celebrating a lot different thing here tonight with Charles Woodson and a boo. 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 You think you think we forgot about all those times that old Tommy boy went up there and dominated us and knocked us out of the place? Because there for a while, it was like, 
Pittsburgh fans have been there in, there in abundance this week. And Troy Polamalu laid out basically, hey, here is the guideline for being a Pittsburgh Steeler. Hey, let me go ahead and tell you our mantra for being a Pittsburgh Steeler. It goes as such, all right? And then he also said in there, uh, he, he went on to the Face First podcast with Ryan Clark, which was incredible. I think it said bigger than the Hall of Fame. It was him, Ike Taylor, and uh, Troy Polamalu talking that entire thing. Troy lay, lays out that entire, like, hey, this is what a Pittsburgh Steeler is, you know, being a Yenzer and di- right. dialing into the city. And uh, I completely, you know, forgot people in Pittsburgh have hated Tom Brady for fucking ever, oh, too. A long yep. time. I mean, so as soon yeah. as they put Tom basically right into maybe his most hated yeah. arena, maybe Bye-bye. all of his fans that all the fans that hate him the most, he put him in there. That was, that was an awesome moment for Tom and him saying, what did I do wrong? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just here supporting a friend, being a guy, him getting booed. It was just a great weekend, man. I really enjoyed it. Hey, I'm happy you you seem to be calmed down. All right. Go, I am hey, go Pats, go. Hey, go Pats. I go am Pats. white knuckling right now. Yeah. Go hey. Pats, go. This is our yeah, yeah, see, you're back. We're back. We're back. Here we go. I'm pissed, but sure. Peyton Manning's speech was awesome. Yeah. Him basically saying, this is why This is why you should love football. He laid out what kids in the future will get to do, and at the end is that have fun, basically. And he talked about everything going on in the world and how now, since before this time, it was about us. Now that he's in the Hall of Fame going forward, it's about being – uh, you know, a steward of the game and like making yeah. sure this game carries on. And his quote, a legacy is only worthwhile when there is a future to fuel it is unbelievable, uh, unbelievably deep. And I think, by the way, it can go for everything he potentially mentioned in his entire speech, not just about the football and everything else. I mean, it was just, I thought it was very well put together. He powered through that thing. He did not take any breaks because they told him he had six minutes. And I think he was on the record saying, I'm going to use only my six minutes, allotted six minutes, because I think Peyton it was trying to be like, hey, if I was able to do it, Everybody can be able to yeah. do it going forward because of the abuses of times that have happened in the past. We should at least, this is how we can do it. So if you give him a guideline of how to go and he says he's going to do it, I guess he stayed in there. I don't know what the official time was. He was reading that thing, though, very quick. Yeah. Yeah. There was a couple good pops he could have got, too, and I think he powered through. So I think there was a couple standing ovation moments, potentially, and laughing and clapping moments in there that maybe didn't have as big of a moment because he powered right through it because he had a lot to say. Uh, but what a fucking speech by him and Edron James as well. Like as a Colt, I think Edron James talking about perceptions and uh, his secret weapon of him working out before anybody or even afterwards after driving everybody home from the club after sipping on cranberry when everybody else was drinking vodka or whatever. And he just goes, works out at 4 or 5 a.m. And Jim Irsay, who inducted him, said uh, it was so funny in the video. He said, this is a guy that would outwork everybody. At 3 a.m. he'd work out. And Jim Irsay said, that's no exaggeration. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, he was like, he was trying to showcase that people say this all the time about people, but Edge's work ethic, I guess, even behind the scenes, no glitz or glamour. I just want to let everybody know. Like, that is awesome. I'm, I'm so happy and proud for all of them. And uh, what an incredible weekend. Yeah, it was awesome. I mean, like, like you said, with Peyton, I think everyone expected it. We've seen him host SNL. Like, we've seen enough of Peyton now with Peyton's places college and bowl. everything. Yeah, College Bowl. Like, he was going to crush it no matter what. And, I mean, to your point, too, about, like, cutting people down, he roasted Ray Lewis, you know, from still – he just finished his speech from two years ago or whatever. But I think you're right. The – I didn't know what to expect out of Edron James is really just because you never really know what these guys are going to say. I think going into it, and especially because we didn't have one last year, you expect a lot of just like the cliche ones, but like his, his was incredible. I was blown away. Like, and, and it didn't look like he had anything that he was like going, he literally just got up there and kind of just spoke from the heart. And it was, it was amazing. Edge. Great businessman too. True. Really? Oh yeah. Great businessman. Hey, he is not scared to. He will dabble in any business and do well in it. It, it feels like following along, he, you know, he introduced his children. Yeah. 
I basically, I feel like I know them pretty well now because I follow along on his Instagram. His Instagram's very good. Yeah. His Instagram is very, very good. He, he is a, a great follow. But the amount of pride that he had for each one of his kids, and it's not like bullshit, by the way. If you follow him, he's posting about all of them basically all the time. It is. That was really cool. And his drop top on 28s, I was told. Ooh, I thought it was 26s. Okay, I had a Cadillac Escalade that had 24s on them. It was tough to turn, all right? So <laughs> then there's 26s that get put on. It that has to be impossible to ride. I was told that Edge's drop top had 28s on them with the Pro Football Hall of Fame, beautiful custom paint job. Now Peyton signed it. I think Troy signed it. I think he's got a lot of people riding. He he crushed the week. Edron James fucking slaughtered the weekend. Peyton did as well. It was a great weekend to be a cold. Well, and I think too, like, you know, I mean. Oh, yeah, Jim Ursay threw hundreds. Throwing yeah, hundreds. That was, yeah. that was incredible. Yeah. But Edge like, told him to, and a lot of people say Jim looks like an asshole or whatever. But I assume people are saying "What's up?" And Edge actually gives him the uh, "Make it rain." Yeah, let it rain. And then say, "Brother, that didn't go. I'm sorry." The wind. I forget though, because you know, I mean, I when Edron James left the Colts, I was probably like you know 13 or 14 or whatever. Like I forget that like when he left, it wasn't like I mean just because of how long it's been like it was like oh maybe he was like losing step i think he led the nfl in rushing and then they traded him like i and then had that entire another career in arizona but for whatever reason just because time's passed it's like you forget that kind of stuff it's like oh this guy was a fucking dog i love watching the highlights yeah you know like whenever you get to see calvin johnson's highlights for oh. five straight minutes or whatever and then he goes up there and talks about how we should all be smoking a little bit more weed i, I, I absolutely <laughs> love that whole thing but whenever you got a chance to watch like for instance Najee Harris was immediately compared to Le'Veon Bell probably because he was a Pittsburgh Steeler or whatever but that's a very difficult thing to make a comparison to somebody who has been very good in the past and comparing somebody but are you see the way Edge play like Ed the way I completely forgot the way Edron James played oh, I yeah. think I think a lot of people did mostly because he's not out there like pumping his highlights or he's not on TV where they can roll in say hey here's Edron James yep. with a couple highlights beforehand getting a chance to see his highlights again oh my he's so god right. he's so fucking good yeah. and he could run great routes he was like he was a guy who probably could have been wide receiver if he wanted to in the NFL. His rookie year, he goes shows up rookie of the year, does the whole thing. Then the second year, I guess he would have done the same Almost thing. Almost rushed Berman two thousand yards. Yeah, yeah. In that offense. Whenever he jumped in there, Peyton Manning was probably so fucking thrilled. He's like, "All right, we got now somebody in the backfield that they they can't have a light box now. Completely yeah. changed the game." And then Joseph Adai obviously came in after that. I mean, it was Dominic Rhodes. There was like then a stable of running backs that came in there. But Edge was unbelievable. And I, I didn't. He was before my time. Like I think literally maybe one year or two years because we played against the Arizona Cardinals in Indy. So obviously the video right. tribute for him there in the place Big where the place yeah. where Craig, they loved Edron James in Indianapolis because he would only get interviewed I think by the local media cuz he was like not very he wasn't like a big and he would always crush like his, his interviews would always crush the the Jep the Japanese pre, uh, preseason game is like his shining moment, basically, mm -hmm. that I've, as soon as I, I don't want to say shining moment because he's done so many great things in the community, especially back at home, by the way. He has an entire, like, a state property that he has in the summer. He runs entire camps for basically entire neighborhoods of people. Wow. I mean, like, Edrin is the absolute best, but he did not want to play because he is a businessman in a preseason game in Japan due to the taxes. And he was, that was a saga that was covered over here. He ended up going, but I think there was some, some agreements made on both party side, both the Colts, the NFL and Edron James, <laughs> oh. because he was, I think it was the year after he won some award or they won a Super Bowl. He was a big, like he was a big name. Edron James was a big deal going over there. So they were marketing that he was going. Yeah. Oh. And then I think like some math was done about the taxes and what was going to happen. And, and there was a lot of players that were like, we, hey, we ain't going though. Like, we appreciate it. But Edron James, absolute icon, dude. Troy Polamalu, that speech, man. Yeah, so good. You know, because whenever you hear how soft-spoken, because he was like super soft-spoken guy, but then articulate, and I guess he just got out of COVID or he was yeah. in COVID still. So who knows how tired or how focused he was to be in there. That's a, not an easy thing. You have six minutes to kind of go through your entire career, <laughs> yeah. thank people, but then also 
you know, kind of let people know why you were the way you were to hopefully help others to potentially attain the same thing that you are at right now. So it's it's not an easy speech to give. There are not there are some people that go out there and aren't amazing. There are some moments that are, you know, like, all right, pal, get, let's get through this, pal. But then in everybody's story, there's something beautiful that you could kind of take away from it. And I think, you know, that's a lot of speeches we listen to. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a lot of speeches that were out there. And I think there was a lot of people that are like, ah, oh, this is too long or whatever. The stadium the second night was just as filled as it was the first night. Mm -hmm. Football is king. And if you get a chance to listen to our football greats and take a, almost a trip back in time, that's what kind of what Hall of Fame weekend is. It's it's beautiful. I fucking loved it, man. I absolutely yeah. loved Hall of Fame weekend. Well, and to your point, like being able to listen about how much football means to these guys and like what it did for their lives and how intelligent they are too. Because like you said, I think that was probably the first time I ever heard Edron James like speak at all. So it's like, man, being uh, able he was to on the show one time. Thanks for listening. No, no, no I, I listened <laughs> to that, <laughs> but you know, like yeah. give a speech. Yeah, absolutely. Not easy. You got a whole stadium, yeah. by the way, yeah. in front of you in six minutes too. Like these guys played football for damn near. 25 years of their life and they got to some basically chop it all down to six it was just incredible the whole thing and but if you go too long you jeopardize literally if if guys go too long they jeopardize the entire evening because once people check out it's going to be hard to get them back in especially yeah. there or whatever but it's there's so many you know because everybody talks about the uh the team aspect you hear them all say it and troy palomalu told uh ryan clark and ike taylor uh, on the Face First podcast, he basically said to them he felt so much pressure because he felt as if he was the one who was supposed to represent that entire defense because of how good he was. He, he felt like he did not deserve that honor to basically be the one that represents everybody. And I think a lot of these great players, everybody just assumes that their confidence is through the roof and they think just as highly as everybody else does about them. But at the end of the day, in a lot of team sports, a lot of guys very much know they rely upon the success of somebody else for them to be anything at all. So whenever that narrative kind of comes through in people's speeches, I enjoy it. Like, because there's a lot of trainers that were shout out this weekend. Yeah, yeah. Equipment managers, you know, they never get talked about all year unless it's from this show, probably, uh, or players that are, are older or going through something. A lot of trainers, a lot of equipment managers getting shout out, a lot of other people. It's just like, it's cool to kind of hear, you know, everybody's kind of appreciation for how everything operates as a whole. I just, I love the Hall of Fame weekend. Well, and I think it's more apparent too, like when there isn't one last year, I think that is kind of something that you probably take for granted, you know, like it's before the season now, but like we didn't get it last year and then you got it this year. And I think to your point, like no speeches were really to the point where it's like, okay, this guy's been up here for 10 minutes too long. We need to get him out of here and get this thing moving. Like it seemed like everyone was kind of, pretty concise and you're right like there was it wasn't filled with cliches you could look at each person's individual speech and find something different that they were trying to get across yeah and it's not easy there's been 300 and what speeches now 36 well yeah. that's what edge was i think right. a couple so came however after. many were after him yeah. inmate 336 <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, was, that was awesome <laughs> incredible incredible and then his family you know and his mom yeah. like i love yeah. like her i enjoyed the the hell out of that um but the deciding which way you're going to go with that speech mm. is a massive decision. Oh, yeah. You know, and I've, I've talked to Vinatieri before a few times, you know, about his Hall of Fame and how that whole thing is going to go. And he was there with Tom and Peyton last night. Actual incredible photo bomb. There's another photo, too, of Vinny walking the crowd, by the way, with a Coors Light in his hand. I'm like, fucking good for Vinny. <laughs> yeah. Vinny's Crushing just it. having the time of his life as he deserves. And I, I think he should get pretty comfortable with that entire you know, situation because he's going to be their first ballot Hall of Famer as a kicker is going to be fucking awesome to see. Yeah. I think that is going to happen as well. I mean, it's going to be tough because those votes are very difficult, but I think it's going to be very hard to look through the resume of that dude and not vote him as a first ballot Hall of Famer when it's all said and done. But his angle of his speech, you know what I mean? He mm. was an Amsterdam admiral for a bit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah, there he is. Look at him. I mean, this is just, Vinatieri had to have an incredible weekend. He's he's one of the only players walking, right, that, oh, I'm, I'm going to be voted into here. Yeah. yeah. Okay? And be, all the guys I played with are going to be voted into here. I'm going to be here probably for the next 50 years. Just, just <laughs> Vinatieri's like, 
It's great to be home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It has, and by the way, he's deserved and earned this entire thing. But him getting voted in there, he was an Amsterdam admiral, let alone him being a jackrabbit in South yeah. Dakota. And then he was an Amsterdam admiral. And then he's in New England with two different coaching regimes or three different coaching regimes because I think it was Bill, Pete, and then Bill again. Mm -hmm. So I think he's a bunch of regimes there. Then he comes to Indianapolis, bunch of turnover there. You're talking about playing forever. His decision on how he's going to finagle his six minutes is yeah. going to be very fascinating. Like, that is going to be I, – I enjoy that type of thing because at the end of the day, all you hear is the speech, but you don't think about the 60 other versions that were potentially, ah. Or, like, for instance, Isaac Bruce. I assume Ooh. the one thing he did have in there in every single copy, <laughs> yeah, this son of a bitch <laughs> yeah. that called me two days before the draft. <laughs> I gotcha. Still alive. I'm going to quote Kumo D here. How you like me now, bitch, basically, <laughs> yeah. is what he said. Uh, Ari Mirov with the tweet updating the entire thing at my sports update. That was beautiful, but like, how many different versions did Peyton have? Yeah. In Peyton's speech, I think we all kind of took away from it as – Hey, this guy's going to run football. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know how you run all of football, but I think he's going to run football. He'll find and, a way. and everybody, everybody kind of just linked together, like, oh, Peyton Manning is going to be the fucking commissioner of the NFL. Here we go. Roger Goodell's deal is up before the next CBA is to be negotiated because everybody said that last CBA, which is always ugly, publicly, disgustingly, it's big, it's bad for both sides publicly. The NFL seems to have a much better PR narrative on it than the players do, so they win over the public. Hey, if you win the mob, you win Rome, they say. The NFL always seems to win the mob in the CBA negotiations, but it still gets ugly for Roger Goodell because there's a lot of money being talked about in negotiating and everything like that. Being a commissioner... Is not easy at all. CBA negotiations are when it gets it, it's worse. And allegedly, Roger Goodell will be done before the next one. So this is all like a victory lap almost for Roger Goodell. Kind of, a, you know, he's M&M's a little bit starting uh. to do that. You know, like it's like, you know, I think Roger Goodell doesn't have to be the full-blown asshole all the time anymore because as a commissioner, you have to be, which, by the way, that is a difficult job. Yeah. You are going to make a decision against everybody's favorite team at some point that they are going to hate you for. That's just what your job is, basically. You're going to have to enact rules that you definitely didn't think of or think is the right move, but you have to because you work for 30 billionaires. So this is your, it's not an easy job. Roger Goodell has definitely made mistakes, but I think the game has gotten much better under his leadership. And I think right now he's currently in a victory lap because it was announced that he's not going to be around for the next CBA. So it's like, did Peyton last night at the Hall of Fame give a speech about how much he loves football, how it should be going forward, how it should be viewed, how you know he feels about it and everything like that. Did he just propel himself directly into the conversation of this guy should be the commissioner? And I'll say this, I bet he would get voted in by the NFL and its owners immediately yeah. to be the commissioner. I think he would do an incredible job at being able to talk to the owners because he's been now at every single phase of the league. I, I, well, I guess he doesn't have... I don't know, he's been doing these tours where he's like job shadowing and seeing things yeah. and doing things. He's like real quiet. He's able to do whatever he wants to do. If he's the commissioner, I think it's like a perfect hire. But do you want to get paid $40 million, okay, which is a lot of money, okay? $40 million a year is a lot of money. Peyton has already made a lot of money, mm -hmm. yes. okay? And probably his money is probably making money for him at the moment. <laughs> yeah. So he's making a lot of money. I think he's doing, do you want to be the commissioner of the NFL? Is that what Peyton really wants? I'd want him to be one because I've seen the way he operates. I think, and also the owners would be able to respect and appreciate, and he'd also be able to give a different direction, hopefully with the NFL PA relationship. But do you think Peyton Manning, who has been pretty good at picking and choosing what he wants to do, what he doesn't want to do, and it seems like he crushes everything he does. He doesn't have a lot of misses. Whenever Peyton steps into the batter's box for anything, normally going to be a home run. Would you want to take the position where you are the shield, basically, for 30 billionaires in these decisions in the biggest league in the world? Is that something you want to do? Because you are going to be hated by people inevitably you are going to be hated by people is that i don't know it'd be great for the game it'd be great for the yeah. league but if you're peyton man do you think peyton really wants to do that I, I think that's what everybody has to ask. not a chance i think at this point too like he could he could just kind of wait it out and then eventually he'd be like all right uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna do sunday night football you'll pay me 25 million bucks a year and i'll do 20 i'll have 20 he, days he could do anything he wants Le legit so it's like what i mean nfl commissioner like you got a lot on your plate if you're doing that that's 40 a, million a year though and you I guess and at that point, his kids might be a little bit older where it's not like, you know, if they're out of the house, maybe he would want to do it. But I feel like... And you have actual say in the future of the game. True. Like he, you know, he talked about coaching his son 
uh, football team or whatever. Yeah. And my sources have told me that they actually did have a play sheet on a wristband. <laughs> I don't doubt it. So they were good. My sources told me that they were potentially Omaha, Omaha. Yeah. And, wow. Yeah. And they were dominant, by the way, from what I've been told. Never would have guessed that Peyton Manning led. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Peyton Manning Marshall's led. reading defenses and shit? I don't know. I don't know if they're reading defenses or not, but I assume he could. At that yeah, point. Probably. Marshall, have you seen him, by the way, going around? His son shakes everybody's hand so firmly and perfectly and then just goes around and has the utmost amount of respect for everything he is probably going to be just like arch i assume look for him to do that but peyton talked about giving back to the game while coaching and everything if you're the commissioner of a league you have the chance to really give back to the game a lot there and make a lot of say and i don't think there's a single player that has ever met peyton that would say no he's not the right guy to do it and i don't think there's a single owner out there that would say no he's not the right guy yeah. to do it i think it would be a home run for everybody but inevitably if you're peyton manning you're gonna have to deal with some bullshit which it doesn't seem like there's much of that in his life right now anywhere. What's going on? Well, and when you like when he talked about Monday Night Football, like the big sell for him was that he could just stay home, hang out on the couch, and then just talk to Eli basically through a FaceTime. So to your point, the commissioner, I mean, that is a massive job. He'd be doing so much shit. Do you see it as soon as 2024? Because that's when Roger Goodell's contract ends. Yeah, and who knows if he'll extend another year if they can't find the proper... You know, the, the, the transition in one of these roles is... I mean, that's a big fucking deal. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, this is a big, big deal. Who's, is it somebody from within? Is it somebody that they've groomed like Roger Goodell was? I was going to say, uh -huh. I think it has to be like that, right? But I don't know. Roger's so been an intern since 1997. Though. Goodell? Yeah. Yeah, he was like running mail, I think. Like, yeah. Goodell has literally been in the NFL office corporate world forever. And then it was just like, okay, we also have the perfect guy to be the commissioner here that has been here, knows everything about everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like everything about everything knows where we can, knows what we can't, knows, oh, we've, oh, we shouldn't. Now, Roger Goodell, and I alluded to this earlier, he is definitely fucked up. Like, let's not, let's not get it twisted. There Absolutely. has been terrible decisions made that probably are Roger Goodell's decisions to be made. But then there's a lot of decisions that never get talked about, it seems like, because it's like anything else. Once you hate somebody, it's, it's going to be very difficult to give them credit for anything. What Roger Goodell has done with the NFL since he was commissioner to now, in 2024, if that's whenever he's up, think about the growth business-wise. Think about the reach. Think about the game as a whole. They had to battle, too. There was a lot of lawsuits. There was a whole new science. Uh, there was a whole new disease and ailment in the brain that came up that was literally created. Somehow got through all of that. Now, once again... There's a lot of fucking up through there. There's a lot of probable bad decisions that were made in there, but still to continue to grow the game. Like I think in, when it's all said and done, Roger Goodell goes into the Hall of Fame, obviously, and everybody will look back on a much more positive light of his entire career as opposed to what it is now when we're in the middle of it because he's fucking over my favorite team or your favorite team or their favorite team or whoever's favorite team. But whoever gets in there next, that's a big... How's your relationship going to be with the NFLPA? How's your relationship going to be with the media? Do you have a different vision for the media as opposed to the old school cable things? Do you have a digital streaming thing? How are you going to present things to the owners? How do you pitch things from the owners? How do you get information from the owners and then let people know what that information is? What's your angle going to be? Are you going to give more than Roger Goodell gave? Are you going to be your own person? Or are you going to try to mimic Roger Goodell? There is a lot on the plate because if you fuck it up don't worry about it they just signed a 113 billion dollar deal there's probably only a trillion dollars yeah. worth of capital that's going to come in in the next 20 to 30 years you're in charge of it good luck don't fuck it up that position is a going to be a very very difficult one to fill and if it's peyton manning that would be wild if we had a former player in there. Yeah, absolutely, man. And that makes sense uh, if Goodell would be just taking like a victory lap right now because like that is his capstone. It's like cherry on top. It's like I just signed a hundred and thirteen billion dollar media deal. Like that yeah. we can opt out. Yeah, of and make exactly. Oh. That's Guess what? This thing is just gonna keep going. So fuck it. I'm gonna do whatever I want until. And at this point, you know, I mean, with how much he's made and like. Why wouldn't he just want to have an early retirement when he's done? Like, would you Would you want, if you're Goodell, it's like, Oh, dude, he, he's going to be the Goodell pod. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Here we go. Hey, can we talk about something that they fucked up this weekend? Uh-huh. Please. Excuse me. Celsius. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to be back, by the way, Celsius. Good to see you. Ty drank a Celsius this morning, 8 a.m. Jeez, Ty. Ty, and now he's now it's he's like on 9.30. Your, Whatever the case, though, why are we even caring about our energy levels at 9.30 a.m.? Just 
do si do your snooze your life right till about 11.30, then start pounding. You you start at not you crack that thing open at 9.30, you're looking at a three to four Celsius day. Ooh. Can't have that. No, can't have it. Can't, can't have, have that. Well, well, and that's why I went to this uh, this other, you know, energy drink that, you know, we'll see what it does to me. I Mitt had one. He said it kind of took him off the rails a little bit, so... I mean, we'll see. It doesn't taste great, but it's it's doing the job. Okay, well, uh, doing the job is something it looked like a lot of these Hall of Famers were doing because that T-shirt commercial. Mm. Oh, that, can we? That was the only, my my only. Hey, we need to stop running this. I got Peyton Manning going. Eh? So nice, do it twice. <laughs> <laughs> With a T-shirt shot in like 1080p or something yeah. like that. It was a come on. These guys are getting inducted to the Hall of Fame. Don't have them do this. Unless they're making billions of dollars off of these shirts. I'm not 100% sure if they are or not. But I, in my eyes, I was like, that seems to be something that should be an email blast or like maybe a social thing. Yeah. yeah I don't know if we need to put that on TV in between these things. I think it's a little bit of a differing. You know, well, that's what I was wondering. Who's buying this shirt? Well, and why are you got Peyton Manning? You're gonna have him hold that thing up and say that you, if we're gonna try to move some merch, let's fucking have Peyton do something. Yeah, yeah. like him huck a football. It's all right. Hall of Fame's the best. Yeah. David Baker did invite me to sleep at his house. Yeah. Are you gonna take him up on that? Well, or? I think it was for this past weekend. Oh, I thought it was uh -huh. any time. No. Well, is it any time? I thought he made it seem like hey, you can come whenever you want. Well, the only time you want to go, though, probably the best time to go at least would be this past weekend, right? Yeah, probably maybe before like a bronze game or something. Yeah. Oh, 45 miles away. Is that how long, how far Canton is from Cleveland? Because Chris Berman said uh, that's uh, the amount of miles that Peyton Manning threw for in the NFL. He can get from here to Cleveland, he said. <laughs> wow. Pretty good. A lot of yards. Nobody gave him a pop. I think that's why he followed up with like, he could drive to Cleveland. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Chris Berman, by the way, not an easy job. Mm -mm. Master of ceremonies. Because normally whenever he's going up there, the Hall of Famers are about had it, and they're already mingling in front of the, the whole podium. And then you have to kind of like corral everybody and then do a good job intro. And I, I think he did a good job. What is it, Master of Ceremonies? Yep. Yeah. That's a good title, too. I'm Master of Ceremonies at fucking Hall of Fame. That'd be a nice one. He did well, though. I like Boom. A lot right. of people don't, though, huh? Yeah, I, I think not. at this point. But, I mean, he's the best. Also, you know, this is a perfect event for him because a lot of people don't realize Chris Berman is like 6'9 and weighs like 350. He's a massive human being. David Baker? I didn't know. He's, he's up all, there. He's not quite David Baker-esque, but Chris Berman looks like he played left tackle in the NFL. Mm -hmm. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Huge. Did he? Huge. He might have. What was he? He was like the first employee at ESPN or something like One that? One of the first ones, I think, yeah. He crushed it. Crushed it. Let's go to a break, and then we'll be back on the other side with. Uh, He's six five. I met him one time. Huge. I don't remember him being six five. Uh, Super Bowl in Miami. Was he six five? Yeah, because yeah, I remember he walked by us, and me and Fox were like, "Who the fuck <laughs> is that?" And then he. <laughs> bark, 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 bark. Oh, <laughs> Holy shit! That's Boomer. <laughs> hey, he was a huge part of everybody's life that was in the sports for a long time. And just like everybody, I guess, you, you people just kind of turn on him at some point. Yeah. I thought he did a good job, Master. He had uh, he laughed going up every time. I thought that was good. I was always wondering what joke I missed. You know? Mm -hmm. well, who was Boom talking to? <laughs> Maybe yeah. someone asking him, hey, Boom, let's go smoke a couple more joints in the parking lot before you go up there next. <laughs> that Hall of Fame smoke sesh oh. has to be so far, dude. Or make yeah. a movie about it. Somebody. Could you imagine just the... Hey, you remember when you, and then, oh yeah. yeah. Mm. Wait, that was against, oh yeah. yeah. That's probably an hour and a half, two, three <laughs> yeah. hours right there before time even knows you just hopped into a time machine of stories that are awesome with the people that were in it while also taking off to a new altitude. That had to be fucking beautiful. Pretty sweet. Good for them. Yeah. Good for the mic person too, who just mm -hmm. kind of loosey goosey with the, the controls. Yeah, leave it on, leave it on. Who is it? Who is it talking? <laughs> Insert name here. Oh yeah, yeah. We missed their. Uh, they had good weed talk the last commercial break. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's not miss this next one. All right, get it back. Turn that up. You want to go smoke two joints in the? Yep. yep. Got, got it. Him, got him. Got, got, him, him, got him. him. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Turn it down. <laughs> what if that was? What if it was on? It felt like it was. It, yeah. Uh huh. That's like whenever they mic up players who are about to be in a fight or whatever, and they keep mics up on him, and then they, oh, sorry, we had to turn that down. It's like, well, that was a decision that was made. <laughs> yeah, right. On purpose. I respect it. Who was it smoking? Had to be primitive, right? 
Had, uh, had to yeah. be. I, I think there was a way to identify the person who did say it. Well, the tweet that we put up with it, that I put up quote tweeting it, Bill Kyer's face is the first one you see. And oh, I yeah. don't think Bill Kyer's smoking two joints. I think someone was asking Kyer to go smoke a couple of joints. Oh. That's who was saying it up to him. Who was it? Uh, Drew Pearson, I believe. Is what the internet is yeah. saying. Mm -hmm. Drew Pearson, he had a good energy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He had great energy. Great. And he was pissed for a while. He wasn't getting in the Hall of Fame. He got know. in there. I think this was oh, his yeah. last shot, wasn't mm -hmm. it? This was his last year he was on the ballot, I Coach think. Coach Flores said, hey, you know how hard it is to get here? It took a long time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he was talking about people driving. It was a great reference for both of that. A nice learning about a lot of people over the Hall of Fame break. one 833 4 call the 5-Hour Energy phone lines. Ty, why don't you give them a call, huh? Huh? What? 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 I had a Celsius. What? A five hour diesel. What? A five hour summer original. What? A five hour original original. What? A five hour extra special strength original. What? A five hour extra strength special summer original. What? That's Todd. Just this morning. T's and P's for the guys hard as we go to a break. We're back <laughs> in four. This is Deep Eye McAfee Show. I just saw a picture of you getting out of, I think, a 757 that is from Jim Ursay. What was that? And have you ever been in that plane before? I, I thought it was like a, the team plane to fly all of the Indianapolis Colts. <laughs> I, uh, literally, I mean, it's got the logo on it, uh, Pat, and uh, it was awesome. But look, that's just Jim. Pat, I had a wonderful 14 years there. It, I, it's obviously the team that I wanted to play for always. I, I understood the, the, the decision he had to make. and. No hard feelings, and uh, for him to send his plane to fly me and my son down here, uh, it was a great, great gesture. A lot of room for me and Marshall. We were throwing the football. <laughs> <laughs> so, pretty, uh, pretty, uh, pretty cool experience. Pretty cool father-son weekend. By the way, as he's moving from event to event right now, <laughs> you are the best, dude. Where are you headed right now? I'm going to the game. I'm going to the game. I got Lynch. I got Fanica. I got these guys in the background. So, boys, uh, how you? Congratulations! Yeah. Congratulations, boys! All right, Peyton. Oh, hey, there he is, Marshall. I hope you enjoyed that plane, pal. Hey, Peyton. <laughs> last thing here. Um, you talking to Tom Brady? You becoming friends with him? I, it was interesting to watch. Oh yeah, take the photo. Take the photo. <laughs> 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 All right, we will wrap this up. Well, I'll tell you, Pat, um, I don't think anybody can do what, what Tom has done. Look, I know how hard it was for me to get on the same page with my receivers, learn a new system, learn new coaches. But I had a full off season. I was injured. I was rehabbing. The fact that Tom has done this in a COVID pandemic off season, no time to meet with his receivers. He met with his coaches illegally by breaking into Byron Leverage's <laughs> house. Uh, so besides that, uh, it's been incredible what he's been able to accomplish, and uh, he deserves all the credit. His leadership is, is what put the Bucks in this game today, and uh, I have great respect for him because I know how hard it is, but uh, he deserves all the credit. Hey, how did you know Red 18 was coming? Pat, I mean, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you telling that story and, and just growing the legend. That was about the 18th time I tried it. I was 17 going into that. And, you know, when it doesn't hit, you just keep walking. And nobody ever really tells you about it. So when it hit, I was as surprised as you were. And uh, the reaction from, from some of the some of the good old folks there in the casino that night was uh, pretty special. Well, I appreciate you doing that. You made me and those folks in the casino a bunch of money. Congrats on the Hall of Fame nod. Thank you for spending time. Enjoy yourself at the game, Peyton. Pat, thanks, pal. I appreciate you. The, sh you. the Sheriff Hall of Famer, Peyton May. Yeah! Jesus. Are you kidding? Me? You're kidding, though. Three
This is the Pat McAfee Show on Sirius XM Mad Dog Sports Radio. We thank you for taking the time to seek out this small regional show that streams internationally. Here's Pat and the boys. Welcome back to that show. 46 minutes into hour one here on this Monday, August 9th, 2021. Woo. Thanks, Loki. Good. I got this belt buckled down in Fort Worth, Texas. Ever heard of it? That's right. <laughs> High stockyards. Mm-hmm. They take actual cows through the goddamn streets down there, and I was with a cowboy or two, and they said, you need to get yourself a belt buckle. I said, can I hop on a bull for eight seconds or whatever it is? They said, no, no, no. But you can go buy one that says you did, and that's what we did right here. Hell yeah. And you did hop on a bull. Let's not, let's not forget. As did you. Boom. And they were great cattle. They were a good piece of cattle. Thank you, Turby and Teddy. Yeah, that's right. Turby... And Teddy. Hell yeah. Zito didn't, oh, Zito had to run back to fix the uh, computer. He, he told those cows to fuck off, didn't want to hop on. Yeah, that's right. Also, they what? did, they were going to wheel out, you know, a different oh, cattle for God, him, but dude. he decided to say no. Could have left Respectfully that out. so. Let's go to the phones. <laughs> Could have left that out. Oh, you, oh, yeah. yeah. You were, yeah, you were alluded to it. No, I didn't. I was about to cut you off, but I lost my head thing. I couldn't hear what you were saying. Then I heard the tail end of it. I was like, God damn, I thought we were doing something nicer there. That was not, that was not nice. It wasn't necessary. When Zito gets back in here, I would like you to apologize for. I'm not apologizing to Zito. Zito was spinning the same yarn you two were about me rooting for the Bucks earlier. So, you know what? I'll call it square. No. Oh, come on. Zito, thank you. Did you hear Connor? Telling everybody about that other cow they're going to bring yeah, up for you? Yeah, it's bullshit. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Let's go to the phones. You didn't deserve that. Let's go to Eric in Hawaii. Thank it's you. like 4 a.m. over there. Aloha, <laughs> Eric. Uh, aloha, Pat and the boys. Happy Marvelous Monday. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out. Hey, uh, my question is, way. Is uh, we all know Justin Fields is going to fall out in this preseason here. Uh, do you think these stooges over here in Chicago – uh, we'll put Justin Fields in uh, as a week one starter or just keep cl- keep uh, being clowns and uh, keeping this promise to Andy Dalton. All right, great question, Eric. Uh, I'm not 100% sure because he said that they have a plan or something like that. We're going to stick to the plan no matter what. Andy Dalton's a starter. Uh, Fields is the backup. I think it's potentially because – they don't want Fields to have the pressure of being the starter going into camp, into his first ever camp in the first couple games. They got Andy Dalton there. Let Fields kind of watch the way Dalton handles himself. Hopefully, a by osmosis, learn some stuff, and then go in and start afterwards. Now, I don't know how long that'll be able to last, because what if Andy Dalton stinks in the first game? Nagy staring down a potential firing. Will he put Justin Fields in immediately? I assume so, but they have maintained that they have a plan on how they're going to handle this. Nick Foles is the three. He's slicing and dicing them. Dalton's the one. Fields is in, uh, the number two quarterback, but they have a plan. I like a young guy getting to watch an older guy a lot, and I guess – that's not really a thing anymore because it's the instant gratification. Hey, we just drafted this. Like, for instance, Trey Lance is balling out at camp. There are videos surfacing on the internet of Trey Lance over there absolutely slanging that thing. And I had no idea that was his upside, that he had incredible accuracy, dropping balls literally into buckets for guys. This one, okay. Any, I could have made that pass. Right. This one. Mm-hmm. Then there's this one inside of what uh, – Levi's or whatever, yeah, Wranglers, whoever it Levi's, is, yeah. Levi's Field out there. They got kicked out of that stadium last year. They had to go play in Arizona. They had a bunch of guys with COVID. They had a bunch of broken foots. I mean, last year they had the odds stacked against them mightily. And Trey Lance is just dropping balls onto pins at this point. And they said, John Lynch and um, Shanahan, Jimmy G is our starter, and then we'll kind of take it as we go. They're also saying Jimmy G is playing better than he's ever played in the past. Is that to potentially stir up some chum for the trade conversations to get Jimmy because of how good Trey Lance is playing? We're not 100% sure, but Trey getting to watch Jimmy act like a starter off the field, in my eyes, is worth a lot more than what the first couple games of Trey Lance is going to cost him long term uh, if he wasn't to play. I just think like if Andrew Luck, who was so good, immediately so good at football, if he could have watched Peyton for 
one year, two years, whatever the case. I mean, Aaron watched Brett for three years, yeah. Yeah. okay, which is a long time. That's That would never happen nowadays, by the way. And I don't think, by the way, going back. To Jordan Love, but that's the only other, you know. Yeah, exactly. But who knows what Jordan Love. Right. By the way, they'll probably try to trade for him because now we're in a world where it's like, hey, we're going to move, we're going to move. But if Andrew could have watched Peyton for just like, Six weeks. Impossible with how much money Peyton was uh, owed to have, and they wouldn't have been able to make it happen. And who knows how Peyton would have felt uh, about it, which is a massive ordeal. But let's just say, like, Peyton was in on it. Yeah, we're cool. We'll do this. And it was a, a full harmonic situation. And Peyton, by the way, might not be on it because that first-round pick that spent on Andrew Luck, uh, we would never have the pick if Peyton was going to play. By the So it's for, this is a completely hypothetical. But if Andrew could have watched Peyton for, like, one year for the – off the field, and I'm not talking. Andrew's work ethic was unbelievable. His study was amazing. How, but the way he can like, uh, hey, you can go tell uh, equipment managers who are you are good friends. Like, hey, want this to go this way. You can tell your coach, hey, want this to go this way. You can tell the GM, hey, I like this. Whenever it's this way, like, I think that would have been huge for Andrew. I think in everything, Andrew, I, from what I've been told, as he got older after I retired, he did start becoming a little bit more. And I think that is maybe because the organization was like asking him, like. Hey, we need you to be a part of these decisions, which is awesome, by the way, just like in Green Bay kind of going through there. But I think that could have been watching how to be a starter in the NFL with grown ass fucking men and a lot of money. I think that is a very valuable thing to, to happen. And uh, I don't know if it'll happen with Trey. I don't know if it'll happen with Justin Fields, but I don't think it's bad for them long term, even though the fans are going to want to see them quick, because if they start losing, especially and we drafted them high. But I think those types of things off the field are a big deal. I think it was a quote that come out that said uh or trent williams said like hey just watching this guy from a couple days or however long we've been like you can see he could be a generational talent do you think like patrick mahomes watched alex smith yeah right whole year do you think guys are saying that kind of stuff if they don't actually like oh, okay this guy's gonna be a dude like they know right they're not just like blowing smoke up a guy's ass to the media just just to be doing it, especially when you already have a guy like Jimmy G in place to start? Yeah, there's a way to answer every question, right? And whenever mm -hmm. there's a way to answer that question without burying Trey Lance, if he's not as good as everybody else while still putting him over, uh, putting him over means speaking in good light for it's a wrestling term, basically, hey, put over, put over. But it's, uh, it's something we use a lot. People probably don't understand it. It's really a great definition on how people speak about somebody. Sure. You can still put somebody over without saying something like that, so I think it's real. Okay. You know, like whenever yeah. you see like how somebody says, oh, he's a hard worker, he's, right. he's good, he's in there. It's like, okay, so maybe there's maybe some questions in there. But for saying like, oh, this is potential generational talent, I think that, especially with him, he, he, feels, he feels that way because there is no reason to say that type of thing unless you actually believe it. Um, and by the way, with the videos we're watching, oh, yeah. unless he just stinks every other ball and these are just anomalies, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's fucking dropping buckets. And Shanahan's offense, he can move – he can throw. They said he's smart as hell, right? That yeah. was one of the oh, things yeah. John Lynch and Shanahan said about it is how smart he is. This Niners team is loaded. If Jimmy G plays how Jimmy G normally plays, they're going to win a lot of games. Mm -hmm. But if Jimmy G happens to potentially take a step back or get injured and then Trey Lance comes in and just dominates, I mean, that – that Niners team is a problem in a division that is a problem. Right. But that team, I think everybody's looking at what they did last year and forgetting about all the bullshit that happened off the field to the Niners and why they were potentially went and got a new quarterback and now they have a stadium back. That team could be good. Justin Herbert, though, he did get thrusted in there yep. earlier, I assume, than Telesco and everybody thought he was going to, and he did very well. But he at least got some time to, to see Tyrod Taylor operate as a starter. Like, it's just a different world whenever everybody's making – you know, money, and there's uh, livelihoods on the line, and there's high football IQ from the players as well as not just the coaches of the front office. It's it's a different world whenever you're a starting quarterback for a multi-billion dollar yeah. team, and you're the face of a franchise. It's just not as easy as everybody could imagine, I think. And then if you get a chance to at least witness somebody do it, that go, that, that's massive. Do you, do you think Trevor Lawrence and Zach Wilson do have a much harder route because of the fact that they're going in there and they got to play right away? Well, if you're the first pick in the draft or second pick in the draft, you're going to a bad situation. That's yeah. why they have those draft picks. Archie actually said that while putting Peyton Manning <laughs> yeah. into the Hall of Fame, he said, we all know that if you're getting a number one overall pick, like you're in a bad spot or whatever. So I think they're in because of that to begin with. Mm -hmm. But also... 
do they have any OGs to lean on? Yeah. Down, you know what I mean? True. With yeah. Urban and everything. I think it's very tough to be young quarterbacks, but who's the OGs that's going to help them out? Who knows? In New York, it's Flacco. Who's they got? Minshew. Uh, maybe he'll help. Flacco, Eagles now with Jalen Hurts. They, the Jets oh. don't have anyone on the roster who was throwing a pass in the NFL. So we have a break right now in Sirius. The... So they have no vets on the roster behind. Uh, they signed Josh Johnson what like last week or something, but he's he's been a you know he's bounced around. He's played for like 13, 14 different teams. Okay, so I just confused Zach Wilson with Sam Darnold because I saw Darnold get hurt and then Flacco came in. Zach yeah. Wilson is not Sam Darnold. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Hopefully, although you could see how you could <laughs> yeah. in my head. <laughs> yeah, very okay, very handsome dude. Six three blonde, blonde like guy. Uh, right. okay. okay. Yeah, I saw Flacco go in, but he's in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. They were burying Joe Flacco on TV this morning. That's right, but they haven't named a starter in Philly yet, so maybe Flacco all of a sudden looks like he's 20 again. Or is it, which, by the way, coming out of Delaware, after leaving the University of Pittsburgh, right? Yeah. He told Pitt, I, I ain't doing it. He was behind Tyler. Uh, Palco. Was he behind Tyler Palco? He was behind Palco. And Palco, as you know, had a couple come from behind, big victories, kind of, you know. Didn't really, it wasn't really expected of Palco, I don't think. Well, Palco, Pittsburgh legend, Southpaw, great flow. <laughs> you win some games in Pittsburgh, from Pittsburgh, looking the way Palco looks, you're going to be a superstar. Flacco knew he had no chance mm-hmm. with the whole Palco. Fun. Yeah. He was so, hey, he was like the prototypical. He was a lefty, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember him. I think he didn't he beat Notre Dame at Notre Dame like right after Brady Quinn left. I'm and so rem- proud of these fucking guys. Yeah, exactly. He said, yeah, they <laughs> interviewed him after the game. He dropped an F bomb like right away on was, NBC. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's it was awesome. awesome. It was awesome. Yeah, he's a Pittsburgh guy. <laughs> yeah. Flacco had no shot. No. Not against Palco. Mm mm. But when he was 20, he was throwing up on, you know, Country Mile. Yeah. Did that guy from the Colts throw it 100 yards yet? I don't think uh, no, so. No, they actually cut him. Oh. Nick, delivery. <laughs> Why? I'm sorry, I got excited. I, we, I meant to bring this up to you off the air. I'm like, hey, remember that guy? So you could throw a homer. He got cut, unfortunately. Okay. But now it just popped up, and here I am. So the Eagles, maybe, because they don't have a starting quarterback. That's yet. right. There's a guy that can throw a ball well, 100 yards. Sirianni might just eat that up big time. Yeah. Well, if he was to eat it up, he would do it with eat, perfect description. Dunk it in the warm hot dog water on the table. <laughs> he is a big, dumb dipshit. I it's hate wild. to say it, but my God, that guy. I disagree. Oh, you do? I disagree completely. I want to let you know that. Because what he was saying, albeit interestingly, was it's all about the small details. Hey, little things lead to the big things, all right? Let's take care of the little things. The big things will take care of themselves. That's what he was talking about. He just happened to use Joey Jaws Chestnut, American Heroes, Biggest rival. Uh-huh. Look at a guy like Kobayashi, okay? He's dunking hot dogs in the water, and it has to be the perfect temperature. <laughs> What's funny, Fox? What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> he's talking about the minor details. I know he is. Just to say that. About the little Take your fucking things. Mickey Mouse story and shove it up your ass. What are you talking Whoa. about, dude? Dude, what are you, you're saying he's not going to Patrogino's over there, too? Is that what you're uh, saying? Yeah, I guarantee he's wit no whiz. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> What is it? You didn't Jeez. like Sirianni. What about the less thinky, more athlete That's Dewey? That's what I'm saying. He just, Equation. like, I, I get he's trying, but he sounds like a dipshit at every turn. And that's what <laughs> oh, I kind of, I said on Friday, I was like, hey, listen, we need to slow the roll on Dan Campbell because this guy makes Dan Campbell look like Tom Landry. He no. Does. He does. No. Oh, thank you. Ty. I haven't listened to enough Sirianni. I don't think if that's happening. Well, I've, I've heard only a heard about three clips, and I guess he's 0 for 3. No. Yeah. Let's think he more athlete Dewey. That was a home. To Ty's point, he does sound like an absolute fool. You I mean, guys. No, I never would have guessed you were going to no, join hey. him. I, I hope he's good this year. Yeah. And I hope they're good this year. Because guess what? <laughs> if they're not, they it's over. They might fucking take him down to Pants or Geno's and beat the fucking piss out of him. <laughs> what about Howie Roseman, too? They love that oh, guy. Yeah. Geez. Oh, my God. The Eagles. Just a couple years ago, building statues. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, not in my eyes. Right. They'll build a statue for anything in Philly. To be honest. <laughs> All they, right, they put Philly. Rocky statue up there. <laughs> I mean, come on. All right, we got to run to the bathroom. Philly yeah. does not deserve this. Hey, I want to let you know, I like that he's trying to describe things that have been described for a long time in different fashions. Let's just make sure we use Joey Josh Chestnut <laughs> next time. Yeah. Let's use the right champions, because guess what? If they're training like Kobe Oshie, guess they ain't ever winning again.
okay? Because big old Joey Jaws Chestnut showed up and started expanding his stomach bigger than anybody else in the history. So take a hike, pal. Yeah, and that's what Mike McCarthy's doing right now in the NFC East. Smashing water. Yes, mm-hmm. exactly. With Joey fucking Chestnut. Bingo. All right, we got one minute until we're back on Sirius, and AJ Hawks will be here. We have a lot to talk about yes. with him. General yes. Bob Carpenter is all you need to know. We'll see you in 54 <laughs> seconds. I was at AJ Hawks Carnival last night for charity when this man asked me if I wanted a shotgun. I was hesitant, but it's nice to know I still fucking got it, baby. Handshake. McAfee show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. Good afternoon. Welcome back to the dumbest show to ever happen. It is Monday, August 9th, 2021, and the house is packed out for hour two. Uh, Hammer Down boys are joining us. Great yeah. to see you guys. Hope you had incredible weekends. How are we? Are we hot? Are we cold? Are we still winning? Are we losing? the hottest gambler on the planet. You're back. We oh. know it. Hey, Unbelievable. Dumpy, here's what we said. We said you were going to take a little bit of a stumble and get right back up onto that incredibly hot gambling horse. The heater horse has been ridden again. What are you betting on everything? 12-0 and 0 baseball this weekend. What? Yeah. yeah. What? Yeah. Uh-huh. You're all the way back, dude. <laughs> Let's go. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. He was handing out cash right now to people. Beautiful. Beautiful yeah. life. Hey, thank Beautiful. you for that. You can listen to the... Are you are you winning as well? or? I was undefeated this weekend. No, you didn't bet. You didn't like the board. No. Yeah, you're out of time. I do. <laughs> So if you want to listen to two undefeated gamblers in the last three days, 15 minutes after this show ends, youtube.com forward slash hammer Don. They're handing out cash, it feels like, every single day. Joining us now is a man who did that this weekend in a beautiful fashion. I think a few hundred thousand dollars was raised Ooh, wow. in this man's house uh, over the weekend in beautiful Columbus, Ohio. Now, his house is a mall. Yeah, figured. <laughs> his property is massive Mm. 75 yard tent in the side yard didn't even know it was there that's where the event was taking place an actual carnival was happening in his side yard and his neighbors couldn't even know that it happened because they can't see from how far back into his land he lives (laughs) maybe the nicest house i have ever (laughs) walked into wow wow ever every room is like oh this is the nicest insert name of room (laughs) I've ever seen. Let me turn the corner. Oh, fuck. This is the nicest name of room. Oh, like don't sit in living room room I've ever Ah. seen in my life. Oh, this is the night. Every room was like that. Amazing. This guy is living the way he is. And I got a chance to see the attic that he tries to burn down every single day Mm. with his massive torch flame and cigar. That's like maybe the best quality setup sound studio really? I've ever seen in my entire life. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, a man we all owe a lot more respect to, I think, on a daily basis. Former fifth overall pick who signed for maybe what it looks like $750 <laughs> million yeah. guaranteed, ladies and gentlemen, AJ. Yeah. What's going on, AJ? What's happening, man? You look uh, yeah, very tough in that belt buckle. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. It's not just about being tough. It's about letting people know that I've been there, done that. Mm-hmm. I've wrote it all, and I've come back on the other side. Let's talk not about the belt buckle and what I've done. Let's talk about you. What an incredible, incredible event you put together this year. Yeah. Yeah. 
That was awesome, dude. That was really cool. I've been to a lot of events. I, this is the first time I've ever been invited to an event, though, to not work it. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, nice. So I, I think this is the first time I've ever gotten to experience an event. Normally, the only time I get invited, they say, hey, clown, going to need you to work, though. Yeah. You got it. Getting a chance to go and experience it, my wife and I, we absolutely love you. You're doing good things over there, AJ. That should be talked about a little bit more. Hey, well, we appreciate you and Sam coming. You guys were a big hit, and you added a lot to the uh, the occasion. You even bought an auction item, a, a live auction item that I'm sure you will get to at some point. But, yeah, I, I have uh, – obviously, there's tons of people that – set everything up and work on it all year long. So it's not, you know, I am, me and my wife, we host it, but they do all the work. So yeah, we, we appreciate them and everyone that came. But honestly, you were awesome. I mean, people, Stop. I think when they see you in person, they're like, oh, I didn't know they are they make humans like this, like this guy that <laughs> cruises around, just everything about you. It's a great thing. I think it's, I mean it as a compliment, but I think, uh, yeah, you guys handled yourself great. I think it seems like you guys had fun. I don't know. We had a blast. My wife and I don't, First of all, like I just said, we don't get invited to these types of events unless I'm working them. So it's like my wife either goes and she brings a friend to hang out with or she doesn't go at all and I'll see you later afterwards. This is the first time we got to really go to an event and enjoy it. Hey, a lot of motherfuckers there. Though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, there was a lot of people there. And, and I think that was a little bit alarming to both of us as we smoked our fourth or fifth of the day. You know, we looked at how big the crowd was growing because we were staying at his house, which... Once again, I did, it was like a fucking Four season resort. <laughs> yeah, I lost in there. Dude, they had like a, you know when you walk into a hotel, uh, maybe there in some hotels though, there'll be like a welcome letter yeah, you know, oh yeah. there. Yep. And so, they had a welcome letter to their what? guest Chocolates room. Chocolates on your pillow? Wi-Fi password, a whole snack oh. thing. A whole snack Good thing. God. A whole, a whole snack thing. It was a marble bathroom that we were staying in. Of course. God. That we were staying in nicest house I've ever seen in my entire, greatest host of all time. And then his it, Lady Hawk, right? She uh -huh. wakes up in the morning, she makes breakfast for 50, it feels like, <laughs> yeah, she, and the food was unbelievable. It was, uh, you guys did an incredible job. I just want to let you know, we had a lot of fun, but we were, we didn't know how it was going to go with us, to be honest. It's not something we normally do. Everybody was very nice. It was a hell of an event. Yeah, well, speaking of that, you being at the event and saying you were a little like overwhelmed, multiple times so we had we have there's a cop there that just is there to, to work the event and do everything if there's noise complaints multiple times people would kept saying man who's smoking weed like, is there somebody smoking weed here and it was you couldn't figure out where it was coming from and you would just hear random people like oh yeah i saw some other guys smoke like everyone said multiple people were and i was like i'm pretty confident i know where that's coming from. <laughs> Hey, you did put us in a wing that was pretty well hidden, though, so we appreciate that. We got a chance to sneak away a few times and come back. And I, I, I did, you know, I have to say this because I hope people go to your events forever and ever. This is the 10th year, by the way, doing this. Wow. Yeah, it's fucking unbelievable. I guess in years past, there had been potential tours of his house that people were just giving themselves to. Oh. Just right outside, they just walk into the nicest house of all time and just roam. Isn't that kind of how it went there for a few years? Uh, every once in a while, yeah, later in the night, there may be someone that we are acquaintances with or we're somewhat close with, and they start dragging random friends that we don't know through the house. And, oh, hey, don't go that one. There's Axel sleeping in there. Hold on. <laughs> oh, Jeez. Axel, by the way. <laughs> Warrior. Legend. Yeah. Axel was everything that we could have dreamed about, by the way. <laughs> Anything we thought of this guy who knocks on the door that is right to AJ's left there, pounding on that thing. <laughs> kicking people at wherever the hell he wants. And I believe he, the first thing he actually said to me once he kind of was okay with me, because at the beginning he was just punching me. Mm -hmm. nice. you know, just like punching me in my hand or in my legs or anything like that. One point he started snorting on me. I think that was a good time. He like started snorting on me. That was a good come together moment. And then he looked at me one time and just said, uh, butt cheeks! And then, <laughs> wow. then went to punch me in the butt. Yeah, so he is yeah. everything that we, we could imagine. But the party dude was... It was amazing, and, and I said earlier, like, I normally only get invited to these unless they say, like, dance clown, you sure. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I almost got out of doing all of that at this event. He signed me up for something that was maybe the worst spot I've ever been put in. <laughs> oh, no. Ever, it, it, Not even close. If that's no! the worst spot you've ever been okay. put in, I feel pretty good about your life so far. Okay, so he asked me if I would want to be a horsey. Okay. You were that's right. You said, absolutely, yeah, this is my time to shine. Like, you were juiced. That 
That was not the answer. I will I will let everybody know that that was, what is a horsey? I said, what is a horsey? <laughs> what is going on? He's like, well, it's this race where there's dice. They roll dice, and then you move forward, and then people bet on you, and if they win, they win money or whatever you want to do. I'm like, sure, I'll do that or whatever. Then I get to the, sh to the whole thing, the whole song and dance. The way you be a horse is you get called up onto the stage, all right, and on the dance, 450 people, 75-yard tent, there's people on stilts, clowns walking around. All right, there's a lot happening at this point. You go up there, you have to cut a promo, okay, to the people on why they should bid on you or buy you because you're going to win the race later or whatever. And the race, literally, you just stand there in two dice rolls. So Bob Carpenter, General Bob Ooh, Carpenter. Here we go. Hey. <laughs> you get, Hey, you guys really bonded. General Bob Carpenter, maybe most electrifying human oh. of all time. Oh, wow. You hear me? So we were told to dress like a carnival and there's gonna be a circus happening. So I wore just a red and uh, black tank top with black shorts and my wife wore like a black dress. It was just like, okay, here we go. AJ had an entire circus master's costume on. His wife had this custom, it was, Ooh. there was people wearing hats and mm -hmm. masks and there was a lot of shit going on. General Bob Carpenter, I think he was uh, Tarzan. I think he was just, what, what, he was, he just wore. <laughs> ah, gotcha. Yeah, and that, by the way, that was like at the beginning, like Speedo bought him. Wow. And he had boots on at the beginning. And I was one of the first people to see it, and he just showed up. Bob Carpenter, he's still playing football with the Ohio State <laughs> Buckeyes, right? In that, in that, I, I heard a story. He, uh, yeah, he's, he's jumped into a few bowl practices when I let him, yeah. Put pads on oh. back in bowl practice. <laughs> what? Yeah, he put pads on. Animal. Played in bowl practice, yeah. And he, I guess he described it, he was pumped he didn't have to do uh, individual drills or whatever. Yeah. So the coach of the Ohio State Buckeyes had to go, hey, General Bob, you don't gotta do these. Yeah. <laughs> Just get ready for it. So he is, Matt, I'm, when I'm talking, he looks like a fucking RoboCop like thing. He's hey, huge. Pat, hey, one of my favorites was when, you initially, like everyone, Bob and his wife were there, they showed up, and then we're in the kitchen, and you just stared at Bob, and you're like, what? And you just kept looking at him, and then he looked at his wife, and you're like, is this, is he always this vascular? Is this just what he is? <laughs> like, you, it was awesome. You had, Bob had to feel pretty good. Bro, he looked like a superhero, okay, with how yoked he was and everything. Veins. That, and that was, he was fully clothed at that point, and then he went into like a, a phone booth, and then yeah. he came out, and he was wearing his Tarzan one sleeve, and, it, and they, I guess, who forced him to put the black tights on underneath that? Because he was going to go full thigh. Uh -huh. There's people wearing suits at this thing, <laughs> and, and Bob's just walking around this Tarzan thing, yoked out of his mind. Okay, just absolutely yoked, having a good time. He grabbed the mic five, six times, cut promos. Ooh, wow. during, during this auction thing, he was doing full ha. Oh, wow. oh yeah. Oh, I mean, it was, it was fucking electrifying. He grabbed the mic a couple other times to sell a couple other items that were definitely, you know, definitely expected him to say things that he said to 450 people live. Yeah. Uh, General Bob, is that just who you guys hire for entertainment every year? He was unbelievable <laughs> that night. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I texted him before and said, thanks for always coming. Thanks for bringing the juice, man. You really, uh, you, if you need somebody at an event that is going to not only enjoy himself, but get everyone else around them to enjoy it, uh, invite Bob. Come he had there. a good time. He had a good oh, time. Oh, yeah, ripping it up. Um, you know, there was a couple speakers, and I think this does come from being in a locker room when you're in a team meeting and you listen to people speak a lot. You know, General Bob and I had some good judgment of the speakers that were speaking at sure. the event. Doctor came up on the stage. Okay, very smart doctor because the money they're raising so much money. They did something. This doctor gave a speech that was, you know, very good, very good speech talking about uh, some sort of protons. And uh, I mean, oh, it okay, was gotcha. scientific. It was very good. Real work has been done because of this hawk thing that happens mm -hmm. at their house. Like millions of dollars have been raised, and like real, like this is a Damn. really good thing. The doctor, though, made the dreaded mistake of reading his speech. Oh, no. Can't do it in public. Me, me and Bob, just as soon as he started reading, we're like, 
come on, man. Come on, just let it hit, let it eat. Mm -hmm. And then we, we try to give it a chance, you know, as we're listening to the words coming off, they're like, oh, really good stuff. Clapped him off, this doctor is great. And then literally as he got past us, Bob goes, I gotta go tell AJ. He, I think he got up and I think he <laughs> told you, right? Is that what he got up and told you up there? Is that what he told I think he, he mentioned something about, it. yeah, reading. Yeah, right? he, he <laughs> literally, can't do it, can't come do on. It. Can't have it. Then another doctor came up and that doctor kind of, you know, hit the boom, boom, boom. It was just, uh, General Bob Carpenter is a man. I, I don't know what it would be like to be around every single day. I have no clue how how your life would be able to top itself each day, but I think General Bob Carpenter could do I mean, it. I the guy saved Big Ten football. Boom. I wish I was around him when that was happening. Oh, <laughs> so bad. We missed out on that completely. Thank you for your event, though. Thank you for the hospitality. And uh, I was thoroughly impressed with everything you had going on, AJ. Hey, 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 once again, I, we appreciate you coming, man. We're glad you had a good time as well. You, you took a selfie with the Roosters thing, and my wife's friend who runs a bunch of stuff at Roosters is so juiced. She's, she's going to start making Roosters tank tops now because of you. Ooh. I will say this about Roosters, okay? I grabbed the Rooster. He obviously had. There's a mini donut truck out there. Yeah, of, of course. course. There's a Rooster out here. There's Fried tacos. Stuff there. Spares no expense. I mean, it was, it was unbelievable. Well, there's a reason candy. why the guy who owned that island always stayed at AJ's house when well, he was in Ohio. <laughs> funny you say that because as we were flying in. Johnny Depp, he has an island. Well. Does he? Johnny Depp staying at your house? That's not the island we were talking about. That's no, the no, no, that's what Diggs was talking about. You know. You know. Now that I'm thinking back to the people that I do know that have stayed at your house, though, they had to be so impressed by that place. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. You know who I'm talking about. We do. Maybe. I don't hey, it's Chopper and my wife. They're the ones that did everything. My wife designed it all and Chopper built it. Anyways. Great house, dude. Let's move along. <laughs> Thanks for the invite. It was an honor to go. We had a blast. We got too high a couple times. <laughs> had to come back down to earth, did the whole thing. I can tell you seemed fine the whole time to me. Thank you. And that's kind of uh every single day type thing. But <laughs> whenever you get dragged into uh, not dragged, by the way. Literally, I guess I was dragged a couple times by a couple of Ohio State fans. Oh no. Yeah, Ohio. It was very Ohio, this event. A lot of scarlet right. and gray. Very Ohio. And I gave a big time OH, by the way. Yeah, nice. Did you get some? Oh, yeah. Big IO on yeah, the way back. Uh, biggest ever? Uh, not, not the biggest ever. No, somebody's probably done it bigger. AJ did it to lead off his set whenever he spoke at the beginning. Uh, wow. Wow. Yeah, he did put like three or four of them, too. Oh, so he was getting like low ovations fruit. for him. Yeah, he was, he was doing it. He was crushing it. Low-hanging fruit. <laughs> <laughs> it was not low hanging for I, I well I wasn't going to you honestly Pat you jo you made a joke you said something to me messing around about OH I was like oh you that reminds me I'm definitely gonna get to play, get people going a little bit and you did he hit them and every time by the way it seemed to get louder because there's a lot of drunks on the outskirts of the tent where he was talking and then they would like overhear the first IO it was like oh uh, shit oh. we missed one <laughs> yeah. and I was told <laughs> by uh, somebody that I could have done OH two hundred times that night and it would have been answered ferociously 200 times yeah they said tonight is a night where that will get said 1000 times it'll hit every single time which leads me to this oh you know io i'll give it to you what? Yeah! a lot of people to thank for this um <laughs> so my guys you guys stayed with me every single time i, threw I mean that's up. the last one but that's the last one most likely but i, I you definitely speech, deserve dude. you and sam that was mainly for sam actually not as much of you why are you cutting them off okay well whatever it was for it happened and we yeah. are a results oriented business yeah. so, Boom. and Go all ahead. i know is i sent out an oh and those ducks did not get left on the pond this time after thousands and thousands of attempts with the Ohio State legend who hosts the Ohio State Carnival and his Ohio State Palace has left me hanging every single time. My mom used to send up T's and P's to me every single night saying, Pat, I asked the good Lord to send you an I.O. from A.J.'s mouth tomorrow. Friends and family continued to motivate me to say those two letters that are supposed to incite action. O.H. 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 And all it led to was, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. But on this Monday, August 9th, just days after raising hundreds of thousands of dollars alongside the scarlet and gray, alongside the cult that is Ohio State, I get my first I.O. And this is a day I will never, ever forget. Thank you, AJ. Thank yeah. you, AJ. Congratulations, AJ.
Thank you guys. Wow. That was good, man. That felt good. You yeah. know what I mean? Oh, yeah. How'd that feel for you? Like, felt good. I mean, it was a good little, felt good to give it back to you, I guess. But you were, it was a good acceptance speech. It's almost like guys like Joaquin Phoenix that win an Oscar and give great speeches. Oh, yeah. That was awesome. So what did Joaquin do? The cow, the cow, he was the cow with the, the milk. milk and I remember that. It was that. good. He Not was, toxic. It wasn't toxic. Well, I just assumed that Joaquin did something I mean, milk off. sounds like it's toxic, though. Sour. Yeah. Well, it's just stolen. Well, it's, Joaquin's been good, though. Okay, good. Yeah, well, he hasn't. He hasn't been. There I assumed before. he was uh, referring to me as doing something that Joaquin did. No, well, no, 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 no. Well, he's, he's milk. He's a great he's actor. Milk. Huh? We don't like milk anymore. Well, I know milk was stolen from the mom. Yep. Mm -hmm. Without her consent. Oh. So you got to talk to the cow. You know, whenever they started. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They were just sliding in there without any. You know what I mean? It just not if you were the calf. Well, the calf was just going in there, and it was just. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What I'm thinking was happening was when the, the humans got involved, which is what Joaquin with Phoenix was alluding to, was there was a lot of... That's yeah. why we drink almond milk. That's why. Yeah, 100% uh -huh. right. Did Actually, the almonds give consent, though? Well, the almonds don't have nipples, so I don't think they have a say in the matter at all. But I do drink that milk that is like triple filtered. Oh, Ooh. hell yeah. Have to. What's it called? Fair Life? <sighs> yeah, you can separate it Lactose from free. the cow. Unbelievable. <laughs> but I think all their cows say, yeah, it's cool. They do. Yeah. They know how to communicate. That's what I like to think whenever I'm pouring the milk in. And I'm like, yeah, Cal said it was cool. And I just shut it. Yeah. Well, uh, their standards are so high. That's why they're cool with it at Fairlife because the milk is so good that the cows are like, okay, fine. At least you're doing it justice. Now, something did happen there. Yeah, their yeah. standards. Oh, no. No, they great. have been raised. Yeah, protocols yeah, are I'd, added. I'd hope so because they couldn't have got any lower. That was an artist from art situation. Bringing in fucking Mike Tyson to punch these cows in the fucking oh, head. It was unbelievable. Come on. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, it's bad. It's bad. Video is bad. Great <laughs> PR team, by the way. They spun that around pretty fast. I didn't hear this one. Well, oh, just watch the video. You'll never forget it. <laughs> they were getting all they could out of those cows, AJ. It's fucked up. Testing their chins big time. It, <laughs> what? <laughs> what the hell? Just imagine Rocky hitting the fucking frozen ones. They were doing those live ones. It Why? was Why? terrible. Why? No, it was, it was bad. I'm laughing Very right bad. now because Ty is saying what he's saying. What actually happened was Very not. Fucked up. It was yeah. disgusting, actually. You weren't laughing. Their milk got pulled. Yeah. Actually, yeah. everything got pulled, and then something happened where allegedly it wasn't one of their people that did it. It was somebody else. It was a plant. Yeah, it was a, allegedly. It was something that there was. Espionage. There, yeah, there was some like espionage filming that happened. Allegedly. I have no Wait, idea. Wait, they were hitting They were hitting cows? Yeah, it was bad. Beating the shit it, it out of bad. them. It was bad. It was bad, bad, dude. It was not good. Kill them make them milk? Does that, can they milk them faster then? No, I think it was just like. <sighs> They were treating. Mm -mm. The it was just animal cruelty at its, its highest. Yeah, it was terrible. It was absolutely terrible. But then something happened because they got back into stores because they were gone for a while or whatever. I think but it was a HIPAA violation, to be honest. I don't think that is how, that works. how that works. I don't think HIPAA covers cows. <laughs> well, it depends <laughs> on who the cow talks to because if it's a doctor, <laughs> That's true. it is HIPAA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's get to the phones. <laughs> no, no, no. Let's ask AJ about some things that happened this weekend. AJ, please. Huh? I have to ask AJ oh. why the boys weren't invited, pal. What we don't like carnivals or giving <laughs> money to good causes, pal. So that looks like Gumpy, but that is actually not Gumpy. It sounds just like him. Yeah, though. it does sound exactly like him as well. AJ, what is that all about? I don't know. I mean, I didn't know if Gumpy could travel across state lines, but for the rest of the boys, like maybe yeah. I don't know. Table was a ten. Maybe you could get this? a whole table for the boys. What the hell? We oh, should get. Nice. Hey, we were nice. We were thinking about. Um, I was part of maybe a brainstorming conversation that was happening between he, his wife, and the mm -hmm. people that do the whole thing. Uh, what next year's theme is going to be? Ooh. I think th I think you guys I think you guys should uh, I think you guys should buy a table there. Oh, that, absolutely! Yeah, well, just wherever well, the link is. How much is the table? how many? Yeah, how much are tables and how What's many tables are table? free? Uh, I don't know. We'll have to see. I'm not sure exactly. We'd like what the a couple tables. Will be next. We'd like a couple tables. We'll also offer out okay. to the crowd, too, to come. Yep. Yeah. Come on over. <laughs> Can yeah. it be Canada theme, Paul? Uh, oh, maybe, huh? Ooh, maybe a little that, Canadian. That's not a bad theme. Canadian. What do we do, then? What do you wear? Jean suits. AJ, why do you let all those people near your house, though? That is something that I have to think about, because you are it, it's incredible trust that you just... Uh, these people, mm -hmm. AJ does not know all of them. I mean, there's a lot of people that he does not know. <laughs> They're just coming to his yard, having a good time. Getting liquored up. Getting... Mm -hmm. Boozed up, yeah. Wandering around the house, pooping in the plants, and then just go—it's unbelievable. And just, ah, ten years straight, we've been doing it. It's amazing the <laughs> hospitality that you guys have for everybody. I, I, that's unbelievable to me. Bro, we started doing it in our side yard, so I think that's what kind of 
I don't know. It would just be it'd be different and weird if we tried to move it somewhere off site. I think so. Well, everyone's great. I do. Obviously, I don't know all 450 people, but I know a lot of them, and a lot of them come back every year. So there is some trust there for sure. Yeah, there has to be. I mean, I met Chops. No oh, way. Yeah, how saw, awesome. Saw Chops, the best. I don't know how much I'm allowed to talk about Chops. Am I allowed to talk about Chops? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Chops. Yeah, he's out there. So Chops. <laughs> chops. Uh, the house is obviously grand, mm -hmm. and then the side yard is where the the one side yard, by the way, yeah, of course, is where the seventy five yeah. yard fucking ten is, where everything's uh -huh. happening with all the trucks and everything like that. You know, uh -huh. the house is like kind of, you know, guarded off from it with another line of tents, but inevitably you have to walk to the front of the house to hop on a shuttle to get the hell out of there. Chops is sitting on the front porch, <laughs> on a rocking chair where there's a light maybe on the, here, uh -huh. and he, he's sitting in the, the shadows yeah. on the front porch. The only thing you see is the end of his cigar lighting up and then smoke uh -huh. going Hell in there. Yeah. And as I'm walking up to go into the house, like one of our first times in the middle of the, the event, you know, I'm walking up in there and I see that smoke and I hear somebody say like chops from further up. I'm like, oh my God. I tell Sam, I'm like, hey, this is a thing. Like this is a thing right now. That guy over there in the, in the shadows, which, by the way, is the perfect place for him to be right now. <laughs> this is exactly how I thought this was going to go. This is a legend. I go over there and go, what's up, Chops? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A full on, full conversation. I didn't, he, this guy built their house. Jeez. Just, I think, with his bare hands. I think with one hammer. Yeah, I, think, I think he did the entire thing. No, he's a legend. He's a, I don't like the people. <laughs> He said he's here to support and listen to the music. That's what he said, because there's music playing <laughs> over there, and he doesn't like the people. He's just hanging out. What a legend of a man. It was, it was an incredible event, AJ. You should be proud of yourself. I don't know how you let 400 people in your side yard and just completely cool with it, and that makes it even better. I appreciate you. Let's get to a break. We got Darius Leonard, who's very wealthy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Joining us on the other side, he got that AJ Hawk Ooh. over the weekend. Yeah, big time. 52 million guaranteed. Can't wait to chat with him on the other side of this break. How's he feel? Did he know this day was coming? Was there any moments where he thought it wasn't going to go through? Mm. How about the Fred Warner deal? We'll talk to him in about four minutes. We'll see you then. Today's event is me versus a Carolina Reaper pepper. A pepper that has what? 2.2 million Scoville uh, on average. I think it's, it's pretty much the hottest pepper in the world. In comparison, a jalapeno is? 6,000 Scoville. For every second after it is in my mouth, I don't grab this milk. Yeah. We'll give $25 to a random person in the comments section right now. $4,500 feels like a good amount to give away though. And that'd three be minutes. three minutes. This is gonna be a long three minutes. That's redder than devil's dick. <laughs> Crunch. How are we, how are we doing so far? It doesn't look too bad. I should have taken a drink of water beforehand though, because I think I had a dry mouth, had a little cotton mouth. Oh. Oh, okay. okay. Once the hiccups start, <laughs> I think I, I think you're just about done for. What's your biggest regret in life? <laughs> do, do you have two more minutes in you? Oh, I think it's just starting to hit like the peak. <laughs> the curve on this thing is just starting to go up. You are handling this much better than Bill did, though. You are, yeah. Billy Tubes was puking 10 seconds in. 130. 130. It's better by his Do you feel like you're going to puke? Oh, God, that milk looks ice cold, too. Phoenix broke my heart. Hey, one more. One more. <laughs> yep. Now we go. Now we go. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Yes, <laughs> How you feel now? A little bit better, but not great.
I was at AJ Hawk's carnival last night for charity when this man asked me if I wanted a shotgun. I was hesitant, but it's nice to know I still fucking got it, baby. Handshake. Jesus. Are you kidding? You're a kidding, though. Three sixty one. Watching that. Every day is game day for these guys. It's showtime on the Pat McAfee Show. Welcome back to that show. Hour two here on this beautiful Monday, August 9th. AJ Hawk sitting to my left. Hammered down boys, toxic table. And joining us now via FaceTime is a guy who just got a massive bag fresh out the Brinks truck. Well earned and deserved, ladies and gentlemen, the maniac, pro bowler, all pro, linebacker for the Indianapolis Colts, Darius Leonard. Yeah! Yeah! Uh, what's up, what's up? Hey, congratulations, man. Woo! Hey, appreciate it, appreciate it, man. No problem. Obviously, you probably knew that this was going to happen, or was there any moments you were a little bit worried that a long-term deal wasn't going to get done before the season started? I'm not. I mean, I, I think, no, um, we, we started talking um, early this year. Um, everything been going pretty smooth. So I kind of I knew that we was going to get it done before before the first game. So I was just I was just waiting for that moment. Chris Ballard has been very steadfast on saying, I want to build our culture around taking care of our people. Everybody saw the massive amount of money he had to spend on free agency, and he said he's got to take care of our guys first before anything. What's that relationship like with Chris Ballard now knowing that he isn't just talk? Because a lot of people say that Chris Ballard seems to be putting that into action, especially with your deal, Braden's deal, and I assume the next couple that are coming. I mean, you know, I just go to show that, you know, he believe in, you know, his guys, you know, no matter what, you know, if he drafted his guys, you know, they, we put in the work and, you know, he say that he, he paid, he paid his guys. And that's, I mean, that's what he, that's what he's doing. And you gotta, you gotta, you gotta just, you know, be thankful to have a GM to really cares about, you know, the player cares about the locker room and, you know, want to see them for their next contract and want to, want them to play for them the rest of their career. Another guy, I feel like that, uh, people have a ton of respect for in that building is obviously the owner, Jim Ursay. Like, was he heavily involved in the negotiations with your agent or how, like what, what kind of relationship do you have with him? Um, you know, I'm, I'm not too sure who was all in the negotiation process. You know, I left that up, you know, with my agents, just letting them do all the talking and, you know, I kind of stayed out of the way. And uh, Mr. Ursay, you know, we, we have, we have a good relationship. Um, you know, like some games where he come up to me or he'll call me, Hey, we need we need this one. We can't let this one slip away. Uh, so I mean, we 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 talk. We I mean, we talk. You know, he just you know he he's so prideful. You know, he, he's he's a, such a competitor. You know, he want to win at everything. Want to win by any means necessary. So you know, he just, he just shows that in every every speech. You know, every every time we talk to the team. There's some injuries happening over there. Now, your team, the core, is so good. You guys have grown. You started out good. You've grown into becoming great. Last year, you get into the playoffs, obviously bounced out. But it feels like the core of that team is growing older and older. And it's almost like time to really burst out and have a big-time play. A lot of stumbling here early. You were in there. Uh, Carson, obviously. Quentin. Something's being said about uh, DeForest Buckner. Is everything going to be all right? How's the mindset? How's the attitude? Is this early on? We can still bounce back. What are we still winning a Super Bowl? Because I put big money on this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
Hey man, I think I think we'll be fine. You know, they say um, every time you want to strive for greatness, you know, they say you got to go through a little bit of adversity, and you know, it's still early. You know, the season hasn't even started yet. We got to wait a month before the first game. You know, so now everybody, you know, can get you know get their bodies healthy, get right, and then you know, I mean, it's camp. You know, you got to think about that too. You know, we we haven't been playing or practicing football since you know maybe January. You know, out there physically out there, so you know your body's not used to it. So you know you. You used to seeing, you know, guys getting banged up a little bit in camp. So luckily, you know, you getting the injuries early. Hopefully, you know, they can maintain and get right. And you know, we we got we got we got to go that we want to reach. You know, we want to we want to hold that Lombardi Trophy up at the end of this end of this season. And I think that we got the team for it. I think I read somewhere that you're uh, buying a bunch of land down in South Carolina, taking care of your money. Is that the first move? What was the? Did you get yourself a watch or anything kind of smaller that you can see immediately, or are you kind of holding off on all that with this big ass bag you just got? <laughs> no, my, my, my first, my first purchase is probably just gonna be you know the land, you know, just get my house and everything situated. Uh, that's that's about it, man. Just taking take care of the family. Um, I got a couple of community service events that I'm gonna put on, so. You know, just trying to, you know, save my money, do it, do it the right way. Uh, like, as of right now, what I just ate for lunch is a Lunchable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're, never change, dude. That's amazing. Do you ever look in the mirror and think to yourself, from that tiny town in South Carolina, which I got a chance to watch and follow along via your social media. Hey, these dudes are rolling around in ATVs up to the goddamn <laughs> gas station. Uh -huh. Hey, we're, we're talking like out, out there, like country boy, country boy out there. Now you just got 52 million guaranteed in the NFL. Hey, there was an Isaac Bruce speech, obviously, where he said somebody called him or texted him a couple of days before the NFL draft when he was coming out and said the NFL ain't interested. Now he, said, he actually gave a flex and said, you're still alive. I prayed for you to be alive to say, uh, how do you like me now or whatever. I assume you had a lot of that. And whenever this contract gets signed, was there any of those moments where it was like, you know what? Went through a lot of shit here, but I'm able to take care of everybody because of my passion. Did you have that moment yet? Will you have that moment or anything like that? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, you think about it. You know, like you said, I come from Lakeview. You know, I graduated with uh, 60, I think maybe 63 uh, students. Um, I think four of my classmates are passed away. Um, my brother passed away. Um, you know, there's a lot of people, you know, you know, that's in the streets, uh, didn't go to college, stuff like that. And for me to be one of the ones, you know, to make it out and, you know, uh, live, live my dream, you know, I'm just thankful for that. And, you know, when you think about, you know, all the negative comments with uh, Bleacher Report, you know, being the worst draft pick there and, you know, all the matting ratings or, the, you know, the Pro Bowl snub rookie season, uh, still, you know, don't be considered as one of the best linebackers in the league. Um, you know, so when this happened, you know, it's just like, okay, I got to continue to prove them on because, I mean, I know Jim Irsay, Chris Ballard, and everybody at the coach organization believed in me. You know, they believed in me since day one. So now it's like, okay, I got to continue to show that, you know, I am who I am and let the people just continue to just doubt me and just let it just be more fuel to the fire and keep that chip on my shoulder. They're paying you allegedly for what you're going to do because that's when you're going to receive the, the money or whatever. But everything you have done has been magic to watch, man. You are you're a hell of a player. You fucking fly around. Yeah. <laughs> the, energy level, the energy level is just insane. It's absurd. I can't wait to watch and see what you continue to do. Go ahead, Ty. Darius, you just alluded to it a little bit right there. Uh, and I like when we've had you on the show in the past, like you've talked about how, you know, you put chips on your shoulders. Do you ultimately do you give a shit about like the Madden stuff? Because I feel like a lot of that has come out more and more. And it's like you see it, you know yourself like, OK, that's bullshit. You know, I'm incredibly underrated. Like, is that something you act you actually care about or not really? I mean, yes. I mean, I do just because I'm a competitor. You know, you want to be the best at everything. And. You know, I don't even play video games, but just for the ratings and everything, <laughs> you know, it, it makes you mad because you, you know what you put on the field and you know that, that you're, for one, how I don't even have a, a, a super, what is it, the edge factor? And I, I think I can change the game a lot, you know, I don't understand that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's just stuff like that. It, it, it just piss you off when you, when you see people who don't even do what you do or edge factors or in the 90s or something like that. It makes you mad, but you know, I just, you know, it, it is what it is. That's why I would, I mean, I would never buy Madden. So hey, it's cool. <laughs> I love that you're in a boycott situation. I respect that because Madden is one of the only times where a number is actually given 
to each and every single player. So the layman who might not know the Colts that well is going to go off of what Madden thinks or what Madden says. So somebody who doesn't know the maniac or has ever seen Darius Leonard play football, their only knowledge of him is what a Madden ratings adjuster gives him. <laughs> so Darius Leonard saying, I think that is bullshit. It is not petty. It is actually him saying, this is bullshit because <laughs> you're giving out, you're, like for instance, I never played video games, but my brother and all his friends played. So whenever I got into a video game just like you i've never played they were like pat man god you're like, oh, they got you slower than janikowski <laughs> like you know like that type of stuff i'm like who does they're like a mad so i actually told the madden person to go fuck themselves i assume you potentially have done nearly the same it's only matter yeah, it's crazy because that's a, that's, a, that's a true story because after i think it was after my rookie season and you know i think i, I think i was like an 85 after my no 84 my rookie season and it was so many other linebackers who I outplay. So then my uh, my agent was like, "Hey, I got the guy numbers. You want to talk to him?" I said, "Of course." <laughs> so, hey, I called him and I asked him. I asked him, you know, what was the difference? Um, you know, how this guy's higher than me, stuff like that. But they could they could never give me an explanation. And then they always say, you know, uh, they're trying to say, you know, you're you ran a four seven. I said, "Hold on, cause I, you know, I got hurt when I ran my forty. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I said, I think I'm pretty fast. I'll be going sideline to sideline. Then I asked them, then I, then I say something about being in coverage. So then I told them to, you know, to find, find some film where I'm man to man on the tight end and running back where I get scored on. And they couldn't do that. So I don't know, man. I, I just feel like it's, you know, more propaganda because, uh, you know, with the media, you know, a lot of people would just say some things in the media and then people would just go run with it just because they saw it. So I think that's what it is. Well, hey, listen, you got the bag now, so. <laughs> Madden rating don't mean a goddamn thing. I mean, at all. You deserve it, though. Um, this, let's get back on track talking about this team that you are a part of building the incredible culture that it currently has. Quentin Nelson obviously going to be out for a bit. Carson going to be out for a bit. That defense, though, I assume you guys don't really care about the offensive side because the big question going into the season was, who the hell is going to be the quarterback? Phillip Rivers is now coaching in high school. Carson Wentz comes in. Is he broke or not? What is your entire philosophy, and what's the defense? Uh, mindset when everybody worries about who's going to be the quarterback, who's going to be quarterback, because defense is what top three in the league. Any given? Oh, man. Go I mean, me personally, man, just being on the defense side of the ball, and you know, you you watch the last couple of Super Bowls, you know, you always think about you know defense winning championships, um, and you know, in my mind, you know, we got to step up defensively. We got to be more consistent. We got to make sure that we shut teams down, and that's what you know we got the guys in the room to do that. So. We got to go out there and perform. And then, you know, you think about, you know, the offense side of the ball, it is, okay, how many times can we go three and out to give the offense more opportunities to score? So that's the mindset that we have. And, I mean, we, we believe in anybody who's who's back there, you know, throwing a rock, handing it off or whatever. Because, I mean, like you, we got the best offensive line. We got the best backfield. And we got the great skill guys on the outside. So we got all the tools there. And uh, I mean, we, so if, when Carson comes back, I think that, you know, he's going to surprise a lot of people. And I think that we're this coach organization, this coach team is going to definitely surprise some people. Hey, Pat mentioned uh, DeForest Buckner earlier, and I just, what, what's it like to have that guy? Like when you plugged him into your defense in the middle of that D line, how much help was he, and how fun is it to watch how disruptive he is? Hey, man, that's a, hey, it's amazing. It's a, <laughs> hey, it's a sight to see. Hey, I love it. You know, there's there's no, there's no such thing as a single block. Then they jump up to the linebackers quick. No sir, you better see nine nine first. <laughs> <laughs> and then, <laughs> so I mean, he's he's just a monster, you know. He he's huge. He's I mean, but he's quiet. That's the crazy part, you know. He's he's very polite. You know, he don't really say too much. But when he's on the field, you know, he's just a complete competitor. And you know, like I, you remember that Viking play, man. He threw that offensive lineman down like you know his family wasn't in the stands, or you know, what I'm saying <laughs> it, it, it's crazy. Then in practice, you see him like this whole. Well, you know me, I'll be I've been out, so you know I'm just standing around watching. And just seeing how he's in the backfield almost every play, you know, it's, it's just phenomenal to watch. And I'm glad that, you know, Chris Ballard and, you know, everybody got him here because when, I mean, once he came here, you know, the defense, you know, we got better in the run, in the run, uh, the run fits, and we got better um, in the um, passing game too because of his pass rush up front. 
That defense has been awesome to watch and grow. Obviously, you lose edge rusher with Houston going on. You bring in Quiddy Pay. Uh, what are your thoughts on him as a human? How's he fit into the culture? Because I remember we had you on, I think it was during free agency time, and there were some big names out there, and I think your exact words were, if they come to Indianapolis, they better be ready to fucking work, basically, is what you said. Like, you come here, you better be ready to work. That's what we do. How has Quiddy kind of uh, fit in with the group, and what are your thoughts on some of the young guys? Oh man, you know, Quiddy, man, he's he don't say a word. <laughs> this is, I mean, it's, it's crazy. Like I probably I probably heard maybe heard him say maybe four or five words, and you know that that's it. But you know the one thing about Quiddy, you know he's getting better each day, and you know he's you know he's doing what he's supposed to do, and he's making plays. That's the, that's the good thing about it. And you know when you outside looking in, especially for a linebacker, you know you see both of your starting defensive end with Danico Autry and Justin Houston leaving. You go, okay, now in your mind, okay, who's going to be the defense at the end? And now with uh, Quiddy coming in and he's practicing the way he's practicing, you know, I just hope it can translate to the to the field because, I mean, he's been having a great camp so far. Um, and like you said, other other um, young cats, you know, they're, they're coming in, they're doing a good job as well. When are you getting back out? Yeah, you don't have to tell you. You'll get yourself in some shit. <laughs> yeah. Are you close? Are you all right? You're going to be back? No, I'm good, man. I'm good, man. Hopefully, hopefully this week. Hopefully, you know, I'll put it back on the cleats and they help me this week. Okay, awesome. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you for not getting yourself in shit either because you coming on the show is good for us. We really appreciate you joining us right now, by the way. Connor, go ahead. Yeah, Darius, you're a massive advocate for mental health and everything that happened a couple weeks ago with Simone Biles kind of brought that conversation back up. Has that ever happened to you where you kind of almost doubt yourself and your just natural ability and then you, it kind of affects you on the field? Um, I'm not going to say that, you know, it got to a point where it doubted my athletic ability. Um, no, because... When when I play football, that is my safe haven. That is my place for, you know, the world stops. I don't think about any of my problems. So there, you know, I, I don't I don't I don't have that had well I never had that problem for me, but with the mental health, you know, you never know. Well, I mean it hit people a whole lot different and you know, it, it can take a toll on your body. So whenever, you know, your your body telling you that you or your mind is telling you, you know, you, you gotta stop and, you know, get your mind situated, you, you gotta listen to it. Because if not, you're going to drive yourself insane and you're going to drive yourself crazy. And, you know, she was in the Olympics. And for her to say that, you know, that's something something really is going wrong, going wrong. And people got to understand that, you know, we're we are athletes, but we're human before anything. You know, we, we have the same problems that a lot of people are going through. And a lot of people don't really realize that. Like when I remember the, uh, the Kyrie situation, when Kyrie said, I'm taking a step away from basketball to uh, focus on my mental. And he got so much crap because of that. But people got to understand if you if your mind is gone, everything else is gone. Because once you lose your mind, it's, it's over with. People got to understand you only got one mind and you got to take care of it. The kick in the stigma foundation or, or program, basically, that mm -hmm. you, Mr. Ursay, and the others that the Colts are running uh, about mental health is just phenomenal. Basically, everything you have done as an Indianapolis Colt has been phenomenal. It's been awesome to watch, man. What do you got the rest of the day? Oh man, I had a I had a long night last night, you know, <laughs> celebrating with the people. So <laughs> <laughs> I got say I got my I got my pedia light here. So you know, Lunchable. I'm a massage. I got a massage at two o'clock, and then after that, I'm just gonna sit down, relax, and hopefully take a nap. <laughs> All right. Well, enjoy yourself. Can't wait to see you back. Thank you for your time. Congrats on the bag, ladies and gentlemen. $52 million. <laughs> Hey, congrats to your agent, too. I saw him flexing a little bit because people were talking shit about him being a mixed martial arts guy or something like that. Getting oh, that yeah, man. You know, man, a lot of people don't A lot of people don't believe that, you know, he, he has the brain to do what he does for the NFL side, you know, because, I mean, yes, he got a lot of MMA guys. So it, it was great to get that deal done for, for him, too, man, because now, you know, you can make, now he can really tell people to shut the hell up and let me do my job. So I, I love it. I love it. Congrats to him as well, and to you, ladies and gentlemen, the maniac, Darius Leonard. Yeah! Thank you, Darius. Yes, sir, no problem. Thank you all. Hey, good for him, AJ. Yeah. What, was, what was that like the day you signed uh, in your, your $50 million guaranteed day? I never had anything near that. What? Yeah. Come on. That's CBA? Yeah. Lying. I tell you what, though, like, that sound, his schedule for today sounds amazing. Celebrate last night. Come on here. Get a massage, then take a nap. Like, hey, that's a good schedule for me, especially during training camp. <laughs> Eat a lunchable. Yeah, I think. It's, <laughs> yeah. So I think it's their day off today. It's got to be. Yeah. Yeah. So he joined us on their day off, which is Very awesome. Nice. Yeah, because I think Frank was there last night with Peyton. Oh. That's just like uh, <clears throat> BA 
was up there. Tom Brady was up there. Yeah. Frank was up there with Peyton. <laughs> and everybody's uh, – Clyde was up there, obviously. Yeah. A couple teams' training camp schedules did get kind of uh, <laughs> changed, I believe, due to – previous success but hell of a hey it was awesome it was absolutely awesome to kind of watch that whole thing let's get to the five hour ah no no we hey, who's his agent who's Darius' his agent i know? see oh. i seen his uh at m-a-l-k-i-w Mal- malky yes i think so yeah. i didn't know I, I didn't know how to do it i didn't know what to say i didn't malky, know say. i don't is it malky i forget his last name but malky is a guy i've heard a lot of fighters talk K-A-W-A. about malky m-a-l-k-i's first name k-a-w-a is his last name kawa Malky Kawa. I don't think you say it like that, but yeah, Malky, I've heard that name. So that's his football. Is it is Darius his only football guy? Uh, my, it's definitely his biggest, I would assume. I, I don't know if it's the only one, but I saw him put out a tweet that was like, fuck you, and I like that too. I'm like, all right. <laughs> yeah. So even the agents out there competing, I'm a big fan of that. Let's talk about Michael Thomas and the New Orleans Saints, AJ. This is a, hey. Whew. Okay, so last year, to talk about this, we have to talk about last year. You know what I mean? We yeah. have to talk about last year. Last year, Michael Thomas got hurt. He didn't get hurt. He was hurt. He's not practicing. They're not dressing him. Sean Payton's giving interesting answers before the games about him. He's doing something. Then it comes out that he came back through a, a terrible injury to play at the end of the season because he knew this was Drew Brees' last go. I'm like, oh, so Michael Thomas likes Drew Brees. What's going on here? Then there's a surgery that happens a couple weeks ago out of nowhere. Sean Payton gives a full press conference like, there was no miscommunication. We are not happy about this, basically. Then Michael Thomas takes the social media and says, basically, since I'm being quiet, I'm saving everybody else's reputation or something like that. Then there's reports that you they try to damage your reputation. You save theirs by not telling your side of the story at Can't Guard Mike. Is he talking about himself? Is he talking about somebody else's situation? We don't know. It is easy to kind of jump to the case that Michael Thomas and Sean Payton seem to be going through something. Sean Payton said, I'm not doing press conferences based on social media. He already answered this entire thing it's getting wild down there they got no quarterback james is getting beat up by those blocking pad things Mm -hmm. he's bouncing back on the other side of that they had to change their entire roster for the salary cap they got no drew Brees. sean payton and michael thomas seem to be at odds will lutz has some core injury he's an absolute superstar kicker he's going to be out for a while they're saying is is all hell broken loose for the new orleans saints aj hawk it sure seems that way, and hopefully for them, like they can get it all figured out before the regular season starts. Now they have a lot of football questions to answer, I guess. But with this Michael Thomas situation, is he there? Like I know he had surgery. Do we know where he's rehabbing? Like I wonder if he's in the facility every day. How's it work? Well, and he didn't answer calls for three months, allegedly from mm-hmm. the That's team. That's a weird thing. Like that had to build. Like if if he truly didn't answer calls from anyone for three months, like. I would imagine, did they check on him? Did they make sure he was doing all right? Did they send someone to his house? So at Pro Football Talk, Mike Floria reports Michael Thomas ignored calls from Saints coaches, trainers for three months. So, Bruce, what about texts? Hold on. Maybe, so, he got, maybe he texts them back. Yeah, maybe he's not a caller. Diana Rossini, though, congrats on the baby. Yeah, congratulations. This weekend, had no idea. Congratulations no to her. She's normally insider for Saints, right? Yep. She, she normally has pretty good info. Florio, though, Saints do training camp in West Virginia. Maybe there is some sort of – I don't know why Florio would be the only one that knows this aside from anybody else unless it's Thomas's team potentially telling Florio. Whatever the case, it seems like that would be what has happened. So aside from Kamara and studs, they have some studs on that defensive side. What was Michael Thomas' situation looming and who knows how that's all going to work out. Will Lutz, the kicker, being out. No, Thomas Morstead, new punters on – the Saints are a massive question mark. What's their over under? It was nine, or it was nine. When I bet the under, when the Michael Thomas news came out last week, I will find the new one if there is one. Yeah, because listen, Tom Brady shows up, and what the teams just start falling. Get Julio yes. Jones the fuck out of here. Kanye's moving into the stadium. The Saints are. I mean, what is going Still on? Still at down? nine. Still over under at nine. The NFC South. Uh, Bucks are minus 185, Saints plus 330, Falcons plus 700, and then the Panthers plus 950, who are still allegedly in, in on the Deshaun Watson sweepstakes if everything gets handled off the field. That is, the Saints have been the pinnacle right now of football for a good part of the last decade and a half, two decades. Might hey, be... good news. Go good news for Sean Payton. They have a nice warm-up game against the Packers week one to yeah. really try to get everything flushed out. Hey, 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 your guy, dude slinging it. I don't know how often he just buries balls into those nets. Mm-hmm. 
I'm not seeing any misses, and I don't know how often he's taking shots of those and people are posting him missing. Because I would assume if he misses, a lot of people hate would be haters. They'd oh, want to yeah. post those as well. Does he just make it every time he tries to throw at that thing, Aaron? No, I don't think he – I mean, they throw from different distances, from, from deep. No, they don't, none of them make it every time. I mean, it's kind of – it's pretty rare to make them from deep. Bro, he's burying it and then looking at the crowd. Are you not oh, entertained? Yeah. <laughs> Wet ball, too. It was I, I, pouring. It was pouring out are there. Are you not entertained? Yeah. These stooges didn't even want to listen to me is what he's doing in all these practices. I just told you all what I've been fucking dealing with. And remember, I am still the MVP. I am still the guy. I love it. Yeah. Now watch this throw. Hey, speaking of those odds, Packers are minus 145 to win that division. I don't think that's, I don't think that's enough. Minus 200, Shane. I mean, At least. who knows if Cousins is going to be on the field this year or not. Uh, he's, he said he'd bring plexiglass into the room if he has to. Yeah. Kirk Cousins, and, uh, I mean, that's definitely a situation that we should look at. The governor of Maryland has gotten involved with the Lamar Jackson situation. So <laughs> he's going to have to. They missed so many games. Sorry, got it twice, missed eight days. That vaccination COVID situation is nowhere near ending. Oh. Especially now that the Olympics are over, there's nothing really else to talk about. Preseason games are going to be shit after one quarter. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's going to be looking for stuff to talk about. That's going to be it. Hour three is on the other side. We got Ryan Krauser, gold medal, world record setter, yeah. shot putter from Portland, Oregon, who had Cowboy on and represents Texas University. Then Jay Glazer, big third hour on the other side. About 10 seconds to the hard out, AJ. Anything to say to the people? No, I'm good. Thank you. Nailed it. Can you get Axel in there to say something? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You set me up for 10 seconds, six seconds. Like, you want me to, what do you want me to do? You missed it. You hit it, Axel. Yeah. You actually Boy, hit it. Great work. work. We're back in six minutes. We'll see you then. What do you want me to do? I just saw a picture of you getting out of, I think, a 757 that is from Jim Ursay. What was that? And have you ever been in that plane before? I, I thought it was like a, the team plane. <laughs> to fly all of the Indianapolis Colts. <laughs> I, uh, literally, I mean, it's got the logo on it, uh, Pat, and uh, it was awesome, but hey, look, that's just Jim. Pat, I had a wonderful 14 years there. It, I, it's obviously the team that I wanted to play for always. I, I understood the, the, the decision he had to make and no hard feelings, and uh, for him to send his plane to fly me and my son down here, uh, that was a great, great gesture. A lot of room for me and Marshall. We were throwing the football. <laughs> <laughs> So pretty uh pretty uh pretty cool experience pretty cool father-son weekend by the way as he's moving from event to event right now <laughs> you are the best dude where are you headed right now i'm going to the game i'm going to the game i got lynch i got fanica i got these guys in the background so, boys uh, how you congratulations yeah. congratulations boys all right peyton oh hey there he is marshall i hope you enjoyed that plane pal Hey, Peyton, last thing here. Um, you talking to Tom Brady, you becoming friends with him. Uh, it was interesting to watch. Oh, yeah, take the photo. Take the photo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we will wrap this up. Well, I'll tell you, Pat, um, I don't think anybody can do what, what Tom has done. Look, I know how hard it was for me to get on the same page with my receivers, learn a new system, learn new coaches. But I had a full off season. I was injured. I was rehabbing. The fact that Tom has done this in a COVID pandemic off season, no time to meet with his receivers. He met with his coaches illegally by breaking into Byron Leffert's house. <laughs> uh, so besides that, uh, it's been incredible what he's been able to accomplish. And uh, he deserves all the credit. His leadership is, is what put the Bucks in this game today. And uh, I have great respect for him because I know how hard it is. But uh, he deserves all the credit. Hey, how did you know Red 18 was coming? Pat, I mean, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you telling that story and, and just growing the legend. That was about the 18th time I tried it. I was <laughs> 17 going into that. And, you know, when it doesn't hit, you just keep walking. And nobody ever really tells you about it. So when it hit, I was as surprised as you were. And uh, the reaction from, from some of the... Some of the good old folks there in the casino that night was uh, pretty special. Well, I appreciate you doing that. You made me and those folks in the casino a bunch of money. Congrats on the Hall of Fame nod. Thank you for spending time. Enjoy yourself at the game, Peyton. Pat, thanks, pal. I appreciate you. The, sh you. the Sheriff Hall of Famer, Peyton. Oh, yeah!
I was told by Del Curry, Scotty Pippen struggles on a golf course. Right? Right. I was told at that thing that I'm going against Scotty Pippen the next day, match play, heads up, one on one Scotty Pippen. So we decide, like, okay, we probably have a couple drinks, stay at the casino a little <laughs> bit longer than we should. <laughs> Representing the NFL out of the Shoeless Golf Club of America, Pat McAfee. His opponent representing the NBA, Scotty Pippen. You know what I mean? This guy's got six rings. Yeah. He's a fucking Hall of Famer. <laughs> but today he's going to play against me. And then I start seeing Scotty hit some shots that are just like starting to come together. And I'm like, wait a fucking minute. I think I was lied to. <laughs> we were lied to yesterday. We were told Scotty Pippen was a terrible golfer. Probably Scotty fucking Pippen. Going in the back nine, I think I was down one. Like we were really, like we were battling. But I started making putts. And Scotty Pippen went ahead and got real hot. I mean, <laughs> real fucking hot. I was down three with seven left. And I looked right in the camera, and I go, Start down three, with like seven holes left. Scotty Pippen's about to get this work. Scotty Pippen from 190 yards out just fucking dunks it. <laughs> <laughs> fucking boom, bang, and then walks up to the green, gets the ball, camera's on him, and he goes, Pippen ain't easy. <laughs> oh, <I'm kidding> <laughs> Down four with six left after Scotty Pippen just chips him from fucking 400 yards out. I, mean, I was fucking demoralized. Uh, Pippen yeah. ain't easy. By the way, best he's ever performed at golf because I'm around. Better teammate than Jordan. Yep. People forget. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Oh yeah, I told Dell. I was like, Dell, what the fuck are you lying to me? He was like, Well, I saw it yesterday. He was not great. And Greg Anthony told me, and I was like, Dell, he. Buried me, Del Curry. <laughs> he buried me. He was like, Pippen ain't easy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, baby, it's time to celebrate. Talking about a shotgun of beer after he had beat me, obviously. I, I like teach him how to do it. Yeah, put a hole in there. It might spread a little bit, so. Yeah, yeah, so you're going to go here, and then you're going to open and flip up. Does that make sense? Congrats on winning the NBA a couple of times. Blah, 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 blah. And being an incredible golfer. <laughs> Cheers, we say. Hey, 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 hey. Damn. Okay, That's Scotty. the best Bud Light I ever had. <laughs> hey, there's no stock in the three years ever. You're right. <laughs>
a golf clap became a standing ovation. <laughs> oh, <it should. laughs> Just to potentially, as it should have been. You're 100% right. Uh, joining us now, ladies and gentlemen, out of Oregon, just became a Olympic gold medalist and a world record holder, breaking his own goddamn record. A uh, guy who throws 16-pound rocks further than any human in the history of throwing 16-pound rocks, which I do believe began as soon as they found a rock that weighed 16 pounds. Mm -hmm. yes. Has to be thousands and thousands of years, the greatest of all time. United States of America... Gold medal winner at the Olympics, the powerhouse, Ryan Cross. Yeah! Yeah! What's going on, man? Um, not much. Thanks for having me. Hey, Krauser, quick question. All right. You might be the most explosive human to ever walk Earth uh, with the ability to throw that thing further than ever. The first time you broke your own record, you had a hat in your eyes. You couldn't even see anything. <laughs> Did you ever play football? Was it always shot put? I know it's in the family. Shot putting's in the family. But was that the only thing you ever focused on, track and field? Because it looks like you could have done whatever the hell you wanted. Yeah, so I played football uh, growing up. I was actually a quarterback. I was tall and skinny. And definitely not built like a lineman when I was playing football. And so I played uh, defensive back. I was free safety and cornerback on defense and then QB on offense. And then uh, after I really like around freshman year high school, I quit playing football to focus on fall basketball. Uh, I was playing fall basketball kind of in that fall ball. Uh, and basketball is really one of my main sports all through high school. Uh, I was I was pretty talented in basketball conference player of the year as a junior and then focused on track when I went to college uh, at the University of Texas. Got it, AJ. What was the, uh, the experience like when you got there to the Olympics? I guess not having really fans there, like was there like any extra anxiety or nerves getting there? And did it feel like, okay, hey, this is it. This is the biggest stage in the world. Yeah, so it, it definitely had a different feel. Uh, at this Olympics than my past uh, world champs or Olympics. I'd say the biggest thing with this one is just it was very stressful. And the stress that's, for me, hard to deal with is stuff that I can't control because that stuff you want to let go uh, and not let it kind of weigh on you. But when, and I mean, it was no one's fault. It's just the status of, of the world right now is uh, with COVID, you just every morning you take a COVID test and you would just pray your phone didn't go off uh, that day. <laughs> if it did, you're, you're pulled out. If you get COVID, even if you're asymptomatic, even if you're vaccinated, you're out of the games uh, and you're locked in a hotel room for seven days. And so that was like the stressful part. Every morning, COVID tests and then like any notification, like you didn't want to look at your phone at all. Um, and for any athlete, that's the absolute worst thing. If you go out there and compete and have the worst day of your life, at the Olympics, that sucks, but at least that's on you. Like that was under your control. So the number one thing I wouldn't wish on any athlete is that text saying, "Hey, like, you're you're getting locked down." Uh, so that was that was the most stressful part of this Olympics. It, as far as fans not being there and the stands being uh, empty, it's the it's, it's still the Olympics. Uh, I mean, it's if you can't get up for the Olympics, the and even without fans, like you might want to reevaluate what sport you're in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the waking up and getting the dreaded COVID test every morning and then potentially getting a text that says, all of your hard work is all for naught. Actually, you're getting locked down in a hotel for seven days all by yourself and then flown home. And everything you've just done for an extent of your five years now is all for naught. In the shot putting world, and forgive me for not knowing enough about this, you said world championships and previous Olympics. Is there like a week to week league where you uh, can dominate folks? Is there, How does it work? And is the Olympics just basically the pinnacle? That's a Super Bowl of, of everything you do. Yeah, so... Olympics is, is definitely like our Super Bowl. Um, we have what we call majors. Uh, so you have every, odd, usually every odd year is a world championship year. And then every four years is an Olympics. And so the major for this year was the Olympics. Next year's major is world championships. And then in between, um, we have what is, what is the Diamond League. And so that's around the world. Um, 
so before two or eight competitions, depending on the year, depending on the event. So like this year, Shot has four uh, to qualify for the Diamond League point Diamond League final, and it's based on a points race. And uh, so that's every year we have a Diamond League final, and you kind of fill it in with meets in between. So it might be some lower level pro meets, uh, like Grand Prix style. Or I've done a couple all-comer meets this year where I just threw at uh, the University of Arkansas, uh, both indoors and outdoors. You beat everybody at all these things all the time. <laughs> I, I do my best. <laughs> <laughs> the way the commentators were speaking, though, when you came up, they were like, ladies and gentlemen, this show is about to fucking start. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is that a lot of pressure? I assume it is. At all these events, you're the guy. Especially now, you've broken your own record like three times. And I'm only saying this because it seems to happen in the Olympics and these types of sports. Phelps was like, every time he got in a race, he's got to win. Usain Bolt, we talked to him. Every time he's in a race, he has to win. Simone Biles, anytime she got into an event or did anything, the expectations were she's going to win. I think, and I don't know enough about you or shot putting, but you are in that same exact vein whenever it comes to shot putting if the commentators were speaking in the proper fashion. Do you know that? Does that propel you to work harder? Is there any thoughts about the whole, like, hey, I am kind of carrying shot put right now? That's how they were talking. Like, hey, this guy is setting the, the standard for shot putting. Do you think about that, or do you try to block all that shit out? Uh, I mean... I try to block most of it out. I, the, the way I approach it is, I mean, anytime I'm going out to compete, I can control what I do and how well I do it. Uh, I can't control what the other guys throw. Uh, so my main focus is throw as far as I can. And so I feel like I actually have less stress on myself now uh, than I did pre-world record because before I knew I could throw the world record and I knew it was possible, but it was like okay, I know I can do it. Now let's try to make it happen. And I would get a little bit tight. I think there was at least six different competitions where I was expecting to break the world record going into it. And it just didn't happen. Like I've set myself up really well. I'm in a good place to do it. And it just didn't quite let it happen. So now that I have the world record, it's like I'm just competing against myself, which is exactly where I want to be. I want to walk out there and throw a personal best and say, I'm the best I've ever been personally today i'm better than i was yesterday and hopefully tomorrow i'll be better than this uh but that kind of takes the stress off because i'm not worrying about the other guys will throw if i go out there and throw the best i've ever done i i can't be disappointed with that so i'm worrying about myself when i go out to compete and i'd say the pressure is actually less now that i'm now that i have the world record because i'm not trying to chase anyone i'm just trying to chase myself that's awesome that's a great way to look at it i hope you maintain that for the rest of your life as you can see I'm sure by watching and looking right now, me and AJ, AJ, let him know a little bit. Me and AJ. I'm good. AJ, <laughs> AJ could you please? Okay. By the way, I saw AJ okay. in real life this weekend. Uh-huh. <laughs> Huge. Yeah, I don't know. Huge. Huge. Yeah. It is absolutely. What do you do? Just explosive exercises all the time? Or are you just hang cleaning and snatching all day? It looks like that is basically what the shot put is, is just who can be the most explosive human on earth. Is that what you wake up and try to do? Or am I missing something? Because you are a monster monster who spins so gracefully former quarterback it, what is the workout plans and is that every single day yeah so we i lift uh four to five days a week and throw the same number uh so i'm staggered so like three days a week or double uh throw and lift and then the other ones are, are standalone workouts and i feel like for shot there's kind of three the three sports that you kind of draw comparisons to so you have to be dynamic and you have to be fast. And so in terms of that, we almost train like a really short sprinter, like just the block start portion of what a sprinter would do. Uh, Cause we don't have to, it's quick, it's all uh, reactive. And so you're not training like hundred meter sprint. You're just training pretty much to run the fastest 20 meter that you possibly can. Got it. Uh, so that's kind of the dynamic aspect. And then you definitely have the strength portion. So. You know, all everyone out there has a has a big bench, a big squat, uh, and solid Olympic lift. So that all, that part of the training kind of resembles an offensive lineman. You, everyone's over pretty much three hundred pounds. Uh, like if you're three hundred, oh, you're on the small side right now. And uh, so that's kind of like like you took an offensive lineman, combine him with a sprinter, 
and then add in the rotational aspect because we are rotational athletes. And so some of that, uh, I work at the University of Arkansas as a volunteer coach and work with baseball a little bit. So a lot of my rotational training kind of resembles what a, a major league slugger would be uh, from the baseball perspective. So you kind of combine those three and you'll have a pretty good shot putter. Ryan, I don't know you well enough. I hope to one day we can share belt buckles and cowboy hats. Mm-hmm. I hope so. <laughs> one day we can. But has anybody ever told you now that you're this incredible freak dynamic athlete that if you're 300 pounds, you're on a small side? Can Hey, couldn't you right now? Now, I'm not saying anything. You're going to be the greatest shot putter of all time. You do you. Okay, I'm just. But isn't right now a great time for Ryan Krauser to potentially go. <laughs> <laughs> and then bang and then just get 200 million dollars <laughs> isn't that something is that it feels like you have and that's all i could really watch while you were throwing because I, I didn't fully understand shot putting i i honestly i've no idea how is it one of the original sports because the history in your family is massive right in this is shot putting or my did i miscalculate that or, or hear hear that wrong yeah so my uh family definitely has a track and field background uh, started with my grandpa. He threw javelin in the fifties uh, when he was the ar- in the army, and was def- was a very competitive javelin thrower. And then my dad and my two uncles were also track and field athletes. So my dad was a most specialized in discus. My uncle uh, Dean was shot put, and my uncle Brian was uh, javelin thrower. And he was actually an Olympian in eighty eight and ninety two. Jeez. Jeez. And then twenty sixteen. My cousin Sam uh, was my roommate in Rio in the Olympics. He was a javelin thrower. Oh, so your family just throws shit. Like, hey, this is what <laughs> yeah. we do. We just throw things better than ever. I'm not telling you. I love what you're doing for the shot book game, and you're changing it all. But every once in a while on those four- to five-day lifts you got, just, I mean, if you – it feels like yeah. you Whoa. are built – to be a tackle that pay, they pay a lot of money to. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, Ryan, was there anyone uh, in this Olympics that you got to meet that was uh, someone you were looking forward to that you actually were uh, wanted to uh, meet? Uh, so that's the tough thing about this Olympics is that it was very uh, limited on exposure and the way that the as, – as far as just intermingling and meeting new people. So it was really regimented, and there was some – not that the rules were super strict, but for me, it was just like, I've got to limit my exposure to as little people as I can. And so it was like, I was in my room, I was at the venue training, and then it was grab food real quick and back to my room just because I wanted to make sure I got to compete. Um, Did you sleep so that- on that cardboard bed? Were you on a cardboard bed? No, I was not. They actually uh, brought in some bigger bed. <laughs> Uh, it was like a twin size bed, so I was really appreciative of that. It had an actual bed frame, uh, so that was nice because I did. So after my roommate uh, or my suite mate left, he had a cardboard bed, and he had the be- he had the room with the best uh, the best view. And so I was sitting there, and I was like, I'm gonna tie my shoes, and sat down on the edge of the cardboard bed, and it uh, folded. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. What a body shaming situation, oh, though. Yeah, uh, can't, can't have you, it. Didn't, you didn't deserve that, Krauser. Go ahead, Tone. Right. So maybe not so much this Olympics, but the past Olympics. So track and fields, the the second week, the later later in the competition of the Olympics. Like, do you have to deal with like the swimmers and shit being done with their events and and being loud and partying? Or are they respectful in the Olympic Village in the community while other athletes still haven't competed yet? Yeah. So I mean, both Rio and. Uh, especially this one the village was pretty quiet uh it definitely kind of i feel like you hear about the village being this massive party scene and i really haven't seen that at all um i mean there was maybe a little bit in rio and absolutely really none in tokyo uh but i mean rio you had the perfect party down in like copacabana was just I know that most of the athletes kind of got out of the village because mm-hmm. you're like an hour removed. Yeah. yeah. It built up this these massive high rises outside of the city. And so a kind of a combination out of respect to the athletes that are still competing, but mostly because you've got a massive party going down. <laughs> on, and uh, that was the place to be. So I didn't really see uh, this. So I didn't have any restrictions with that. So definitely was appreciative of that in Rio. Uh, but I don't blame them for leaving the village and going down to Copacabana to hang out. Yeah. At the Copa. Copacabana. La 
hot thing will go <laughs> to the gas station. He's a different guy now. Yeah, true. Different, different yeah, guy. True. He deserves to be treated as such. Last question for you, Krauser. Thank you so much for your time. Go ahead, Ty. Ryan, you talked about how you're basically just competing against yourself now. Do you worry that like you don't have anything else to prove or you're going to get tired of this or are you going to throw a shot put until your arm falls off? Uh, I'm going to keep doing it at least for a while. I mean, what I enjoy the most of it at this point is uh, just trying to improve myself. And I know that I could still throw farther than what I have. And so really? that's going to be excited about it. Yeah, so like if looking at my uh, throw in the Olympics, that was definitely a better throw than my world record at the Olympic trials. But it was, so I was thousands of miles away from home, walking 20,000 steps a day uh, to get around the village, different food, different bed. And on the two and a half hours of being at 105 degrees heat index to still throw within less than three inches from my lifetime best, I definitely know if I just take out some of those detrimental variables, <laughs> home bed, not walking a ton, just like pull up to the track and go, uh, that that throw itself would be would be an improvement on my world record. All right, well, we can't wait to watch it. We appreciate you, appreciate you so much for your time. Uh, what I heard and what I learned from is you gotta keep your hand on that thing as long as possible. You know, that's how you get all the power. Is that right? Yeah, so you want to keep both feet on the ground as long as you can because then you're applying force. And, yeah, push on that ball as long as you possibly can. And you need a really strong hand. Uh, there's a lot of force sure. that's going to move in a 16-pound ball 76 feet. So uh, definitely need strong hands. You bowl with a 16-pound ball? <laughs> <laughs> If I can, I bowl with whatever I can fit my fingers. Holes, <laughs> because uh, yeah, hand definitely gets swollen. You ever, uh, you ever punch that punching thing that says how strong you punched? I'm worried about breaking my hand on that. Uh, I'll, I'll wrap up my hand, throw on the heavy gloves, and hit the heavy bag a little bit uh, for off-season conditioning. But I haven't done. I'm scared of the punching machine. I'm just, I'm afraid of hitting that wrong with a ton of power. If I, if I break my hand, that's, that's how I learn a living. So. Kind of keeping the main thing, the main thing on that one. Smart. Hey, I'm going to send you a uh, Oculus. Getting oh, us, yeah. Getting a thrill of the fight. We can see how hard those bombs are. Uh -huh. It's virtual reality fighting, Krauser. You'll love it, man. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, gold medalist, world record holder, absolute legend of a human. The cowboy hat was beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, Ryan Krauser. Yeah! Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. Congrats. All right. Thank you. No, thank you. He's going to break a record again. This is Usain Bolt. We're yeah, watching it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 20,000 yeah. steps. He's walking on day of the finals. Yeah, what, what type the of shit hell? are we running around here? Come on. He's sleeping on a twin bed? How, what is this? Pretty massive, though. Big win for him getting a twin bed. Are you kidding? Yeah, I guess it was a lot better than that cardboard bed. He would have <laughs> just went right through. Jeez Louise, dude. See how pissed AJ was that Grazer had a real book show? Uh, yeah, he did have actual books behind oh, him. Did. I don't even know if I noticed that. Yeah. Oh. He seems like a very smart guy, too. Obviously, crazy athletic. I'd be curious to hear if other shot putters like had the athletic upbringing that he did, like playing basketball, baseball. Yeah, basketball was actually my main sport or whatever. And I wasn't built like an, like this whenever I was playing quarterback. I was quarterback in the end. I wonder, and I don't know how isolated he is during his training, but somebody has to walk into a Jimmy's training and go, is that guy a fucking left tackle in the NFL? Yeah, should sure be. Is that guy a left was tackle? Was he shot putting that football, Do too? Do both. What? He could. Honestly, go give give it a shot. Go play football now. It'll probably work out. And then if you want to go to the next Olympics, good. Take some time off and do it. I didn't want to disrespect him though by saying that. You know, like I didn't want to disrespect. Is that disrespectful? I would think I would take it as respectful. Like, hey man, I could be an NFL player and go win another gold medal. And I'm not 100 percent sure he could be a left tackle. It's not easy to be a left tackle, but it seems like all of the traits that he has are left tackle traits. Yeah. The athletics, you have to be incredibly athletic at left tackle. You have to be incredibly strong. You have to be very dialed in. You have to be very smart. I mean, it's not easy. It seems like he's got everything in those. He's got cinder blocks yeah. in hands. Yeah. Powerful mitts. If he doesn't want to play line, too, shit, put him at quarterback. He can probably throw a football 100 yards. Mm -hmm. Well, Colts had a guy that could throw a ball 100 yards. They cut him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's get to a break. <laughs> Big thanks to Ryan Krause. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got Jay Glazer joining us on the other side. Yes, Woo! yes. He, so he see he knows like he knows that Ty is his, his little twin, right? Jay knows. Oh yeah, yeah. Jay knows. Hashtag Jay knows, Jay knows and yeah. hashtag Jay knew. Jay yeah. knew. Come on. 
he had a massive Hall of Fame weekend. I just got a text <laughs> from him and said, hey, excited or whatever. He got named to the, uh, he got named to a Hall of Fame like uh, mental yeah, health he advisory position, which oh. is huge. Sweet. Yeah, oh. like I'm pretty pumped for it. I can't wait to hear the stories and what he's going to be doing in the future. Big thanks to Ryan Kreiser, gold medalist. And we'll have Jay Glazer on the other side, probably breaking down all the ins and outs of what he heard in Canton this weekend and what's going to go on this season. You got about four minutes. Be a friend, tell a friend. Hashtag Jay New. We'll see you then. I have a surprise, obviously. That's what this show is all about. Uh, we have boots on the ground in Cleveland, who I assume knew this was going to happen what? all along. Ladies and gentlemen, live from Cleveland, Mr. Jason Glazer, your thoughts on Kyle Pitts to Atlanta fine, sir? Oh, there's a delay. Well, uh, first and foremost, Pat, I'd like to say, hey, listen, thanks for having me. Cleveland is beautiful this time of year. Granted, it does smell like a mixture of poop and diarrhea and sewage. Jesus. Uh, it doesn't smell great down Jesus. here. Jesus. But I'll tell you what, 27 years in this thing, I fucking live for the draft. Love being down here. Love being in the Cleveland. Uh, but yeah, Kyle Pitts, listen, what do you want me to say? I knew this two weeks ago. Really? I mean, do we need to do this whole fucking song and dance? Okay. I'll give you guys one through 32 if you, if you want to know. You know, <laughs> do you want to have fun? That's nice. You want to not know who's going... Uh, but yeah, I had this two weeks ago. You know what I'm wondering is if the guy you had in your studio, Mad Mel Kuyper, I know that sorry son whoa, of a bitch whoa, didn't have this whoa. two weeks ago. Mike's not, did Mike's not plugged in. Whoa. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Uh, I actually just explained no, it. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. No, yes, I did. I had this. No, no, you didn't. I, did. you I didn't. had this. I, I had it. Trust me. Can you I talk didn't. for Christ's sake? Okay, fine. Fine, yeah. Can Go I ahead. talk? Okay, yeah. Like Jesus. I said, Kyle Pitts, unbelievable no, talent. No, you didn't. You didn't fucking yes, have I it. Yes, I did. You said that sack of shit, Jason. Piper. I know it. I looked Jason. in your mock draft. Jason, please relax. Oh, my God. Jeez. I had no idea it was going to get like that. Sorry about that, Mad Mel. Obviously, there's a little bit of uh, content there. He's saying you don't know your ass for a fucking hole in the ground, though, Mad Mel. Oh. How do you feel about that from Jason Glazer live in Cleveland? Well, classic move. You know, Glazer looks like he's getting ready to go to a goddamn titty bar or something like that. I mean, dress up, pal. It's the NFL draft. Look at me. I'm dressed to the nines. You know, you look like an asshole. I mean, eh, just eh, get him out of here, can we? I mean, is he, is he going to stick around? Can we get him the hell out of here? I think his uh, microphone's still on jay can you hear us jay is everything good back there listen fuck you guys i'm oh, out of here though. i'm going over to the rock and roll hall of fame i'm gonna hang out with d snyder and twisted sister are you serious okay jason sorry hey. thank you so and ladies Jeez. and gentlemen jason glazer thank you jason thank you thank you tim raj had to walk in there and do a full you know what i mean yeah, uh, curtsy. hey i'm we're coming we're bringing a, a big sports stooge thing over here is that okay yep deal perfect let's get some tea let's get the fuck out of here how do you think that went between raj and the you think she liked them? Yeah. yeah. I bet she liked them. She probably knows a lot. Like, what if she's sitting there and then all of a sudden she's like, so what about the Sean Watson situation? What about the Sean Watson situation? What about the Sean Watson situation? Spot on accent. Right? <laughs> Is that one out of the park, like, What if she's dude? really dialed in to the NFL? <laughs> This is the Pat McAfee Show on Sirius XM Mad Dog Sports Radio. We thank you for taking the time to seek out this small regional show that streams internationally. Here's Pat and the boys. Attention listeners and viewers from across the galaxy, all the way from Australia to Houston. Do we have a pube problem? 
If so, our friends at Manscaped have cleared you for takeoff with their fourth generation and brand new Lawnmower 4.0. Kick your pubes to the next planet with the Performance Package 4.0. The orbits in your pants will feel like you're in zero gravity when you use the best tools for the job from the leaders in male grooming. Join the two million men worldwide who trusted Manscaped and get your rocket ready for takeoff by going to manscaped.com forward slash Pat for 20% off and free shipping. Wow. Are you ready for an out of this world experience, fellas? Look no further than the performance package 4.0 from Manscaped that has taken off and not only in the USA, but what? Canada, what? the UK, what? Europe, what? Australia, what? South Africa, what? What? Singapore, what? and more inside this package. You'll find their lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, weed whacker, ear and nose hair trimmer, crop preserver, ball deodorant, crop reviver toner, performance boxer briefs, and a travel bag to hold off your whole solar system. Wow. wow. Let's go. Get 20% off and free shipping by going to manscaped.com forward slash Pat. That's 20% off and free shipping by going to manscaped.com forward slash Pat. Abort hairy balls and Buzz Lightyear that Woody with manscaped.com. Yeah. Your space balls <laughs> will thank you. Welcome oh, back to the show. Ooh. Shout out to David Morris crushing it, AJ Hawk here, the Hammer Dan boys, the Toxic Table, and everybody in the back. Joining us via FaceTime, somewhere in a parking lot from what I've been told after an incredible weekend in Canton, Ohio. He got a new title this weekend. He uh, partied with old friends this weekend. Probably got inside scoops and things that we need to hear. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be calling this person back. Uh, <laughs> probably let's call AJ back too. He's frozen as hell on here. Yeah, that's probably why. Axel, Axel's, I think, uh, chewing through the cords. Yeah. <laughs> Old Axel's up there doing his thing. We'll call you back, AJ. Tone Diggs, Bubba Gumpino, Hammered Down Boys, 15 minutes after this show ends. YouTube.com forward slash Hammered Down. What are we talking about? What are we betting on? Well, Gumpy's obviously the hottest better in the world in baseball. Uh, so we'll do that. We got a full season or full slate of uh, NFL preseason week one technically coming up this week. You guys are giving yes. out bets on preseason am, yeah. game one? Yeah. Okay, I love that. We already bet on the Hall of Fame game. You yeah. already won 2-0. and oh. I mm -hmm. believe you won Steelers and the under like Boston Connor. I'll follow Gumpy into any baseball bet, especially if it's the first five one. The ones where the boys have Ooh. found absolute great success and others will be trying to do the exact same. They are the blueprint for successful gambling publicly on a daily basis. YouTube.com forward slash hammer down 15 minutes after this show and joining us now from his attic in Ohio, college football national champion, Super Bowl champion, A.J. Hawk. Yeah. Yeah. Oh boy, A.J., you look fantastic. Tell Axel thank you for plugging the internet back in over there and joining <laughs> us via FaceTime in a parking lot. I don't know if he's still in Ohio or not. Currently on his training camp tour for like the 30th year in a row. The insider of all insiders. Hashtag J New, ladies and gentlemen, Jay Glaze. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Hey, hey. Yep. Got a lot of fans out here. <laughs> Are you in Ohio? I have no idea where the fuck I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> are you in Ohio right now still? Where are you driving around at? I'm in Ohio. Yeah, I'm going to Cleveland. Okay. And then tomorrow I'm going to go to Pittsburgh. What? And I'm not really sure from there. Uh, okay. Well, the training camp tour rolls on. You're at Hall of Fame weekend, obviously, in Canton. A lot of your friends uh, yep. going in and getting to hang out. How was the weekend as a whole? And congrats to you on getting the nod to be, I believe, the mental health advisor for the Hall of Fame? or On the board, yeah. Congratulations, yep. Jay. Oh, Jay. That's huge, Jay. That's awesome. Thank you, man. Yeah. Go no, that, that, that's the biggest thing. Well, look, the biggest thing that happened for us this weekend was – Jimmy Johnson getting in. I mean, if you guys saw that, like, man, that whole, you guys didn't even know that whole night, but you guys saw when Jimmy cried on, you know, TV when he got the Hall of Fame. Well, you didn't see, and I know Fox put it out somewhere, is afterwards, the after party. We all go to, it was like it was like the hangover. We go to a place called Dan Tana's in, uh, in LA, which is like a famous, world famous Italian restaurant there, old school. We go in there, man, Jimmy's thing happens to be playing. We walk in. He's crying up on TV. Well, the whole place starts throwing napkins up in the air. I get up on the back of the seat. I'm singing, happy Hall of Fame, Coach Johnson. Oh, this dude from ZZ Top walks over. 
He sits down. He starts playing with us. I mean, it was unbelievable. And it just went on and on and on. And, man, it was just cool. I, You know, there's something about Jimmy where, like, at least for me, like, he's our coach. You just want his validation. I'm sure you guys have had coaches like that, right, where, man, you just – you just want to get their validation. That's what makes him a great coach. And to see him that emotional up there was, was badass. And then, um, you know, two of my best friends, John Lynch and Steve Hutchinson, got in. But I'm a little pissed off at Lynch right now, to be honest with you. Why? Pissed. What happened? Are you guys good friends? I saw pictures from way back in the day of you two together. Yeah, well, this guy went Sammy the Bull on me. Like, he... I may or may not have spilled red wine all over his gold jacket <laughs> right now at Hutch's party, Okay. A crime has not yet been fully uh, solved because immediately when it happened, Rondé Barber said, oh, my God, was that me or you? I'm like, Fuck, I don't know. And except Lynch did a story and it's like, yeah, my knucklehead buddy spilled red wine all over my jacket. So it's like he drove the white Bronco right to the police station. <laughs> like, Lynch, don't fucking put my name out there. He went Sammy the Bull. Yeah. And uh, so it was his first day having the jacket. And we were like getting a picture and. I spilled wine, but he was holding the jack in his arm. And he's like, Glaze, I got red wine all over me. And I'm like, who gives a fuck? It's on your shirt. <laughs> Not knowing it's all over the red, the gold jacket. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh. yeah and the good, yeah. News, the good news about red wine, very easy to yeah. get out. You yeah. know, right? <laughs> yeah, that's David Baker, probably. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Looked at that thing, was so mad. Um, and before we move along with the weekend, we should talk about the the mental health yep. board. I mean, this is huge, Jay. This is yeah. a massive ordeal. Congratulations. You're Thank part you, of the Hall of Fame now, and it's very important as well. What will you be doing with that, and what does the job title say? Yeah, look, I'm on our board for, for mental health, and they're going to partner with MVP also. So where they're really helping us is they're going to give us benefits to our combat vets to help them out as well. But the same thing, they're going to have us help them. And look, um, I just had like our first meeting the other day and I walk in there and it's funny because everybody in there are clinicians and then me. So I'm like, you got to have, you know, a crazy person who knows how to talk about crazy. And that's, <laughs> that's really why I'm there. But the, the coolest thing for me is this weekend, uh, running into players who I've known for a long time and then now knowing what I'm doing, and turned around to me saying, hey, Glaze, I saw what you're doing. Um, nobody knows this, but I had a gun to my head two months ago. Oh, I need your help. Yeah. You know, and these guys I'm friends with. Or I had another guy I was talking to. I said, hey, how are you doing in retirement? He said, great, man. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I said, great. That's what I want to hear. Because all these players, right, you, you have spilt the blood, right? And you earn the right to go enjoy it and find the right business for you. Too many guys they want to find that team because when you don't have the team life is scary so they try and find the wrong team just any team right so i said i'd love to hear that you're just enjoying it and he said to me okay can i be real with you i'm not i'm just saying this to people he goes i don't know how to handle retirement i, I don't know what i'm doing like I, I don't know how to deal with it and i said look man it's you know i understand you because in order to like both you guys to be on this level that you play in the nfl you guys got to be crazy going in you cannot be on this level and not be crazy. Concur. You cannot be great and not be crazy. You also need a little level of darkness to push you past everybody else that you beat now. Well, all of a sudden you lose that team in uniform, that darkness doesn't fucking go away. It just it doesn't just disappear. And all of a sudden we're supposed to put it in a box over here and just fit in with society. And that's, man, that's scary. So I, at least you have somebody myself who I, I could tell you I understand you. You're not alone. I get it and I could help walk you through it. And, and Crank, hey guys, the other issue for you, I was like, look, I'm 51, right? And I still spar every week. I have my fight team. I'll never not. Couture is 57, my training partner. Mark Kerr is 51. Chuck Liddell's 51. Our asses are old. We'll never not do it because we need that for, you know, to help the roommates in our head talk nicely to each other. <laughs> but you guys, when football ends, it's not like you're going to have a, you know, train in the park together. It's done. And I can't picture how fucking painful that has to be for both you guys to do something your entire life and all of a sudden, zip, we're done. I couldn't fucking handle it. And that's why to this day with all my injuries, I'm still fucking sparring. I'll, I'll never not. I need that team. So I'm here to help these guys understand, man. I fucking get them. I get their darkness, right? There's nothing wrong with it. That darkness allows you to be great on a certain level, but now you got to use that fucked upness to empower you in your next step in life. That's awesome, Jay. Go ahead, AJ. Yeah, I mean, speaking about darkness, I was thinking of, 
head coaches in the NFL. If you can get them to start opening up about mental mental health issues, I think that'll be a giant step because yeah. players probably feel the stigma and they don't want to be judged by the coaches. But going back yeah. to the head coaches, you I mean, you have such a good relationship with so many head coaches in the NFL. The access that you get, I'm just what's it like or are there any coaches that you just haven't opened up yet to you that you keep trying and they're not they just they're guarded or they don't let you in because I feel like anywhere I've ever been, you're riding the head coaches. You're sitting yeah. shotgun riding to practice. <laughs> <laughs> I got my own set of rules a lot of times there. No, I'm, I'm usually, you know, it's pretty good wherever I go, kind of get my own set of rules just because I, I did, I, I kind of established that early on. And again, I haven't been like your normal insider. I've trained six of these teams in MMA. Um, you know, I've helped a lot of these guys move up the ranks and help them get their head coaching jobs or coordinator job or link people together so no i for the most part i have my own a pretty funny set of rules when i go around um and it's funny too now when i go around a training camp because i usually go out with the head coach pretty late so assistants will call and go hey when are you coming to town i say well I, you know, i'm coming in next tuesday can you come this thursday why we really need a night off <laughs> and we know if you come to town you and the head coach can be out all night and he always cancels practice the next day because you guys are just too <laughs> fucked up. So <laughs> so it happens like clockwork to a bunch of different places, which is I don't know. I don't know how you really describe that part, but yeah, it's like it, a reunion every time I go somewhere. So it's good. But but he, it there's a respect. There's there's no coach who will block me out or shut me out or anything like that. And look, I had the I had both Spygate videos with the Patriots. And if I want to talk Bill Belichick, we'd be great. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so you, uh, you mentioned uh, helping helping coaches get head coaching positions. Can you explain how that works? I'm sure there's many different ways that you can help guys. Man, so when guys are – I've been doing it for a long time where and, – and guys I believe in, not just so I am a source of somebody or something like that, but guys who deserve that shot. There's Man, there used to be um, – there used to be – there's one guy who's a very successful head coach right now. I'm not going to say it, but um, – I called another team and I said, hey, do me a favor, bring this guy in for a head coaching interview just to get the words head coach next to his name so somebody else would want to dance with their prom date. And they're like, uh, we, we, we don't want him. Uh, we're not looking for a defensive coach. I'm like, I don't care. I just need him out there, put him up there, and then <clears throat> afterwards, you know, say it's a great interview. I just need to get, you know, that attention. And uh, they're like, yeah, we'll go do that. This guy kills the interview. And they call me back and they say, best interview we ever had. I said, Okay, great. Any change you're hiring? No, we're going to go on offensive coach. Well, that, make, that doesn't make any sense, but he ends up getting hired as a result of that by another team. Um, but also, like, a GM will call and say, hey, you know my personality. Which one of these guys will fit best with me? You know our locker room. Who will I want to go to work with every day? Who will drive me crazy? Who, you know, so, so there's a lot of that, too, because I do know them all so well. I'm a, I just try and be a connector. Well, that's an inc a networker is the best person to be in any business, let alone the NFL. And I, you and I hadn't met yet, I don't think, uh, but I knew some people that you knew, and uh, you called me about one of my old teammates or one of my friends who was working with you, FaceTime me, and I had just gotten literally, I was still playing in the league, I had literally just put a two to three foot water pipe down sure. okay and when this person called me was an old friend of mine i answer it and uh you were with them and you go hey what's up and i'm like hey hey how's it going fucking jay glazer okay here we go i did not know this was happening and you asked me about a teammate of mine and you said hey what type of human is he you like asked me that type of thing very quickly what type of human is he and i i gave you a thing and you're like thank you so much and then literally the next day a team signed that guy right <laughs> mm -hmm. so i i in my head i was like Hey, Jay Glazer literally just got this guy signed, and it, 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 there, it, that's the hashtag Jay New thing. You yeah, know what uh -huh. I mean? Like that's yeah. the that's the hashtag Jay New. It was a very cool thing to kind of see how the network yeah. and the connector were, worked. And I was at a different planet too, so I thought like the day he got signed, I was like, man, what if I was just, what if I was like, oh, yeah, okay, guy, dude, whatever. And then <laughs> he wouldn't have been signed. Yeah, when he got signed, I was it like, oh my god, no, that's it. I need the truth on guys, and like you know, I know a lot of them. I'm around them, but I want as much information as I can. So if somebody's asked me about him, because again, most of the time the team will call go, tell me about this guy, how will he fit with our, our, our culture? How's our head coach gonna get along with him? Will our coach be able to, you know our head coach better than anything else. Will our coach figure out how to use him? And half the time I'll say yes, half the time I'll, you know, I'll tell him no, and I just think it's a good resource because I am objective as shit with it. Like, I don't give a fuck one way or the other. 
<laughs> right. well, you know? Yeah, you've been around forever in this game. You're at the top of it, obviously, with Fox NFL Sunday. Can we ask you about insider information, even though you don't do it day to day? Okay, so there's a couple things popping off. Let's start with uh, Dak Prescott, Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. He obviously comes back after that terrible injury. First night, he comes via satellite uh, to the Hall of Fame game with Joe, uh, Joe Buck, Troy Aikman, the entire Fox crew that absolutely crushed it. He clapped hard. He clapped very hard. Is his shoulder, is that thing banged up? Is it so more? Here, yeah, go ahead. Here's where it is. It's here. It's here. It's a It's a very odd injury. So it's not here. It's here. It's mm -hmm. kind of like where the lat comes under the armpit. So I said it on our pregame show. If you fucking tune in our pregame show, you would have heard this. I, I uh, heard it. So, heard it. <laughs> so it's kind of a weird injury. And it's an injury that normally happens with baseball pitchers. So... The Cowboys training staff last week we called the Texas Rangers training staff just to get some information on, hey, how do we handle this? Because Dak is like, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to go. And the Texas Rangers are like, listen, if you let him go too early, it'll turn into something real serious. You can't let him go too early. So they have experience with it. So they're the ones helping the Cowboys really understand and manage it of, can he go out there and throw? Yeah, but you really want this thing completely healed because then it could set him back. And Dak is like... Dak is the ultimate workout warrior. Like he will, he will power through anything. So it's yet it's. It goes against his way of thinking. You don't want him powering through this thing. Okay, I've actually seen Dak on the same field as somebody else that is a quarterback in the NFL giving a speech saying, ain't hey, none of these other quarterbacks working as hard as fucking me. And that was Jameis Winston. Yeah. And he said that at Dak Prescott's camp, I think, literally after Dak came back from the like most gruesome injury we've seen in some time. Uh, yeah, let's train Jameis this offseason. Hey. And, yeah. Hey, we try to break him. Hence, you know, our gym's unbreakable. Could not fucking break him. I couldn't believe it. Like, he, he was so it was not it was not expecting what like what he went through we put him through a lot of stuff and also like a lot of stuff when he's throwing we'll put um we'll put resistance bands around his waist and start tugging at him from different directions as if defensive linemen are tugging at him he still has to have nice and compact and be able to throw and work on his footwork doing that stuff we put him through a lot of chaos and there was nothing we could do to break him and trust me we like, if he shows, like, he's good, we'll keep ramping it up. And we probably we probably jumped a month ahead with him. Wow. Yeah. Wow. yeah. We, didn't, we would normally take him here, 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 because our shit is hard, and we don't want to break people's confidence. And, you know, fight game's demoralizing. <laughs> <laughs> right? right. So we don't want them walking out like, wow, we're a bunch of fucking wusses. This sucks. I'm done. So we have to bring him up slow. But he was, uh, I was impressed. Yeah. Mick, Matt Mitrione actually uh, put me in a double arm bar. Oh. Tapped out both of my arms. And that was the last time I ever went in there. <laughs> yeah. I was like, all right, I'm never, I am never doing this again. He, he, I don't think he is known as like the greatest at it. He put me in a pretzel 10 times. I'm like, I'm never going in here. That's good self-awareness over there. Like, hey, yeah. Yeah. we yeah. can't break both of their arms day one. Hey, they are not hey, going to come back. I, I just remember some. And by the way, did you know Mitrione was straight hands back up? Yeah, at the Giants. Yeah. Yeah, with the Giants. Yeah. And Michael's like, yeah, he used to love to get in fights in practice. I'm like, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's talk about the fights. Really? Hey, let's hey, talk about. Hey, real quick. Okay. Real quick. So here's the other relationships come around, too, right? So not only do I call you about that player, but then I started hooking up with some girl in Indy, and I also called him again. <laughs> For information on her to make sure and Pat's like you're good man she's a good girl you're yeah. okay to go right yeah. you gotta use your tentacles for everything yeah, that, by the way I'm happy you remember that that was one of the funniest calls I've ever gotten in my life hey it's Jay Glazer on my phone alright here we go and I got a question about about something I'm like you got it Jay go ahead and shoot and then he said it and he was like have you heard anything do you know anything I'm like hey Jay you're alright dude don't worry about it I think, yeah. all, I think all is good pretty small city by the way so yeah. congrats on all that um, uh, that's awesome Jay you're the fuck <laughs> best let's go michael thomas though i wanted i wanted to talk to Jameis. Ooh. talk Jameis because i want to talk about michael thomas sean payton i assume if Jameis is training with you and with how long you've been around you and sean payton must know each other pretty well now i you don't have to obviously he, he, he was one of those guys i helped early on okay so sean payton and you are tight right now he and michael thomas seem to be going at it publicly is that a yep. right read on that or no yep you're at the right read you got the right read how's it gonna I mean, end it's, it's, it started last year i don't think it's really i i I don't think it'll end good. Um, man, it, it started last year, and then, you know, just what I understand, they want them to get the surgery, and then he didn't, went dark on them, and then 
try to do it a different way. And look, if you want to do it a different way, it's your body. So you're, you should be, you know, say, Hey, I'm going to do what I want to do for my body, but you got to communicate. Like I can't not call Fox back for several months. Just can't happen. It ain't going to happen. Right. Yeah. So then afterwards, then they find out. So yeah, Sean is, uh, his head probably exploded that day that he found that out. So how far back does it go? You said it started last year. Like, could you see it? Like, was there signs that something was going to happen or things just weren't yeah. great? Yeah, last year he punched somebody. Uh, he punched one of his teammates. And, CJ, GJ. And, yeah. and, and then Sean really kind of went off more than anything. And I think Sean always looked at him. Like, he loves me. He knows what it – because Michael Thomas is a – do that. You see him. He competes, man, right? He is a – actually, you want out there. But I think in certain cases you want to – you also got to make sure a guy doesn't go – so far out over here so i think sean tries to keep him over here somewhat controlled and eventually things like that happen yeah and hopefully they'll be able to work it out especially for the saints who have had to restructure a lot of things with the contract salary and new quarterback obviously you want to have michael thomas there you just said you don't think it's going to work out well i'm excited to watch that thing pan out uh i know the boys have a couple questions for you go ahead ty Jay, you reported at the uh, Hall of Fame game that if Rodgers doesn't like uh, the the situation with the front office, that they've agreed at the end of this year they will trade him. When did yep. that come about? Because I feel like that kind of slipped through the cracks and that wasn't really reported initially when yep. he did sign the new contract. Um, yeah, and I think it's more of an agreement, like, a, hey, we've agreed to do this. I don't know if it's in the contract, but it's more of an agreement. Now, he could also say, you know what, I'm going to elect not to – look to get that trade and I'll play out one more year and then I'll have unrestricted free agency because he's he won't decide if, they, if he says yeah I'm out he won't really fully get to decide where he goes oh. right if they just work out a trade so he may decide you know what I'll go to that one more year here and uh just I'll be unrestricted that'll be one more year I, I think at the end of the year unless something dramatic unless somehow some way he and Goody go out to an Applebee's and they get drunk together and they do a whole bunch of kumbaya and they take a couple of edibles and all of a sudden they love each other i just don't see it coming back around hey mushrooms can get introduced into that night and happen yes. make things happen yes. much yes. quicker if they had to go ahead connor yep. yeah jay what the hell's going on in las vegas like four executives have resigned and also uh, i think three or four players have retired what what's the deal over there yeah i mean look it's it's the raiders <laughs> just because they move cities doesn't mean they're not the raiders right so it's funny it is pretty funny because they moved to Las Vegas and everybody just assumed that they would be like a different place. It's still the Raiders, <laughs> right? And now we get surprised. So, yeah, I think uh, uh, Bedane got burnt out. Um, they didn't see it coming. I do know that. But I think oh. he just got burnt out of it. And then after that, it just boom, 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 boom. Uh, but it's uh, it's going to be uh, that's an interesting place. And again, like we're talking about the Raiders. If we said this and they were still up in Oakland, we wouldn't really be like, ah, oh, a bunch of people quit the Raiders. We wouldn't really, we wouldn't really, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. If you're like, yeah, it's a Wednesday. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're talking to Jay Glazer, hashtag Jay New. Uh, you had a great Hall of Fame weekend, I assume. Any good party stories you're allowed to say this oh. early? Who had the best party, do you think? And can that be judged? So Steve Hutchinson, now Hutchinson's my dude, right? He's like, original gangster man he had a great one because it was an early early one and there was like no other party so everybody was there and that one was fantastic um except me spilling me or ronde barber spill or so, ronde allegedly yeah. allegedly mm -hmm. allegedly and um and our crew for that was so hutch you guys know i'm friends with guy fietti so was hutch like great friends with him so guy flew in for hutch so he was there we got to kind of hang it with him. And so we had a little crew, Peyton Manning and, and Lynch and myself and, and Guy, and it, it got pretty fun and messy. Um, yeah, donkey sounds. And then um, Lynch's party was, he had Lionel Richie play. Oh. Right? Oh. He had Lionel Richie. Oh, no. Hello. Oh, no. Is it me oh, you're Richie. looking for? <laughs> yeah, you nailed it, Jay. Nailed it. Uh, so that was good. Um, except when I walked into Lynch's party, I mean, everybody is looking at me like, shame shame because i spilt wine on fucking lynch's jacket yeah so the whole the whole family yeah. all his friends all of this they're like shame i walked around like holy shit this is terrible you know <laughs> like mark your cane on me and then um <laughs> and then uh 
Peyton's party last night was fucking awesome. It was awesome. Peyton, it's Peyton Maddox, right? He knows how to do it. It was freaking fat. It was that one. Uh, that was the best one I've been to in a long time. Oh, I, I'm sure Peyton and the Mannings will enjoy uh-huh. hearing that. I got a lot of drunk texts from that thing this morning and uh, sure last did. night. I heard, was, <laughs> I heard it was amazing. Go ahead. I'm Jay. sure you did, man. <laughs> Jay, you were. Go ahead, Jay. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You were talking about going in town and, and drinking with coaches. If you had to go to an event, a drinking event, a competition with a coach, which coach would you bring? A drinking competition? Yeah. Yeah. Um, not an NFL coach. You ready? Chip Kelly. <laughs> that makes sense. Believe it. <laughs> yeah. he, will drink, he, will yeah. drink, he will drink 17 Coronas before you know it. I'm not fucking kidding. It's <laughs> It's unbelievable. And it's just like you're there for like two hours and just see him piling up. And he doesn't, his demeanor doesn't change. He doesn't get drunk. He just keeps going and going and going. And then you're sitting there. And I had, one day I had Sean McVay meet us down at the beach. So I'm like, hey, we're chipping, move down there. So he likes his pub, his pub down there. Sean came down and like halfway through, Sean sees what Chip's doing. He just looks at me. He's like, are you fucking kidding me? That's <laughs> <laughs> <As> an animal. <laughs> like, he was so impressed by it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's, he, that, I would say Chip takes a kick on that one. Well, Jay, we're and so we're, obviously obviously Bruce Arians because yeah, it just I don't know when he's not drinking. So, <laughs> <laughs> calls him his vitamins. That's what he told us. Yes. I the, got to see him last night, which was I'm mean, I freaking love Bruce, dude. He's just he's as real as it gets, man. Right. A lot of training camp schedules have been changed because the Hall of Fame parties over the last two days. I'm excited to watch you go to Cleveland, then to Pittsburgh, and everywhere. Oh. We got to get out of here, Jay. You're the absolute best, bud. We appreciate you. I love you all. Thanks, man. Appreciate you. You too. Congrats on everything. Ladies and gentlemen, Jay Glazer. Thank you, Jay. What a legend, dude. Yeah, Yeah. man. Think about the stories. Yeah, I mean, there was one guy, basically, I said, bah, bah, bah. He really did that with me. Both of those situations did happen, and we did not know each other that well, so I appreciated the trust he put in me. Uh, AJ, tomorrow's show is going to be a big one, isn't it? Oh, huge. You know, Tuesdays are always big, especially with preseason coming up. Wow. 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 Yeah. Boom. Bingo. I can't believe he does it all the time. That good. I know. Crush it. Well, Chip Kelly surprising to me. Was it? it? Not, not to me. I, didn't, yeah. I was not that surprised there. I felt pretty good about that. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, just, uh, just based off the schedule he keeps his players on is why I think, like, oh, this guy isn't going to have a great time. Well, and the, the hydration expectations yeah. and all that, that – but doesn't he have his boys with him still? Like at all? Like I think he still travels around with his boys. Like I think, I, so. I think it's one of those oh, things man. where he still travels around. As soon as I heard that, I was like, "Oh, Chip, he's still out there broing around." Yeah. Uh-huh. It was nice to hear though, because it sounds like he's been drunk with just about everybody there, yeah. Jay Glazer. Did you guys have a hard time? Like, so I, 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 there was an article. I guess Lane Kiffin lost like 30 pounds this off season. He decided like, hey, he like looked at himself on TV last year and was like, I can't be that guy if I'm telling my players to do the right thing and get in shape and stuff like that. Was it hard to take coaches seriously if they were out of shape? No. For me, the 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 coach isn't doesn't matter. Now, granted, my strength coach at West Virginia was Mike Barwis, who had maybe a half a percent of body fat on his body and seemed to have caffeine radiating through his soul <laughs> at all times by the way talk to jack johnson hockey player not the uh, banana pancake guy jack mm-hmm. johnson member of the hawk family he was there he we had a five to ten minute conversation about mike barwis and how he still goes and works out with him mm-hmm. as an adult and i said that was wild decision <laughs> i have a lot of respect for that so i don't think i've had any strength coaches really and mike joseph came in my final year he was in good shape i think if you had like an overweight strength coach it could be tough mm-hmm. not to tell them to like shut up but other than that i'm not 100 yeah. sure or nutritionist or if you have a nutritionist tristanist can even say Jesus, that now one dude. more again let's go that run, let's run you, it back if you have someone that's advising you on your nutrition <laughs> then, <laughs> okay. i don't think I can. I don't think I can say that word. <laughs> if that if that person <laughs> is gigantic and telling you, "Hey, man, you got to cut out all the good food, anything that tastes good," you're like, "All right, well, that's kind of tough." Oh, it's kind of difficult to take eating discipline rules from somebody who very clear. But everything else doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. So, how- like, if Mark Mangino was your head coach, and he's like telling, like, "Hey, these guys aren't in shape," and it's like, "Coach, you need to poop in a shower because you're too fat to fit in the, <laughs> the bathroom." <laughs> it actually happened at Kansas. Yeah. First off, what? he was a wait. What? That's a goddamn 
PA legend, okay? I'm sure it is, but Mark Mangino, when he was coaching at Kansas, was so fat, he had to shit in the shower because he didn't fit in the coach's bathroom. Come on. That is, True story. That is incredible. True Wait, story. Is that, is that out there, Ty? Yeah, Rome used to do a bit on it all the time. <laughs> They had to bring in a power washer in the shower. Seriously. Wouldn't even, seriously. Wouldn't even do it. I figured Did you mush it down the drain? I don't know what they did, but I know he was using like full body towels to wipe his ass. All right. So Whoa. <laughs> All right. All right. Wow. No way. Right. I think it might be difficult to listen to Mangino if we did know he was pooping in showers right. as a locker room and he came in talking to us about our drive, dedication, and discipline. Yeah. That could be a potential difficult, but a difficulty, but I don't know. We love Mangino. We do love We love Mangino. Love Mangino. He's a great coach. He's standing up pooping, or was he just? He was. He's a big hoss. <laughs> Butt to drain. You're yeah, saying? I think this okay. is whistle guy, right? Always had a whistle. Oh yeah. <laughs> it still doesn't make sense. Who's mushing turds down a shower drain? A guy who weighs 750 pounds and doesn't fit in his bathroom. I think at first they were just having him dump in a bathtub. He just kind of like <laughs> oh, get in over. there and yeah, yeah. Stop. And then they're like, hey, <laughs> get in the shower. Hey, the, the janitors have asked if you can. <laughs> Make I'm this a little bit easier on them. It's like those toilets you see in Japan where they're built into the ground. It's just it's oh, just much them. easier. To I to, hey, I took a dump in one of them. Yeah, I had to. You stand, stand right? What do you got, cover? Yeah, you just you grab a pole almost, and then you just you kind of do one of these. Yeah. Is someone, oh, shit is right. is someone directly next to you? Uh, yeah, there's there's numerous holes lined up, but they do have like a little half thing. You know, like a little half part. So you can still talk. Yeah, you definitely see. It's just like you're peeing at a urinal, but you're. What if you just spray the back wall? <laughs> well. There is a chance. The hole's pretty large. I mean, you got to step in that thing. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's one of those. You got to. So if you're drunk. I, I I don't know how many drunk lean shitters there are. Can you fall in the hole? You could, yeah, I think. If you did slip, you got to get a good grip on that. They have a little baby powder. <laughs> nice. <laughs> a little chalk. It's like an Olympic routine. Let's go to the five. I mean, people definitely step in that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just had a bunch of Mac dough. All right. <laughs> <laughs> just locked in, dude. So people grease up those poles just to play prank oh. songs. Oh, jackass I man. assume that people, speaking of jackass, Bar Mar, uh, Bam Margera suing yeah. everybody. Oh, no. Still? Yeah, yeah jackass. The trailer looks good. It does. It does. Yeah. I did not watch it. I'm just going to wait to see the thing because normally the trailer gives away a lot of the uh, mm -hmm. stunts. The big stunts in jackass. I'd like yeah. to be surprised by it. I, um, good luck to Bam and his lawsuits. I'm assuming they're not going to pan out, but. Yeah. Hopefully he's okay. It sounds like he's potentially not. We hope he's okay. Thanks for your dedication to my uh, teenage years of, I guess, now ruining everything. But good luck out there, Jack. Yes, I watched the uh, new Cocaine Cowboys thing. I started that That's yesterday. Good. I've it's seen good. a couple. It's good. It, do like it does seem pretty good. And it is hysterical that three-quarters of that race boat league was all the drug traffickers. <laughs> 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 they were all literally like, – because back in the day, NASCAR was all the moonshiners right. trying to race their cars – uh, uh, to outrun cops so that they can deliver things. And then all the moonshiners started racing their cars against each other. It's only natural that all the drug traffickers said, oh, I got a better boat than that motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. And they just started racing all their, all their boats. It turns out the two that were winning every time were winning every time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were making so much money. That's awesome, by the way, learning that stuff. I haven't got to the end of it, obviously, or even really into it. It's a four-parter, but that was good. I can't wait to watch Suicide Squad. I heard that was really good. Oh, so, yeah. you got to watch Shiny Flakes. It's What's about it? this uh, teenage drug lord in Germany. He built a website Here we go. that you could buy drugs from, and he basically took over the drug trade in Germany. So he had a website set up like Amazon almost where you could just log on, pick any drug you wanted. He was doing this so all crude. out of his bedroom. That was called something. Oh, Silk, Silk Road. Silk Road, it yeah. Was, it, he saw Silk Road, okay, and he said, I can make this better. And he was a 19-year-old kid in Germany, so he built his own version of it. So he he's nailing all the drugs himself. Basically, he was like the Zuckerberg of the drug world in Germany. What? Is he in jail? Yeah, he's in jail, and it's a whole documentary about how he did it. They're talking to him, and he's still sitting there. like He's still so smug and cocky about it. Yeah, oh, I'm watching, I am watching that. What's it called? Shiny Flakes? Yeah, the only thing is oh, it's dubbed. On oh, oh, yeah, I love that. No. Yeah, but if you put the subtitles on, it's a good watch. I re I'll read the captions. I, I would like to. It'll speak English, though? No. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's English Just don't it. watch the lips. I don't. I look at the captions. They actually recreate his childhood bedroom, and they have him acting out what he was doing inside of it. It's a pretty cool way to do a documentary. Okay, dope. Uh, you, my favorite way of doing a documentary is making a, 
an episodic like uh, a TV sitcom. Yeah. Uh huh. Like The Rock did. Oh hell yeah! Oh. But I'm excited to see how this German drug lord decided to do it. Yeah, that's about I'm on the same page with you. What's that? That's my favorite documentary when it's not has doesn't have any of the real people in it. Give me all actors. Yeah, with stories from one side. Correct. Yeah. Shiny Flakes, what's that about? That's a drug he was moving, or is that the That's name? the name of the website, but you could go on there. In English or German? What do you mean? Like, is it the translation of Shiny Flakes in German that is the website, or is it Shiny Flakes in English? That's a good question. I'm not sure. Hmm. Was it dubbed that. over or not? Because hmm. remember, Deutschland. Nah, Germany. Oh, yeah. Much different. What are you watching, AJ? Just your security cameras? There's just 450 <laughs> Buckeyes walk through your house? Uh, no, but actually... Sam did tell me to check one of the cameras. Got, you checked the camera about midnight. We had a little dance party out here, so I don't know what you guys were doing. I couldn't run it back anyway. 12, 10 a.m. So he has like six cameras on top of each other looking everywhere. Of course. <laughs> and this one camera, for whatever reason, was lighting up. Like it had like a, it was the sensor and it was lighting up. And then he had like mall security camera on top of it. Mm -hmm. So it was hard not to have a full conversation with wh whoever was watching, which oh. I, I assume that's you. The camera moved to us, I think. Oh, so he was controlling it, doing. Somebody was in there, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Axel, yeah. 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 Axel, I think, was still up at about punching butt cheeks around town. <laughs> nice <laughs> weapon. <laughs> AJ, your house is gorgeous, dude. It's amazing. Thanks, man. Yeah, my wife did it all, but it's uh, we. I'm not moving. I told you that. I think you asked me, like, oh, is this it? I'm like, yeah, I'm not. We're not going anywhere. Yeah, I don't know why you would, and especially because. I mean, you're just going to redo that house a hundred times. Yeah. Tough to find people who can afford to buy a house for like $130 million Six nowadays, too. You know? Did you find the kill room? So it's interesting because <laughs> I did get taken past the room and was told not to look in there down oh. in the basement. It was next to a simulator, and he oh. said a flood took it all out or whatever. Cool. And then, I don't know, there's a lot that happened down there. Okay, there's a lot of rooms. You know, remember, his kids, though, they are a glimpse into old school. Not a lot of gaming, not on their mm. phone, running around, doing a lot. It was actually kind of cool to watch. I mean, I'm sure that's the most time you spend around young kids, right? Absolutely. I mean, that, I've never been around children on like that. That's not really my thing. I feel like, by the way, Uncle Pat taught your kids some stuff this weekend. You know? Oh yeah, they were juiced. I, I think I thought you you looked like a natural, like you've been around kids a lot. Well, there were also a lot of people pointing this out on the Instagram post that your 361 and a half yard bullshit drive. <laughs> that is absolutely slaughtered, okay? <laughs> absolutely slaughtered. I said, Jesus, and immediately upon those words coming out of my mouth, Axel, I believe, screamed, Jesus! Yeah. And a lot of people are talking yeah. about how, you know, it's like a parrot situation, but you hit a golf ball further than I think I've ever seen somebody right here on your simulator, and why do you have a 35 handicap? Like, literally, why do you stink at golf? It's not a 35 handicap. I mean, I don't, if I did have a handicap, it would probably be 15. Why do I stink at golf? Because I don't play golf. You have a simulator. You hit the ball 360. I mean, the swing is amazing, too. Oh. Yeah. Fade away. Leg goes out from underneath. 361 and a half. I think the head speed was, what, 120 miles an hour or something club head speed? I don't, I don't know. I've never like, paid attention to it, but I know oh, you That's a lie. Oh, okay. That's a lie because you were talking okay. shit to me about my club head speed. Well, let's see what the club head speed is right there. 126? 120, 126. Oh, yeah. Whew. Don't know, though. Fast. Well, Pat zoomed in. That's you know exactly. I, thought, I was expecting this thing to slice over them trees that are right. Apparently, the sensors couldn't feel the 126 mile an hour head speed there. That thing just went dead straight. That was unbelievable. Is DeChambeau ever come in there and hit against that thing? And what are you? Are you comparable to him? Uh, I, no, I'm definitely not comparable to him. But I heard he had issues yesterday at the St. Jude Classic. What's going on now? Well, the biggest issue is he... Um, he was in a chipping situation, overshoots the green, and it goes right in the water. And then that was about all she wrote after that. Ooh, it it yeah. got real ugly after that. Was like he in the final and, group? Yeah. yeah. Him and Harris English kind of seemed to uh, lose it when they got put on the clock. Well, and Harris English, by the way, he still had a chance to make it into the playoff there on the last hole. Yeah. Walking down the fairway, knew what he had to do, couldn't do it. But three-player overtime, penalty shot, what is it? Playoff. Playoff. They were pin-seeking early there in that first hole. I thought it was going to be over, and then somebody else came through there. And what happened? Burns got a uh, rim job, and then an answer yeah. came through and buried that thing. Yep. Heartbreaker Oof. over there at the golf thing in Memphis. Diggs, hey, they were put on the clock. Were they both playing slow? They must have been because – and then once they were, like, they just fucking fell apart. Really? I'm sure they were pissed. Well, yeah, because Harris get pissed. Was, was 20 under, and, and Bryson was 18 under, and then – the playoff, to get in the playoff, ended up being 16 unders. They both fell apart. Harris was 15 there. Could have made it happen. You put him on a shot clock, though. 
you know, you listen to every other golfer basically talk about the golfers they hate, and it's a, mm -hmm. it's the people who play slow. Yeah. Right. Yep. We hate the people who play slow. I was at a golf tournament and a family with a family, and the family actually said they hated a golfer because the golfer played slow. Would they ever like the golfer? If the golfer ever fucking sped up how slow they played, they would like the golfer. <laughs> so that's what it is in the golf community, I think. Just rate of play is a big deal or whatever. That's why... Whenever I'm getting into PGA shape, I'm going to be playing fast. Uh-huh. I don't have time to wait around, you know what I mean? Set the standard. Set the standard. Let's get into this early. We're going to be going quick. We ain't fucking around. Nope. Let's talk about something that happened in the world, shall we? Xavier Howard and the Dolphins restructure his contract. $6.7 million guaranteed in 2022. Also agree on a renegotiation after the season based on the market and performance. I believe that is an in-good-faith clause that was added to the contract. He gets more money. We can figure this out after the season. He gets a bonus or two bonuses per game. He's happy. The Dolphins made it happen. There were some public words that happened. Now... Two of the top five corners in the league remain in Miami. B. Flo, who has quite a turnover on his team that had success last year, now keeps a guy that they wanted to keep allegedly from the beginning. There was once disrespect. Now they got it figured out. Good for Dolphins fans. Yeah, good for day. the Dolphins as well. Like think about. I think both people are in a good spot. I'm sorry if you're going to Gump if he started talking. But what if I? First off, Gump, I will ask you: Are you happy that this happened? And do you think? They find a way to give him what he wants after this season. Yeah, absolutely, AJ. Take care of your own. They drafted him. He should have been. He should have got more money. He was the best corner in the league last year. I do like the fact that he said, I'm not even the highest paid corner on my team. And the highest paid corner on his team, though, by the way, is the highest paid corner in the league. And if you want to get that, I mean, the good wording there is on my team as opposed to the entire league there out of X's side. New representation, was able to handle business with the Dolphins. Hopefully this happens in Green Bay. Oh. You should look along in Green Bay and in Lambeau and say, you know what, it worked for X and the Dolphins where X came out and said, hey, you might see me here, but I ain't fucking here. Somebody come trade and get me. I'm done with it. Publicly said it. Then they figured it out somehow behind closed doors. Maybe that happens in Green Bay with Aaron and Guntikus. And Jay Glazer said they need to go to Applebee's, get the sampler platter, have a couple beers. What? Marijuana? What? 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 Some mushrooms? What? what? And really get back on the same page. But if they can do it in Miami, they can do it in Green Bay, Ty. Do you think it was the front office, though? Or do you think the owner of the Dolphins stepped in and said, like, hey, listen, enough of this bullshit. This guy's one of the best corners in the league. We need to pay this guy and get this done so we can go down the new slide. Slide I just installed in the facility. Market. Oh, yeah. I completely forgot that there was an owner there who did put a slide in the facility where everybody was smiling and laughing, and then that was kind of holding them all back from having good times. So maybe he did. Ross, I believe, yep. step in and say, let's get this deal done. The guy's too good. Don't like the public animosity. Everybody should be happy. We're like a fucking McDonald's play place around here. Don't have that in Green Bay. No, we do nope. not have that luxury. Okay, Mark Anthony stepped in? Yeah. I'm guessing Jaylen. it was B Flow saying, Jaylen probably give this guy what he fucking yeah. wants. I need him on the team. B Flow. Ben Affleck, probably too. Well, if J Lo is part owner of the Dolphins, Ben Affleck now with his dragon tattoo does have at least a little bit of say. I don't know if they have a minority share or a majority. I don't know if J Lo is. I think it's. I think it's. I think it's pretty well known as a minority share. Do you think he's like Connor, where he's going to root for the Dolphins now instead of the Patriots? Well, I because think Ben Affleck's probably shit. pulling for Tom Brady if he's anything else yeah, like, like anybody that, else that's yeah. on a microphone from New England. Yeah. That's bullshit, but I do believe Ben Affleck was the one behind sending Van Noy back to New England so that they would pay for him. Just throwing that out there. No, it's a minority share ownership. She doesn't get to – she or Nora doesn't <laughs> have like to say anything. Uh, we just learned that right now. He threw it through the grapevine. AJ doesn't know. From deep in the hills of Humboldt County, the Coastal Cowboys in their emerald green jerseys are ready to take the season by storm. No better dip alternative on the market that delivers an incredible flavor experience and incredible CBD delivery system. Head to CandidateCBD.com and save 20% with Lip Boomer's Ooh. promo code. Armchair quarterbacks, keep those elbows greased and stay on point as you plan on making the biggest wagers of the season this year. Candidates will lower the nerves and up the focus. Also, the last month of the NFL Big Game Giveaway, any game, two tickets with airfare and luxury hotel for you and a plus one is still on the line. All you got to do is enter CandidateCBD.com and it's on their homepage. Lip Boomers promo code for 20% off the greatest alternative for tobacco free chewing. Let's go. Hell yeah. Ty, you love it. Love it. Tastes like real chaw, feels like a real chaw, doesn't have any of the bad stuff. 
and it makes my uh, elbow and my knees feel very good. Feel like you can get back out there and throw it if you had to, so? Eh, maybe. We'll see. Ooh. Canadipscbd.com. C-A-N-N-A-D-I-P-S-C-B-D.com. On the homepage, there's a contest to win two tickets, airfare, and a luxury hotel for any game this season. Wow. That's, that's huge. That's a good deal. Did you enter? Oh, yeah. I had to. Which one? Tom Brady playing where? Mm. At New England. Where else? Oh. oh. How come? Whoa. It's the most expensive ticket in football. Probably be the most expensive game for the next 10 years. Who wouldn't want to be there? Well, especially a Tom Brady fan. Well, yeah. well no, I need to lead the boo chance. Someone's got to do it. You guys cheering him onto the field for warm-ups? I assume it'll be the exact same as Vinatieri. Yeah. yeah. What about John Bond? John Bond, uh, I believe let's he's doing Tommy. that. Let's, let's go, Tommy. Tommy. No, let's go, Tommy. Let's go, Tommy. Let's go, Tommy. I don't know. John Bon Jovi. Let's go, Tommy. John he... Bon Jovi. Let's go, Tommy. <laughs> hey, Johnny. Let's go, Tommy. Hey, Johnny. Let's go, Tommy. Hey, man, Johnny. John Bon Jovi. John Bon Jovi. He's making a remix, I heard. <laughs> he's narrating and, the and, tribute video. And I heard after the touchdowns, it's going to be, this is Tom. No, no, no. no. I knew you were going to do that. This no. is Tom. No. No. Yeah, they're going to say that before the game. No. There's going to be a video played. Thank you, Tom. Hashtag. Yep. You can win tickets to that can dip cbd.com right on the home page. Get a chance to join that and buy some lip boomers. Use the promo code. Get 20% off on the greatest alternative to the back mm -hmm. Shit. You I get it? was thinking about it yesterday. I mean, Brady went up against that defense for 20 years. He's probably going to dice Bill for a little bit or no? Peyton went against the Colts defense for a long time. We beat him. Huh. I think twice. Good. Good omen then. Here we go. I think we beat him twice. I think. Massive game for Andrew Luck. I couldn't even fathom the amount of pressure he had on him. Going up against Peyton on the way back in? Uh, in Indianapolis. Yeah. The War of 1812 Sunday Night Football. Highest rated game that wasn't like a playoff game or something in the history of football or something like that. Peyton got a standing ovation from every human in there as he walked in. And then Andrew comes out and just fucking does his thing. What a guy. What a game. What was the final score? I don't remember. I shanked the punt early. I do remember that. But then I had six instead of 20. 39-33. 39-33. All right, here we go. He's 1-3 against the Colts. Yeah. Did beat us, though, at some point because he beat all 32 teams. Mm -hmm. When was it? Playoffs? When did he beat us, I wonder? Trying to find it right now. I don't remember. Yeah, it might have been the year they went to the first Super Bowl. I think we beat them in the playoffs too. I think. I don't know. It was a late game. It was late in the year. It was in Denver. We won, I think. I had long sleeves on. Wasn't that uh, the Darius Butler posted on IG of Ty and everyone in the plane after? Yeah, yeah, it yeah. It was that one, right? So was that a playoff game? I don't remember if that was a playoff I game. I thought it was. 2014 playoff loss. Yeah. We lost or they lost? They lost. Yeah, because then that was the AFC Championship in New England. And then you guys used flat balls. Not me. That crook, Tom Brady. <laughs> so he did. Oh, wow. Yeah, Sumner. Jeez. Who am I? You know, I wasn't there. God. Jeez. Wow. I wasn't there. The, that ball situation. <laughs> it's all for you guys. <laughs> if Peyton Manning becomes commissioner of the NFL... He'll have to deal with that type of stuff. Yeah. How will Peyton-led NFL deal with that stuff? I think Peyton would be a great commissioner. It's a lot on his plate, but it's also like $45 million a year. I mean, that's the only reason I think he would ever do it. Like, why does he need to have all that worry and all that stress? Like, there's – yeah, it's a great gig. You're getting $45 million a year. Peyton can make $45 million a year somewhere else, though. He's one of the few guys that can. Do anything. He can make $45 million doing anything, let alone sit on his couch and watch Monday Night Football. But it felt like that's a great – that guy is like a perfect – He's one of our greatest of all time, and he loves the game of football more so than ever before, more so than anybody else in the past. Peyton's Places is just a celebration of football, basically, the entire thing. The Hall of Fame speech was, hey, we need to carry on the tradition of this game. It's just, it's fascinating. And everybody thinks and assumes he's going to do a lot of things. The, the amount of, oh, he's doing insert name of something in the future that has been said about Peyton Manning, and he's done things in the same vein, but has never done, like people say, the expectation was he was going to own a team with his dad and brother. That's what a lot of people thought he was going to own a team. Hasn't done it yet. I think he had an opportunity to do it in a couple of different places. I'm not 100% sure, but I think he has that. hasn't done it. Oh, he's going to be a commentator. Well, he hasn't really done commentator, but he has done TV. It's just like he's a guy who can do whatever he wants. Who knows? We all wait around with bated breath hoping that he does run the NFL someday, though. It seems yeah. like that'll be a good move. But that life would suck. Yeah, well, I mean, another life that would be rough, too, that Peyton could – thrive in would be politics can you imagine if that dude ran for office he would i mean 
because everybody's a fan of Peyton Manning. I don't think it mm-hmm. matters, you know, what side yeah, of the get him in the White House. Why not? A lot yeah. of people are commenting under our video on the Twitter about him being the commissioner. A lot of people went into the politics, senator, governor, uh, pre- to lead for a presidential bid. And a lot of people are saying they don't know which political affiliation he is either, which is fascinating because I think as the world turns, are you still going to have to be one way or the other to potentially win a presidency? Everybody has always talked about a third party, third party. What if Peyton Manning creates a third party and wins the, fucking super, or wins the presidency? Would not be surprised. Everybody would be like, nope. yeah, fucking Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning. Makes sense. That's fucking Peyton Manning. What if he runs the Omaha? Oh. The Omaha party? Yeah, the Omaha party. <laughs> Omaha Productions run that Monday Night Football thing. It's done very good jobs. It's. I mean, Peyton, can you imagine Peyton and Dwayne Johnson? Like, who? I guess who's going to be president? Who's going to be vice president in that group? Oh, those are oh. two different candidates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. I don't know if you can put those. Put those two guys together, though. Has Peyton ever drank a ZOA? <laughs> Uh, I mm. If he drank a uh, Zoa, I don't know. Is that what. the energy drink? Oh, yeah. Yeah, zero sugar. Grab your Zoa. Let's fucking and go. Where's the, <laughs> is that his, his call sign? I heard him say it once. <laughs> something, something along those lines. Let's go with the Zoa or something. I forget exactly what it was, but it was a great tagline. I'm like, of course, The Rock. He it's thought of an incredible. Has anybody tried the Zoe? How is it? So hard to get. Can't get my hands sold on. out yeah, for the six sugar months. Free is always for months. sold out. Well, it's brilliant. It's brilliant marketing. It's like uh, Pappy Van Winkle. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Can't get it. Hell the price yeah. goes up. I'll just take your Celsius. I can find everything. Right. Hell, Hell yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Grab your Celsius. <laughs> it's the Belsius. <laughs> hey, man. It's empty, too. I couldn't even <laughs> Hey, who played at John Lynch's party? Richie. Lionel. Lionel, Lionel Richie. Richie. Lionel Richie. Yeah. yeah. Seems like an odd choice. Yeah. AJ shoehorned his, you know, his joke in there yeah. when he heard Richie. It was pretty good. I didn't hear it. What did he say? Robert Richie? Oh, I didn't hear that. I didn't know you tried to get Kid Rock into this conversation. Oh, yeah. Of course he you did. did. Of course. Did. I want to know who the other guys who they had performed. It sounds like does everybody's party you have a giant star come perform? And Peyton probably had who? Luke Bryan, Justin Timberlake, yeah. Kenny Chesney. Kenny, you know it was Kenny. I hope it. was I Kenny. assume it wasn't just one person, dude. Lineup, really? Yeah. Who's that incredibly tough guy to listen to talk, but really good at music? The Browns fan. Brad yeah. Paisley? Oh, Brad, Brad Paisley. Paisley. There it is. He's from West Virginia. Incredibly Virginia's. tough. He needs to just sing. <laughs> Why? What was he doing? Oh, classic <laughs> Hard Knocks. Classic Browns fan. Hard Knocks. Hard, hard Knocks yeah. did not oh, paint him in a. Because right. he get, he makes great songs, but then Hard Knocks, I was like, all right, can't listen to this guy's music. <laughs> He's from West Virginia too. You know what I mean? It just. It's a bummer. Great music though. He mm-hmm. probably performed there. He's there in Peytonville, in uh, oh, Nationwide. Oh yeah, Nationwide. That's right. Yeah. I assume Peyton's was pretty good. Yeah, I would think so. And I know Erlacher was talking about his party that he had. It sounded pretty awesome. I don't know if he had any big time performers. I think he did, but I don't remember. AJ, it sounds you, like everybody has a great party. Are you gonna when you get in? Who are you gonna have? <laughs> uh, who would Connor have? I'd like to know. Well, yeah. Connor's not gonna get in, but you yeah, are. Are you gonna have General Bob Carpenter MC in that thing or what? I mean, if I had any event, I would hire General Bob Carpenter to be the MC slash hype man for sure. With towel. Listen. What? Huh? Here we go. What are you looking for? Here we're fucking go, boys. <laughs> Gotta find it. What's his drink of choice, AJ? Whatever. Whatever's cold. <laughs> I mean, he's not scared to, to try many different. He's not worried about the, oh liquor before beer or whatever. Oh, yeah. no, that old, that's not Bob's not worried. What? An opportunity there to watch a game. We're gonna have some awesome time. If you're not down with that, that's cool too. We can figure out something that's a little more closed and have a great time there. Body- Man, <laughs> General Bob, hundred thousand dollars for that thing, I bet. I would. It was actually twenty thousand, and uh, me and Sam were the ones that bought it. So oh, nice. He was. Yep. He was <laughs> <laughs> you go, you're going cheeks on leather with Bob. No. Hey, we watched it, Pat. We that bit in that picture that you popped up. I think Sam took. Thank you, Sam. That's our love. I'm glad she documented that. 
we saw that idea pop into his head and we watched him execute it and run across the stage and go grab the mic. Yeah, we did see him say like, oh, this watch along, we got to hype it up a little bit. That's what he said to me and AJ. And AJ obviously going, yeah, need to, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, going, yeah. and then Bob starts going, you know, he's like, yeah, maybe like Naked and Afraid. I have no idea why he was so locked in on Naked and Afraid. He must be binging it right now or whatever. He was like, yeah, people can come watch the game Naked and Afraid style. And AJ's there like, yeah, yeah, let's yeah go, Bob. absolutely. And Bob's like, uh, I think AJ said you should go tell him or whatever. And I think at this exact moment, I was like, Bob, I don't know if we should. And then Bob, immediately after this, the reason why it's kind of blurry at the side is because he's heading to the stage <laughs> right now to go tell everyone. He was electrifying out there, man. Jesus Christ. So you get to watch the game with him and AJ and Nooch. And Nooch. Where at? At AJ Hawk's house. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, which man. Brought four seasons, we all know. What game is it? Uh, I, I think we get to pick, yeah. Oh. Ohio State, Michigan. No, because he probably got to go. Terrell Paul Carpenter's got to play in that game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be home, yeah. Bob might be in it. You're right. Bob's the dude. I've never seen a human like that before. I've been to, I've said this, been to a lot of events. I always have to work them all. You know what I mean? It's It was nice to be able to go and just be a spectator, but it was hard not to watch the guy in the, Tarzan Leotard walk around bigger than everybody, cutting promos every 10 minutes. It was, I mean, he was a showman. I don't know how much you paid him to be there last night, but it needed to be double to triple that. He definitely deserved, he deserved some, uh, some kind of piece of what we brought in, I think. <sighs> Dude, I'm just grabbing the mic. Yeah. Give me that. Thing. I wish I could have heard, you know, five of those if he was doing them all he night. Did, it, AJ, though, is so proud of himself that he talked him into doing it. Like, as Bobby's doing, he's like, oh, this is going to be good. He's going to do it. And this was not the – and then AJ wanted to tell me, like, four or five different stories where he has done this with Bobby. Where, like, oh, yeah, go do that. Go do that. That has led to massive, massive drawbacks on the other side. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Very large. It is. Yeah. It's fascinating, dude. That Ohio State cult is awesome. Yeah. It's fun. Hey, it is always interesting and fun when Bobby's around. How old is Bob? How old is Bob? He just turned 38. Nice. August 1st. Get him. He is. Yeah, get him a contract. I love that he's that Bob's always Bob, though. I mean, when we've seen him before, Bob's always Bob. At what age do you think he'll be able to never? Bob's going to be Bob forever, huh? Always, yeah. He has his brothers, his dad, they all, yeah, they don't, they don't slow down. He's from Ohio, by the way, if anybody's wondering. Oh, okay. I found that out last night. He wasn't an import to Ohio. He no. was reciting that he is he Ohio. Is Ohio. He is Ohio, yeah. <laughs> Did he let you know? Did he let you know that he wasn't an import? No, I asked him. Oh. And he, because uh, that was my first, you know, that's my first time really having a good conversation with Bob. And it was, we we're sitting at the same table right next to each other. It was awesome. I got to, you know, sit right next to him. And I asked him where he was from. And whenever he said, oh, like, 45 minutes earlier, I was like, of course you're from Ohio. Of course, the most Ohio. That was the most Ohio human I've ever seen in my entire life, General Bob Carpenter, which, by the way, compliment, of course. That's a compliment. Of course. Uh -huh. People from Ohio know, though, that they are different than everybody else on Earth. Ohio is its own country, and I don't know if everybody knows that outside of the Midwest area. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, like, similar to, like, Pittsburgh is its own country, too. I think so. I think that's an act in a good way. I think, and they take pride in. It. I think probably Ohio has a lot of similar characteristics. Well, you know, somebody from McDonald's was the one that bought me for that race. By the way, at the end of it, really? Yeah, AJ got bit, uh, bought by Bidwell. Who? Who was the company that you guys shouted out? We shouted out a company a couple times early. Big shout out show. Bidwell. I'm trying to think. Uh, multiple I think companies we did. Bidwell I don't know exactly. The uh, Cardinals, right? No, not Bidwell. Yeah. Ah, fuck it. It was a great event, dude. <laughs> Everybody did amazing. Let's go to the five energy phone lines before I bounce out of here and get some sleep. I've not slept much. Friday night will go down as one of the biggest <laughs> nights yeah. in the history of my life. We will tell that story at another day. <laughs> yep. Jot this down. Monday, August 9th, 2021. I have said that when the story of Friday night gets told, whenever... I think everybody would be like, are you fucking kidding me? And then that led right into Saturday, which led into, I mean, there is What a been, weekend. There's been a magical Man. couple yeah. of days here. Let's go to uh, Caleb in Georgia on the 5 Hour Energy phone line. Go to 5 .com. Use promo code McAfee to receive 10% off your order. Only valid through September 30th.com. That's the number 5, FullHourEnergy.com. Promo code McAfee to receive 10% off. Caleb in Georgia, what's going on? 
How much, Brad? How's it going? Not too shabby. Get a chance to talk about everything going on in the world. Talk to Ryan Krauser today. That was awesome. Jay Glazer from a park. Darius Leonard's got a bag. Everything's good. How are you? Pretty solid. Nice. Doing well. It's good to hear. Uh, my question for you was, uh, you got any plans on getting back in the ring, you know, rolling around? Thank you, Caleb. Hmm. Caleb just said I'm looking like I'm in good shape. Thanks for that. Yeah, Here we go. That's what he just said, didn't he? Hmm. Is that what he said, AJ? Yeah. Yeah, he must have. I don't know if I can get any spray tans anymore after that allergic reaction that uh -huh. took over my entire body. Correct. So that's a little bit of a shame. I planned on doing that for the Hawk Fest, uh, the Hawk Family Fun Fest or whatever. I uh, wasn't able to do so because moments before getting in there, I remembered that my entire body had a fungus on it from mm -hmm. my last spray tan. So that might hold me back from getting in the ring, to be honest with really? you. Really? No spray tan. Can't do it. Was yeah. it the spray tan or the cheap fabric you were rocking? Well, see, the cheap fabric's every day, though. You know what I mean? <laughs> seems to be okay. Why don't you try a different spray tan place with there a different is. solution? Or have someone spray tan you instead of the machine. Yeah. I don't do I'm a, I'm a machine spray me down guy. I know. Why, are you scared to stand there in front of somebody and let them spray you? I just think that nobody should have that job. <laughs> <laughs> what? what do you mean? I just... I don't know. It's like somebody that wants to carry my bags. I'm like, nah, don't want you carrying. I mean, yeah. I'm gonna carry my bags, okay? I, that, oh yeah, that's that's different though. I mean, it's a job. They don't look at. There's people that all day long they wax people's buttholes and vaginas. Jeez, I understand. Dude. And I appreciate. I understand yeah. and I appreciate the people that do yeah. the bleaching, okay, and everything like that. I didn't say bleaching. I mean, maybe it's common in your world. Well, when you say shaving buttholes, I think. Bleaching is also a part of the, the shaving of is the buttholes. It? I don't know. Definitely. I think yeah. so. I think that, anytime the butthole starts getting, I think a bleach is a part of it. I'm not, I don't know. I've never gotten it done, but I do believe a bleaching of the butthole is standard operation if you're going to get into the butthole operation. Makes the most sense. Well said. Anyways, I, I'm not going to have anybody do that to me, though. I appreciate that they do do that to other people. Okay, and do do coming in there is not meant to be a pun. I'm being serious. And I, I appreciate the people that carry people's bags and stuff like that. But I am very willing and able to do it myself. And there's a spray tan booth that can hopefully spray me with fungus that you don't have to do it. So that's how I feel. Maybe later I'll get to the point where it's like, hey, come on in. Bring your gun. Make me look better. Get the fuck out. But I'm not there yet. Maybe one day I will, AJ. All right. That's good. That's progress. You, you didn't say you never say never. Imagine if I get to the point where people are coming in and spraying me down. It would be very convenient. Get the fuck out. <laughs> See ya. Thanks for painting me. Thanks for making me much more attractive than I Why do you have to send them out? Like, why do you have to send them out so rude? I mean, isn't that weird? You're like a statue, and they're like kind of, I mean, that's just and so they're like, hey, and they're going to say, hey, thank you for having me. This is my job. This is what I do. I spray people. For a living. Thank you for using my services. I understand it, and I appreciate what they do for a living. But for me, if I can just go to a machine that's just like real quick, I'll just rather do that as opposed to somebody feeling as if, you know, they got to paint me down like I'm Bob Ross. You know, yeah. It's almost degrading. I mean, imagine how Mark Mangino felt when that whole team of people had to come in with snow shovels and shovel all that poop out of the shower. Seriously. Come uh, on, dude. Yeah. Right, Goddamn good. elephant. One more phone call here. Five-hour energy phone line. There was no elephants at the carnival, by the way. What? what? Uh, How? Yeah, I, I wish. Yeah. Did you we try? Two or three elephants out there. Was there lions? It's got to There was lions. Yeah, I was Oof. a lion actually. Hell yeah! How many kinds of roosters' wings was there? Oh, so good. They had the golden ones. They had the medium ones. They had the barbecue ones. They had the tangy ones. Oh, tangy yeah, was, ones what? are good. How come AJ never sent any to the office? Roosters are unbelievable. I don't know if other states have them or not. Roosters. Yeah, never had it. I've Don't have it. Never, never heard of it. it. Nope. So never good. It. Unbelievable. Oh, oh, so good. Oh, so it's a. It's not. We're not just talking about the animal. No. No. Not not a cock nor a rooster. What we're talking about is the restaurant called oh. Roosters that mm. serves yard bird, chicken in different fashions. Gotcha. Ooh. It's good. Oh yeah, it's great. That's why we have the food truck. It's like the you know. Oh, it's like you have food. a wedding reception. You got to show up. Food truck. Uh, when you want to leave, you take some with you. Okay. Food truck was there. Mini donuts. I'm telling you, when Let's go. Like there was, it was un. And there was a torrential downpour. So much so that my private plane had to fly around for an hour. Jesus no. Christ. I was in what a What the hell is pattern. that about? It's supposed to be a 28 minute flight. It took an hour and 31 minutes. Oh, oh, come shit. on. Yeah, we're just circling around up there. Torrential downpour. And I thought to myself. All right, so not only can we not land, we're just circling around Ohio, but what's going on with this tent party? Yeah. You know, yeah. if this thunderstorm's hitting, they were able to dry the grass over there somehow. 
They tried the grass. They were able to operate everything. The cement. People on stilts weren't slipping around. Yeah. I mean, it, was not, it was unbelievable. I don't know how. It was the best event I've ever seen in my life. Hawk, how do you do it? Yeah, I don't know. Hey, do, on your extra hour that you have to, do you have to pay for that just because they're circling? That's a fascinating question. <laughs> for sure. There's a lot of payment questions on the plane that we have to look into this past weekend. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of conversation around that. Let's go to uh, uh, Tyler in Wisconsin. What's going on, Tyler? How you doing, Pat? AJ, the boys, magnificent Monday. Woo! Tyler! Woo! Woo! Hey. I just wanted to say yeah. I appreciate you putting the, the Browns over recently, but you said that the Browns are going to win a Super Bowl. But I've got to think, man, it's got to be this year. There's no way that they can upgrade that roster any more than they have this year, in my opinion. Okay. I just wanted to hear you, your opinion. Don't you think another Thanks, year? Bro. Don't you think another year in the system and the culture will be better for them? And right now, there's a lot of other teams that have very good rosters as well that have a culture already established. Almost Tampa Bay came together very quickly. Tom gets brought in. The rest of the team goes, "Oh, we're going to win now." So that culture turned very quickly. They got it to go. Kansas City Chiefs, though, that's going to be a difficult, very talented collection of people who seem to be a little bit more hungry this year. If any word that we're getting out of camp is accurate for the entire roster. There's a lot of really good teams, Tyler. That's true. I just, man, I just can't believe it. Like, I see that roster this year. I'm like, how can they upgrade any more than where they're at? You know what I mean? Well, Diggs said quarterback, but this is a massive year for Baker. I mean, this is a huge, huge year for Baker Mayfield and the Browns at plus 155 to win the division off of FanDuel Sportsbook at the current moment. Ravens at plus 115. A lot of numbers have changed on these projected division outright winners on FanDuel Sportsbook, whether it's from injuries or information or things they're seeing and hearing out of camp. Ravens are still the favorite in the AFC North, but those odds had to have changed with him missing eight days, Lamar Jackson and potential any disarray or is that how it's always no they've been, been pretty steady there for the uh, AFC North I I don't unless because it seemed like the Ravens kind of took a step back last year with their offense so like I'm excited to see but what they win a playoff play. game they did win a 7-3 playoff game still a win yeah. but mm -hmm. for that guy's point does it help I mean obviously Bucks was a young roster and but Tom wasn't like a young roster like they got to make a playoff. Maybe making a playoff run will help them get to the Super Bowl. Like just that experience. Who the Browns? Yeah. yeah. I think there's something to be said about the Ravens winning a playoff game and knowing that they can do it mm -hmm. and not being satisfied with how it ended. And you know the whole the whole COVID thing is going to change a lot. Somebody can miss a game. Some people cannot miss a game. We're going to learn who's vaccinated, who's not vaccinated, who's going to get fed up, who's going to fight, who's not. I mean, there could be a lot of changes, especially at the quarterback position on some teams around the NFL. Lamar might miss some games. Now, for the next 90 days, he's okay. But it seems like as a quarterback in the NFL, he has gotten more than anybody else. Let's hope he doesn't. Let's hope he survives this whole thing. But the Ravens winning a game and the Browns beating the Steelers, mm -hmm. that's a good thing to get because that's a big stage, big moment as a team. We want to through this together and then all off season you're still you got that bad taste in your mouth ain't that right aj yeah but I, the browns very well could have the best roster that they're going to have right now like the most talented roster that they have in the next 10 or 15 years like how are you gonna i don't know who all is up for a new deal or who they're going to lose from this year's team that doesn't mean they're gonna like this is the only year they can win the super bowl though like you said like they need to be the best team they have tons of talent right now but are they the best team i don't know building the best team is not easy Building the best team is something that takes a lot of work. Building the best team is like having Camp Mayfield down at Baker, everybody going down to Baker's house in high school and training and being on the same page with each other. That is massive. Some teams can do it faster than others. It seems like the Browns are well on their way, especially with the way Stefanski seems to have you know, a very good relationship with everybody in his offense has had success everywhere it's been. You bring in Odell, they might go on a run, but I'm not I'm not gonna be somebody that says if the Browns don't win this year, they're dead. If I'm a Browns fan, I am pumped that it seems like for the foreseeable future, we are definitely in the conversation for the AFC North, which we haven't been forever. And also maybe even a chance to be the team that knocks off the Kansas City Chiefs at the end of the day in the AFC, which is currently loaded again. Yeah. And if Baker takes a team friendly deal, then that would set them up much better, you know, going like if he gets a Josh Allen six year where it's, you know, a lot of it's kicking the can down the road, then maybe they would be able to bring everyone back. They have to make that 
that decision on Baker Mayfield, a lot of people on uh, television are split on it. Last year, he balled out. If he continues to do the same thing and not just rely on what he did early in his career when Freddie Kitchens was potentially his head coach and offensive coordinator <laughs> and Hugh, where he was just running for his life one way and defenses were picking up on it, I think you're going to see a potential blossoming Baker Mayfield year two in this system. But... Who knows? I, I think next couple years should be good. I don't think Cleveland fans should put all their eggs into one this year basket because there are a couple teams in the AFC that are also ready to go. But it's great to be in the convo, I think, AJ. That, you hit it exactly right. It's great to be in the convo. If you're a Browns fan, you've been a Browns fan for 30, 40 years, can you, like, you have to manage your expectations a little bit, don't you? Like now we're, The Browns are in the conversation. We're, they're in serious talks as a team that could possibly win the Super Bowl. That's a hell of a step up from where we've been talking about the Browns you know, the last 15, 20, 30 years. We're only a couple years removed from 1 in 31. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And on flip yeah, side. We love, you know, expectations. You want to be on a team where everyone's expectations are sky high. But, hey, man, like, it doesn't happen overnight usually. Yeah, you earn that pressure. And on the flip side, from the Browns going from the mistake on the lake to maybe making a real play in the NFL, Philadelphia was just a couple years removed from building statues. Yeah. And now – who knows what the hell is going to happen there. And that's where this show ends today. <laughs> okay. I got to pee. I have had to pee for the last hour and 30 minutes. <laughs> it's been a little bit of a problem. I'm probably going to go take a nap or two here. Mm -hmm. I'm excited for the day. I'm excited for football season to continue. AJ, thank you so much for your hospitality this weekend. An incredible showmanship today to Jay Glazer, Ryan Krauser, and Darius Leonard. Thank you all so much. To the boys, incredible work. Appreciate your effort. I hope you had a great weekend. The Hammered Down Boys in 15 minutes. Yep. The show is going to be fantastic at YouTube.com forward slash hammer down aj anything to say as we wrap up this beautiful monday well thank you to you and sam for coming and uh being so great at our event and tuesday i know we always have great guests and we are usually that's when we start to really hit our stride for the week what are you saying tuesday that we i know you guys have some great guests booked i'm guessing i have nothing booked in case you uh, come on dude. tuesday yeah that's what i thought he was right. saying football. oh yeah hopefully, hopefully during cheese. the season tuesdays look different around here than they do right now you would think oh AJ so not tomorrow AJ come on it one of his, make it one of his former head coaches on you know because his team is starting an hbo show tomorrow oh does Rob oh. mccarthy want to promote oh. hard knocks or not yeah. thanks Ooh. aj does jerry want to come on maybe how about big H mike is not coming on at least not from my doing Oh, uh, how about HBO okay. as a whole? Is HBO just coming on? That's not a bad gig. That'd get. be perfect. All right, we'll, yeah. we'll do that tomorrow. All right, Hammer Down, YouTube.com forward slash Hammer Down in 15 minutes. We all appreciate you so fucking much. We'll see you tomorrow. Cheers.